Peace, peace, peace. Live, live. Okay. Look like that's doing it. So, as we were saying, the average person breathes 15 to 18 breaths a minute. Since they're 24 hours in the day, that would equal about 21,680 to 25,920 breaths a person would breathe on a daily basis. So in order to break the cycle of destiny, faith, you have to lower your breath. All right? Because the earth goes through the 12 zodiac signs every 25,920 years or so. So what that means is, is that the more that you lower your breath, the more you break calm, cause and effect, that cycle of the zodiac connection. So you not only become just one zodiac sign as you've been told from birth, but you become all of them, the more that you break that cycle. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So, in order to break that cycle, let's say instead of 18 breaths, you start to breathe nine breaths a minute. Because at 18 breaths a minute is six plus six plus six. We call that the beast breath. All right? And that only taps you to the reptilian portion of the brain. <clears throat> and the reptilian portion of the brain, or what's called the brain stem, that is what is referred to as the fight or flight area in the brain. We call it the R complex. So we break that cycle and we break it in half. We go down to nine breaths a minute. At this point, the limbic area is activated. Then we go to 7.5 breaths a minute. The cerebral is activated. Six breaths a minute, the medulla oblongata is fully activated, so you now have access to your past lives and also the development of a photographic memory. At 4.5 breaths a minute, the pituitary gland is fully activated. At three breaths a minute, the pineal gland is fully activated, and actually at no disease can exist in your body at this level. At three breaths a minute. One breath a minute, all portions of your brains are activated just like on the movie Lucy. All right, everybody remembers seeing the movie Lucy? What happened? She was trying to get deeper into consciousness more and more and more until eventually she transformed into pure melanin, carbon. And then she was able to travel through any electronic or she was basically everywhere she wanted to be. Remember that? That's what they were showing you, all right? So at one breath a minute, your whole brain, the left and right hemisphere of your brain, the reptilian portion, the limbic portion, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, the medulla oblongata, pineal gland, pituitary gland, hypothalamus gland, thalamus gland, all these areas in the brain are activated at the same time. You will meet God. In other words, your higher self. Your Lord, the personal savior. <laughs> Not somebody else's. Your Lord, the personal savior. All right? And they'll look like you. What I mean by that is that the light in which that be permeated and the feeling in which that you have from them will be so recognizable. You'll be like, Yo, where you been at? <laughs> been going through shit on planet Earth. What's wrong with you? <laughs> and you know what the Bible says, you may not know who you want me to be, but when you come, but you always on time. <laughs> well, I'm glad you made it. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> what we find out is that what helps you is something external because the left hemisphere of the brain needs something tangible. The right hemisphere of the brain, they love the breath, they love abstract things, but it's holistic, you know. But the left hemisphere of the brain needs something tangible. They need something, to, the left hemisphere needs something to do, because that's the linear brain. 
So this is why all the ancients around the world, whether you go to the Chinese culture, Japanese culture, uh, Korean culture, Vietnamese, Philippine, uh, um, African, no matter what culture you go to, Native American, everyone has a shrine or some type of um, altar for the ancestors and for the gods or deities on which that their um, tribe or family line is connected to. We're the only ones in which they have gotten away from that. We stopped talking to the ancestors and wonder why we're in the position that we're in. That's the reason why. Did we stop talking to the ancestors. We stop believing in them and they can't help us because there's no connection in it as far as your thought process because that's what exists after the death of the physical body is the mind. So you no longer think about them. They can think about you all day. And they can come and see you, see what you're going through, see the little activities that you're doing, but you're not thinking about them. You don't have an altar set up. There's no water. There's no um, fruit, you know, vegetables or whatever in which that you put on the altar. There's no candles burning, no incense blazing, nothing. You know, it's just like <laughs> there's no remnants that you have for them. They pass the they pass the flesh six feet under. That's the it. You go and cry, you know, for a few days or so, and shoot, you know. I still think about you once in a while, Grandma. No, no, you need to be talking to Grandma every day. Grandma can come and help you. She can come and help you. Seriously. You get in the jam, next thing you know, you call it on God. Yeah, but the ancestor who's going to work through that God energy is your grandma. <laughs> is someone who's related to you. And they'll help you stop or get past what you need to get past. You know, um, I give a good example. Um, I told this story uh, to the guy right here. You know, uh, my um, my cousin Tim. He grew up in Brooklyn. He got killed. He got shot during a robbery, and he was the one who was robbing. <laughs> Crooklyn niggas. <laughs> That's what they used to call Brooklyn. Crooklyn. Right, and there's such a thing as halfway crooks, right? halfway crooks <laughs> scared to death, scared to love. You know what I'm saying? So, so he got killed. My mom told me, and I always thought about him, but I didn't have an altar set up at the time. So, at the time, I started, you know, dealing more with the ancestors. And I set up my altar. I took a picture of me and him when we was little, cut the picture up, put him up on the altar because you don't want to put anybody living on the altar. So I put his picture on the altar. Um, so after I put him on the altar, I started having feelings like, you know, like, okay, you're going to graduate because. He died in a in a in an ill way, you know what I mean? So next thing I know, one of the ancestors, angels, come and get me, take me out my body, take me to his graduation, his initiation. Now I didn't know where I was going, but you know, I was willing to go. And I guess the feeling in which that I got from the ancestors was that yo, I'm gonna take you to tell. You know, so I'm looking at Tim and he's real timid, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, for real. And he's coming down what looks like ancestors on both sides. I call it a soul train line, you know what I'm saying? Because that's the only thing, you know, that's what I've seen on earth is soul train. And so you get people on each side and they just dancing in, ah, ah, <laughs> you know, and, and it's on both sides. And so he comes down the aisle and he got his clothes in his hands. And I'm noticing, oh, the ancestors, they dressed up in garb. 
African garb, Native American garb. You know, they dress up in the various garbs, and they just so happy he made it. You know, and I'm like, so I remember reading a book in which that um, spoke about um, the ancestors that um, that before you acknowledge them, they are they are actually dead relatives. After you begin to start to acknowledge them, they become living ancestors. Living because now they can work on your behalf. Dead relatives can't work on your behalf. You, in other words, you don't forget about them. You know, Uncle Bobby, you don't forget about him. You know, uh, that nigga was a drunk. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't forget about, about Uncle Bobby. You know? So, you know, but I knew Tim's heart. I knew the heart. And I'm like, yo, I grew up with dude. You know, nah, this is my first cousin. You know, I might thought he was just a robber, but I knew him before he started robbing and thieving. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I put him on the altar. They took me to the initiation graduation. So basically, the ancestors took me there because they basically were saying I was responsible because nobody else did it, you know, for him. And I was responsible for his graduation from him moving from a dead relative state to a living ancestral state. So he comes down, he starts, you know, he walked a real timid, like, like, you know, he looked like, what's the hell is going on? He damn looking more like, you know, I should be damn looking like that because I'm watching him in the graduation, like, you know, what the hell's going on? You know, but I knew what was going on instinctively, you know what I'm saying? And so um, I started yelling, Jill, Jill, Jill. And um, he can't hear me. And I'm like, so I'm damn, you know, I turned to the left to the being that I knew that was over here on my side. Like I said, angel, ancestor, it didn't matter. I cussed him out. <laughs> it didn't matter to me. You know what I'm, I'm like, what the fuck? How are you going to bring me here? And then I can't even damn talk to him. What's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? I calmed down. <sighs> even on the astral plane, you still got to compose yourself. <laughs> So I calmed down, and, and so he was able to convey the message to me, and I was like, okay. so um, I can see him, can't talk to him, he can't hear me, he can't see me. Okay. So I'm just witnessing um, his graduation, basically, right? Okay. All right, I have to roll with that. I ain't got no choice shit. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Tim start coming down what I call, like I said, the soul train line. You know what I'm saying? I thought he was gonna start busting out some moves. He ain't, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so he just come down and the ancestors on both sides said, "Yeah, yeah!" And they just, you know, clapping and cheering and more. You know, and I was like, I, I, I basically I see these out, man. The being brought me back, you know, to my body and everything. I just woke up, you know, real happy that I got a chance to see Tom because I haven't seen him like in shit 20 years, if not more, at that time. You know what I mean? So, um, and then when my mom told me that he got shot and killed, you know, I felt like, yo. And then it wasn't like in the family, it wasn't like no real remorse type of thing. And I'm like, uh uh, uh nah, nah, that can't be. So, Cause he was only one year younger than me, so you know, a few months after he was months younger than me. So, um, you know, shoot, he really was like my best friend, one of my best friends growing up, you know. So, you know, I had to thank him for that, and so that's my way of thanking him was putting my altar up on his behalf. And so, fast forward many years later, I was having a reading. Um, from a sister in um, Norfolk, Virginia. Sister is real good. She no longer uses cards as far as, you know, divination, as far as psychic ability. She don't need them. She can go straight in um, when she wants to. And that's what happens when you use the cards, the tarot cards. The tarot cards help with getting you in tune. Once you become more in tune with you know, you do a daily reading for yourself and you begin to start understanding the readings and everything, you can begin to start seeing actual pictures of what's getting ready to happen 
and you no longer need the cards. The cards is no longer needed. All right. So um, since that was the case, what happened was is that um, she gave me a reading. She was telling me all the ancestors that came. You know, there were so many ancestors that was coming. Tim was one of them. She was like, um, you know, um, someone named Tim, Thomas, Tim, Timothy, Thomas, Tim. I'm like, yeah, that's yeah, that's my first cousin. Like, well, she said, well, he's here. I said, okay, so, you know, what's up? What do you, what do you got to say? <laughs> and so he he said, he said, yo, you need to clean out. You need to clean out. You know. Um, and then she told me that he said that you're gonna go through something in which that uh, you're gonna bounce back from, but you're still gonna go through the ordeal and it's gonna be somewhat frightening or devastating. I'm like, I didn't really think about it too much more after the reading. Shit, I should have. Damn, two days later, <laughs> two days later, on March the 18th, 2016. I get sprayed in the face with a flea fogger. We had a little door in which they had fleas. And so we was bombing the, the, um, the house because of the fleas. They was in the carpet and shit. And boom, we bombed it. And somehow it sprayed up in my face. I tried washing my face off, but the bomb was going off in another room. But I was still trying to wash my face off, you know, and everything. It didn't go too well. A few hours later, I was in the hospital for six days. Right? They thought I had a stroke. It didn't have a stroke. It was called cavernoma. Area of my brain blew up to about the size of a raspberry. If it were the first, I would have been. Right? Um, doctor told my wife, uh, yeah, it would have been a different story. But what stopped it from bleeding? Because there's no internal bleeding. We don't see no bleeding on the scan joint. I shoot you into 10 cayenne peppers, I drunk three waters, and the shit happened. And I knew, I like, yo, God damn it. <laughs> but the crazy part is that my higher self told me that I would need the cayenne peppers and I need to have them near the bed. So I listened. Next thing you know, they near the bed, I told my wife, I said, give me the cayenne peppers. I don't feel right. Give me something wrong, yo. And took them to <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, by the time I got to the hospital, which I don't even remember, um, my wife had to tell me the story. Um, they ran the scans and everything on me. They was amazed that there was no internal bleeding, there was no bleeding. They were like, oh, What happened? Was you see, cayenne pepper stops hemorrhaging, cayenne pepper can stop a heart attack in 30 seconds, it can stop strokes. Right, so cayenne pepper is very powerful, and the only one in which that is near that is garlic. Garlic can do the same thing in 30. If someone is having a um, heart attack, you don't have cayenne pepper, you got garlic, use it, or vice versa. You can stop a heart attack in 30 seconds. Both of them, All right, especially the raw kind of garlic, the raw garlic, like the clothes. Like the clothes. So, how about the kind of doesn't have to be, doesn't matter if it's a powder or it's not. No, it could be the actual pepper or it could be powder. I use powder. So, um, we're talking about 40,000 um, I use to 120,000 I use or more. All right? Um, you can use. I think mine was maybe. Maybe 90,000 I use every time, you know, the tin that I took or whatever, whatever it was, it stopped the hemorrhaging in my brain. It stopped. Right? So I didn't have a stroke, but they called it stroke like symptoms. But the same thing we said a stroke victim had is what I have. It's for the same symptoms. But because Mine was induced artificially. Mine didn't come from just, you know, bad eating habits and shit. <laughs> Mine came from a damn flea fogger going off in my face, you know. So, 
Um, that was artificially induced. The doctor didn't know what was going on, and they was like, you know, what caused it? You know, blah, blah, blah. Real simple. I had a magnesium deficiency. That's technically who I have, a magnesium deficiency. That's what correlated to the fact of that their flea fogger, whatever is inside of it causes to be, it causes depletion of magnesium. That's right. That's that's one of the elements on how they kill the flea. It can kill you at the same time <laughs> if you have low levels of magnesium. See? So see, this is why I have to begin to start studying, start putting these clues together, like, hold up, how this shit happen? Uh-oh, this is why I happened. So he came and told me that I need to clean out, and then he kept coming back in the reading <clears throat> saying the same thing. He was trying to warn me because I helped him, now he's helping me. That's the point of the story. So <coughs> that Thursday, but that was Wednesday when it happened. And he came several times in that reading telling me the same thing. Two or three times, as a matter of fact. He comes back again that Thursday in somebody else's reading. <laughs> she she calls me and she said, yo, your cousin Tim is here. And I'm doing another reading for somebody else. And he <laughs> but, but he won't stop, yo. Nah, nah, I can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> you know, so puffy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's saying the gig. He said, "Yo, tell cuz, yo, tell him, yo, we need to clean out. We need to, in other words, from that flea fogger, I, sh I should have, you know, put water on nose and stuff, and you know, wash my face more thoroughly with soap and everything. I didn't get a chance to because the joint was going off in the next room. So, that's what he's saying. I needed cleaned out, cleansed out more. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. So that's what happened." But he came warning me, warning me, all right? I give another illustration. I um, also had my um, Uncle Raymond, my Uncle Raymond on my altar, all right? Um, he passed in around 2010. What he did, 2009, 2010, something like that. So we um, had him on the altar. He came to me in my, he, he, kicked, he kept starting to come to me in my dreams quite a bit, you know, but this last time that he came to my dream, um, specifically, I remember because he came even afterwards, but he was telling me, you don't have to breathe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, they have their way of trying to tell you these things. So he's like, you don't have to breathe. Days later, I know exactly what you're talking about. Actually, it was just, a, I think it was just about a day or so later, almost two days later. Um, I was taking some herbs, it was in powder form. I didn't have enough damn water, so the drink got stuck. And I'm like, oh, you know what I'm saying? I'm choking and shit. And then, I remember my uncle saying, oh, all you gotta do is breathe, yo. Right. So I could, my nasal passage was all clogged up from the power and shit, but I could still breathe through my mouth. All right. <laughs> Damn, this is what he was trying to warn my ass about. Took some water, drunk it, and cleared up the nostrils. I was able to blow it out, you know. Boom. I was straight. Damn. If I would have kept panicking, you know what I'm saying? Bad move. So they'll come and try to warn you about shit before it happens. That's my point. They'll help you out. See, this is a living ancestor now. These are the living ancestors. They're around you, they'll come commune to you, tell you through your dreams, you'll feel their presence. That's what you want. Because the more that you can get the astral helpers, as we call them also, around you, the more they can make your life easier. 
because they'll stop they'll stop negative shit from happening. All right, I'll give another good example. My teacher, Prince Beth, um, he got initiated into the Yoruba um teachings, belief system, uh, African traditions, and his Tata and um mother was Tupac's aunt <laughs> and her husband. <laughs> All right, so we go over, we go over to to um, Prince Bay tells us this, but we ain't really paying attention. You know, we want two pots. Ah, okay. So we get there, and she got two pot pictures yeah. everywhere and everything. And we like, yo, you was real, yo, you, you serious, yo? This is two pots. Oh, I, damn. So <laughs> we get there, and so she she hit me and um the brother in which that is down there with it. He was like. You think he's still alive, yo? <laughs> you think you need an axe? What you think? You think yeah, yeah, yeah. So she don't even hear it. She just come out the next room. She say, like, "No, nah, he's bad." I'm like, "Man, I don't think I still think he's a trooper, yo." <laughs> <laughs> I think he's still a trooper. You know what I'm saying? So we still. <laughs> she she comes out not even knowing. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's a coach straight out and say it. And me, so me and the God is like, damn, how did you do that? <laughs> you know, but but you know, we'll be talking and everything, but um she just comes out and says, No, nah, he, he's past. Like, you know, the guy, he was like, nah, but he, he, he both like I said, both of them were still saying, you uh, know, we think he's cute. She <laughs> just she just covering for him. She wants to know that he's in Cuba <laughs> with his other eye. That's how she cool. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so that was a funny situation right there. But Prince Bay gave us a story of that. Um, he reached down to pick up a penny, and as soon as he reached down to pick up a penny, bullets started flying over his head. If it wasn't for the ancestors to tell him to pick up that penny, he would have been killed. So that's what I'm saying. The ancestors, these astral helpers, which are your ancestors, the angels that refer to them as, they help you. So this is the reason why you put up your altar. Okay? So let's look at that. Nevertheless, the altar or shrine must consist of the seven elements. These are the seven elements. Earth, apparently solid, all right, which symbolizes... Um, your skin, so you have to have a reflection of your physical skin, not to have skin necessarily on there. You know, some people, you know, put animal skin or whatever the case is, but you can have food, pennies, in particular, copper, shells, crystals, and magnets on your altar. Um, water. So the water symbolizes the liquid, the blood, the plasma, the hormones. That symbolizes um, Noah, just like. The um, flesh solid symbolizes Adam, um, which would be a glass of water, libations, etc. Of course, when you pour libations, you say to the ancestors, to those in your family line that have passed on, those that are historical figures that have passed on, those in which that are um, gods or goddesses that is, you know, what I'm saying that still exists, you know, that never, that maybe never even took the flesh, took the body. Like Bobby did. Right. Or like, right, exactly. <laughs> That's right. Check my shit. I shake. I shake. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. All, All the ancestors like known and unknown, I, I shake. <laughs> All the guys known and unknown, I shake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So right there. Next is fire. Gas, tissue, muscular system. That's what symbolizes also symbolizes Abraham. Um candles. Seven rainbow spectrum colors and more enhance health, protection, prosperity, and spiritual blessings. Air, um, chemical ether, cellular David. That's what symbolizes David or Dawid or Dawu, which symbolizes love, which is the air element. So that could be an instance. The average person breathes three cubic feet per hour, or an individual takes a breath of compressed air at 15 pounds per inch, cubic inch. You can heat it, then blow it out. Just as the sun pulls 
on space, heat matter from space, then blow it out in the form of a solar flare, which, by the way, creates the atmosphere of the sun, then exhales in an earth volcanic eruption, which simultaneously creates the atmosphere of the earth. So this is showing you the science of the incense. You think that you're just burning something that smells good, but at the same time, what you're burning that smells good actually reach into the ethers and the ancestors smell that smell, and therefore they are attracted to that smell to earth. In other words, it helps them to come as a conduit, a, uh, a connecting point between um, you and your rituals. All right? Um, sound. Is next life ether molecular, all right? Moses, the voice spoken in your head, whispered, the following audible drums, bells, flutes, and other musical instruments may be used. Jay, vodka, rum, which is called spirits or liquor, or liquor in small quantities, especially if you have um, ancestors that had drinking problems. You don't want to give them too much. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, you know, they, they forget about Uncle Bobby, but Uncle Bobby would turn up. Okay, he'll turn up. All right, that's right. And you be like, hold up now, I just damn put some in this damn uh, little shot glass and this shit is all gone. I'm serious. I've I seen that before. I've seen that before. Okay. I'm like, hold up. God damn, hold up. Damn, all y'all drinking this? Which Bobby is that you drinking? Is that true, Bobby? All right. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I said, a little quantity. In other words, about about that much for that's about that much for you. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Bobby, that's about how much you gonna get today. <laughs> all right. Um, next is light. All right. Um, of course, um light, ether, atomic, nanos. Um, Jesus, that's that's what you in other words, these are the seven major prophets, their correlation to the seven elements. Um, properly attuned, the first eye, third eye, as it is called, or referred to as the auric field light travel for practically 186,000 miles per second. The light in which that you will have, of course, is the flame of the candle. That's the light, all right. So, you light the candle, that's symbolic to the flame, symbolic to the light, which is Jesus, he's the light of the world. All right, so that's what that is all correlated to. And of course, you have thoughts and intentions. Of course, as you're there, you want to be able to um, say a prayer, some type of positive affirmation, some type of decree. Normally what we say are the Psalms. Psalms one is good for removing negative energies. Psalm two is good for removing negative energy um, to avoid a early death, Psalms 13. For court situations, Psalms um, 8, um, you know, uh, actually 7 and 11, 8 is good for money, all right? Um, you know, so Psalms have different meanings, purposes, all right? So good book to get is called The Power of the Psalms, Power of the Psalms, all right? And you can read the Psalms. And the meanings, because it's a spell book, that's what Psalms is. Just like when E.A. Um, e. Wallace Budge speaks about the ancient Egyptians' um, spell book. You know, all of this information is the same thing, because Psalms actually is drafted from the ancient Egyptian information. The book of Psalms comes from the, how we know this, because there's still remnants. The 110th Psalm, 104th Psalm comes right off the walls of ancient Egypt from Akhenaten, Unkten, as he's called. It's right off the wall. So that means that the whole damn thing got plagiarized from off of it, right? They took the information, and I won't, I won't necessarily say plagiarized, because remember, I showed you how the Hebrew Israelites were the ancient Egyptians. They right. had the same DNA, all right? So I won't say I won't say that. So they're all connected, okay? They're all connected. Um, but plagiarized in the sense that, um, um, Cuz, you didn't give me no credit, nigga. <laughs> Type, you know what I'm saying? Type of thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, I told you about that, cuz. Why you didn't tell them about me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So so that's what I mean by plagiarizing in that sense. You know, but not 
in, you know, in, in the sense like, oh, well, you just took the information. Well, I mean, if you're family, then, you know, normally if you're sharing, you know, it becomes a family, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. um, information. That's that's all. Um, and that's essentially what happened. So, um, so they took the information, correlated into what now becomes Psalms, which was actually ancient Egyptian um, during the dynastic, the eighth, 18th dynastic period, um, a lot of the Psalms in the Bible, matter of fact, all the Psalms in the Bible, the Proverbs in the Bible, the Ecclesiastics in the Bible, all of that is ancient Egyptian, um, all of that is the ancient Egyptian book, books, coming from Amenhotep III, Adonai, his father, because um, he was actually Amenhotep IV, but he changed his name to Unkenaten, or Unkenaten, uh, Unk as they refer to Unkenaten, as they refer to him now. All right. So that's a different guy from Emotep. Emotep? Yeah. Oh, Emotep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, different. Okay. Yeah. Um, Emotep was during the third dynastic period. So that was early um, committing to marry an Egyptian um, time span there. That went back to almost 5,000 years ago. Um, Akhenaten was 1,000 years later. Um, during the 18th dynastic period, around that time period. Now, Imhotep was the first character that they used for the Jesus model. All right? Um, matter of fact, um, anyone during the rena 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 uh, Renaissance movement, where, you know, during the Renaissance, you was a poet, you was a writer, you was a artist, you was a musician, you was a, you did everything. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Same thing, you know, Imhotep was everything like that. He was regarded as the Egyptian Renaissance man. Um, he was a um, he was a healer. He was a medical. Uh, he did surgeries. He was a musician. He did um, magic. He did, <laughs> we go on and on and on. He did everything. Um, the, the Joseph story in the Bible is patterned after him. Right? When you speak about Joseph, um, how he became high up in Egypt, that's Imhotep. Same story. Imhotep was um, next to Zozer. Zozer was the pharaoh, but Imhotep was probably more known than Zozer, was more known than Zozer was. was. Dozer, Zozer, they, they refer to, if you go back and watch the um, second uh, Ghostbusters, that whole movie was about Zozer. Those, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that was that was him, the pharaoh of the third dynastic period, one of the pharaohs of the third dynastic period. All right, so right here. Now this is the fall of man. Hence the mind, or the word man means mind. That's what they haven't told us. You think man is physical body, but the mind is what forms the physical body, and so man is the mind in material form. So from light ethereal to matter, material. So the skin, flesh, we know that 25% of the physical body is composed of apparently solid material, yet only 0.0001% of the carbon atom, all right, is actually solid. 0.000001% <laughs> 0 .0001%. This is the reason why they say when you get down to the atomic level, subatomic level, it doesn't exist. <laughs> zero point zero 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 one percent. What is that? <laughs> so you see, so tissue, muscles equals water. Um, three fourths or seventy five percent of the physical body composed of water. Blood, hormones, fire is the physical manifestation of light. Cellular air. The average person breathes three cubic feet air per, um, per hour. 76 trillion cells in the body composed of the physical body in the universe is 76 quotidian miles of diameter. And now our cream existence is 76 trillion years in a state of triple state of a triple state or stage or state of darkness. Molecule, ether, sound travels at 1,120 feet per second. Atomic, man is light, travels at 186,000 miles per second. Or 99.9999 percent of the atomic structures apparently empty space. However, there is an invisible energy or potential energy that fills the atom or 
for potential life or kinetic energy once it is activated. Um, subatomic particles crowd a boy travels at 24 billion miles per second. And the only thing that's higher than any of these aspects is vibration, which will be 77 billion billionth rates per second. All right. So now we understand why you want to tap in and you use your breath in order to do so. Upon so, these various areas in the brain are activated. These are the 12 pairs of cranial nerves that sits around the pineal gland, which sits in the center of the brain, in the center of the head. All right, we have the optic nerve, the motor nerve, um, the spinal nerves, we have the vagus nerves, we have um, the hypoglossal nerves, we have the um, accessory nerves, we have the olfactory nerves. You know, so these are just some of the nerves in which that sits around the pineal gland. There's 12 pairs of them that sits around it. So it's just like Jesus and his 12 disciples at the Last Supper, just like King Arthur and his 12 knights at the round table, just like Sun and his 12 zodiac signs. Same thing shown as above, so below, All right? As within, so without, all right? Um, on the brain stem, which is the reptilian portion of the brain, you have these melanin centers in which that um, correlates and I'll get to that in a second, but we'll continue on. We have the olfactory nerve, the optic nerve, the oculomotor nerve, um, the trochlear nerve, the trigeminal nerve, the, um, the obtensinian nerve, um, facial nerve, the blessed the blue, um, the clearer nerve, um, the glassophygenial nerve, the vagus nerve, the accessory nerve, and the hyperglossial nerve. These are the 12 pairs of cranial nerves. And then when you go to the book of Revelations 4.4, it tells you the metaphysical decoding of it. And around the throne was four and 20 seats. Now, how many is that? That's 24, as in the 24 elders in the book of Revelation. And upon the seat, I saw four and 20 elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. The four and 20 elders fell down before him that sat on the throne. What's the throne? The throne is the soul embedded inside of the pineal gland. He sits in his throne. The throne is the pineal, symbolized our set Isis, and the soul is our soul. <laughs> and when they two merge, produces a root, Christ consciousness, Buddhahood. Get it? The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, worshiping, living forever and ever, and cast their crown before the throne, saying, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, and Amen. All right, so here's the 12 centers, melanin centers on the um, reptilian portion of the brain, in which that should be activated. Normally, Europeans have about four of these, two to four of these in which that is activated. Um, melanin people normally have um, 10 to 12 of these activated, and you want all 12 of these really activated. All right, so you have the, you have the locus corellius which means the black dot, also called the amenta neuromelanin tract, is the principal um, nerve basically that supplies the cortex. It is involved in REM, sleep. It also allows the individual to remain conscious while dreaming, especially during astral travel and projections, as well as also during soul travel events. It also helps in the process of recalling dreams, all right? Um, then you have the substantia nigra, Right, meaning black substance, the eleventh in the chain of the brain stem neuromelanin um, nerve tract. Loss of melanin, neuromelanin, and this nucleus is known to result in disorder known as Parkinson's disease, um, dementia, senility, uh, Alzheimer's, all of that is correlated to this area here in the brain. And normally it comes from too much aluminum being accumulated in the areas of the brain. So that the order in which that you've been using, that you got aluminum in it, stop using it because it can cause this. All right. Um, you have the um um the brachialis, you have the um nigris, you have the intra um carpularis, uh the subcardi, the sub 
Carrieless, the Novi uh, Trigenini. You have to, um, now y'all can help me with some of these now if you want. <laughs> <laughs> this damn Latin boy, I see why it's dead. <laughs> All right, you have the Messing, um, Cephasius, you have the Pontus, um, Centralis, the Oritus, you have the Trimenti, um, Pendinus, uh, Colopontus, you have the Pera, Rocalalius, you have the, uh, the Mendelius, the Mendelius, Donos Moda, and the Retro, um, El Vigili Gallidus. Right, these are the 12 um, sites. Somebody also to the 12 disciples as well. Um, this is why you have um, in the Bible, you have the old set of the 12 disciples. Then after Jesus get betrayed by Judas, then you have a new set in the book of Acts of the 12 disciples. Okay. The first one symbolizes this. The 12 pair or the 12 sites on the, on the, um, on the brain stem, on the reptilian portion of the brain. The second set symbolizes 12 pair of cranial nerves in the brain. <laughs> Okay. Um, according to Nutricide, Dr. Leila Africa, he states only two, um, actually two, the four sites are activated in white in the penis. He said, nevertheless, if the 12 sites or centers of the brains are very rich in this black chemical called melanin, and if Jesus, the 12 disciples, was allegorical and based on the 12 um, brain stem sites or centers, this is, of course, the 12 disciples, which would be portrayed as black, plus the factors of melanin. All right, here's the area in the brain. You see the brain stem, that is where it's located at. You can see the brain stem. I know it's kind of blurry, but now this is all important because they see the whole higher forest. Yep, the higher forest, exactly. This is important because what happens is that you have the ability of what is called higher sensory perception or extra sensory perception, which is ESP, is developed once these particular sites and, and um, nerves are activated fully. All right, this is what gives you the ability of the awareness of information about events external to the psyche that are not gained through the senses, you know, such as. Um, seeing, touch, taste, smell, and hearing. Those are the five senses that we normally speak about, but there are extensions of those five. They are, they extend. And so I'm going to show you about how to extend those, often used to describe clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, which is intuition, clairgestance, uh, precognition, which is uh, future telling, mediumship, psychic ability, prophecy, um, psych, um, psych, um, psycho. Um, psychemistry, um, telepathy, uh, telepathy, and telekinesis, which is mind over the body. These are the gifts um, in which that you inherited. And this is all spoken of in the first Corinthians I spoke of before, the 12th chapter. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. So the same spirit in which that gives you all these gifts, and which that you just made mention of. Psychemistry, telepathy, you know, telepathics, so forth and so on. These same gifts come from the same spirit. It's called the Holy Spirit, which actually what we refer to in us is the internal power is the Kundalini. All right, that's the Kundalini. As she raises up through the seven caves or chakras and become illuminated at the last chakra, which symbolizes the activation of the pineal gland in the crown chakra. All right. What is that? Sorry, what is that chemistry? It's like chemistry is being able to, if I, my eyes was closed and I touched this cloth, I would be able to tell that it's green because of the vibration that it gives off of a cool sensation. Okay. So and then, in like other words, of like a minty feel. Mm -hmm. This is why if you um have, um back in the days, you know, they had spirit, they, well, they still got spirit mint gum, but you got spirit mint gum. The pack is green. Spirit mint you, you already automatically think of spearmint and green together. Yeah. 
You see what I'm saying? So <clears throat> it's like chemistry, same thing. You can also like see like the passive effects of an object too. Right. Right. As a matter of fact, this is shown on a movie that um Wesley Snipes played in. Um I think it was called Mur not Murder in 1600. That was another one he played it, but there was another one. Can't remember the name of it right now. Yeah, people upstairs. Yeah. Um, they, I can't. <clears throat> I can't remember the name of it. Um, of that movie, but it exists. <laughs> Just look up Wesley Snipes early on in his career. It's about 20 years ago. Can't remember the name of it, but he goes into a hotel room, and he can tell by touching the events which that took place in the room. That's the gift in which that he's demonstrating is like chemistry. That's like chemistry. So you can go in and you can feel the vibrations of what took place and if you touch a particular object, you can tell who touched it last because let's say I just touched this, but everything that I touched, these are auric residue of me. So a person can come by and touch it too and say, oh, I think it was here. It's like tapping into that chemistry, the molecule. Right. Right. Okay. right, right. Chemical ether. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's the chemical ether, which I showed you earlier, is one of the states. Chemical ether. All right. So, right here. <clears throat> now, these are the diversities of gifts, but the same spirit, and these are the differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given the spirit of the good, of words of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit. The uh, right here to work, working of miracles, all right, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues, all right. So these are just some of the gifts in which that when the Holy Spirit hits you as it raises up through the seven chakras, you begin to develop. All right. This is the development of these particular gifts. All right. So even the Bible speaks about the same gifts in which that have been relegated down to being demonic. That you get from the same Holy Spirit, because only the same Holy Spirit can give you the same gifts. This is what Paul just finished talking about. But, you know, our limited understanding, you know what I'm saying? All right, so this leads us now into the science of Reiki. All right, in Reiki 1, you receive four attunements. In Reiki 2, you receive two attunements. In Reiki 3, you receive one attunement. So four, two, and one give you seven. So we help you to open and activate these seven areas in your life. All right. Traditionally, we use the four symbols because they were transmitted orally for a long time. And this mostly within an audience that has no understanding of the original form, which were either words in Japanese script or single characters in the Sinam script. They got transformed almost beyond recognition along the way mysterious new forms appear. All right. <laughs> so we're talking about first degree Reiki, second degree Reiki and third degree Reiki. All right. All of that symbolizes the fact that um, what is being activated is 22 plus seven compartments in the brain dedicated to the hands alone. So 29 compartments in the hand dedicated uh, from the brain to the hand alone. All right. Another thing that we can do is visualize a person or a situation or a thing in front of you. Place your left hand on what would be the back of the head or what you would have, um, have of a human being. Then draw the symbol over top of the head. Hold your hand there and you'll find the tingle will gradually get weaker over the head. The left hand gradually, the tingling disappear. When there's no more tingles, you're finished. They have repeatedly confirmed success in the relief of strong negative emotions and physical pain. All right. Um, I'm going to show you that. This is uh, Mikhail Ushi. He is the refounder or rediscoverer of what we refer to as Reiki, right? Um, 1922 is when he um, came back on, the, when he came on the scene, all right? He was a Buddhist monk, and the Buddhists had libraries of 
scripts and well, scribes and uh, uh, scrolls, I should say, um, in their library. Most of the monks didn't even read any longer. They were so busy meditating for hours and hours a day or just doing regular work or whatever the case was. Um, he went to the library. He began to start studying some of these scrolls and found out they had healing scrolls, scrolls of information, which no longer was used. And he was like, yo, why is not being used no more? He asked one of the monks. And the monks said, because we no longer need that. So he said, I'm, this. I'm taking this down to the people. People need some healing. So he ran down the mount. Allegedly, um, he stubbed his toe. Being that he's been reading, he took his hand, healed his toe instantaneously, continued running down to the village and began to start teaching and getting this information out. Now, I can't tell you about uh, how true it is about him running down and <laughs> stubbing his toe and all of that. You know what I'm saying? That could have been just some shit they added up in it. You know what I'm saying? To make it exciting. Yeah. <laughs> he was so excited, he ran down the mountain. You know, you know, like they be telling little story tales, you know, right. Yeah, but, story, too. Right, right, right. You know, um, but what we do know is that he was a Buddhist monk and he did find these scrolls in the library of the monks and the monks no longer used this information. And this is how the Reiki system um, came to us to this very day. All right, so. Um, Ushi Sensei had knowledge of many sacred symbols of Suji before he retired to Kurama Yama. Suji is the Japanese name of the seed character or characters written in the Sanam for the Sanskrit um, script, which was used as attributes for deities. So Bobby always say, Man, shit, man, these sigils. <laughs> like, you always talk about these sigils. Him in panic. Reiki, this is, these are sigils. All right? These are actual deities in written form. All right? So I'm going to tell you what they mean. That way, there ain't no damn spookism. Right? There ain't no spookism here. Kind of like the Bebe and all that. These are the Bebe's, right? Within the Budan. You know? Um, uh, uh, Loha, you know, the ancestors, um, um, the Orishas in the Europe, you know, um, these are the written um, deities. So this first one is called Choku Re. Choku Re. All right. And the meaning of Choku Re is um, fixed miraculously or fixed miracle. You remember, we just seen that one of the gifts was the gift of miracles. Well, this sigil will give you the gift of miracles. All right? This sigil will give you the gift of miracles. So, see, I'm not only telling you about the Bible, I'm telling you how to use the Bible. Because, you know, Christians say, I go buy the Bible. Okay, and you can't tell me how to use none of this shit up in here. And that's the problem. You can't tell how you use it. How do I develop the gift of miracles? that I just read about in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. And you can't tell me, shut the fuck up. <laughs> For real. That's what, that's, I mean, seriously. You can't tell me how to do it, shut up. You ain't. You don't know how to use the book you get that you half-ass read. You see what I'm saying? I read that a lot. Oh, yes. Me too. That's why I'm talking shit now. That's the thing. When I started growing, I asked the elders questions. They could look at me. Right. Right. You're doing too much questioning, boy. Go on over there and sit down at Sunday school and let's continue this course about you learning about Moses splitting the Red Sea. That's what they wanted you to know about, wasn't it? Jesus turning water to wine and Moses splitting the Red Sea. <laughs> the same script. And this shit's going to change, do it. Damn. Come on now. That's why folks sit in church for like 60 years. How? <laughs> How? <laughs> shit, I can't even do it for 20. How? <laughs> I hate doing it. Shit. Go on. Shit. <laughs> exactly. Me neither. I went one time after graduating high school, and, 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 and my cousin, who was a pastor, <laughs> told me to sit my ass down in church because I was damn telling too many damn secrets. <laughs> Because I brought up the question, 
at 12 years old about, hold on, if Saturday was the Sabbath, then who the hell changed it to Sunday? Why are we practicing on Sunday? Hmm. My cousin, she said, um, she said, you're right. I agree with that. When we get back out there with the group, I asked him about that. <laughs> we get back out. Now, this question I asked at 12 years old. You know what I'm saying? 12 years old, yo. We get back out in front, you know, with the main congregation. And she asked the question for the whole Sunday school. Nobody got the damn answer, right? Nobody got the answer. They looking at each other like, <laughs> okay. Seven years later, my girlfriend's brother at the time, he brings it back up. And I just happened to be in church that day. <laughs> seven years later now. So in seven years, they never found the damn answer. And they still asking the same question. This time, I got the answer because I found it my damn self. So I stand up and say, oh, yeah. Um, in um, 325 AD, Constantine, um, with 319 bishops, decided to uh, you know, do such and such and such, you know, and they changed it from Saturday to Sunday, um, you know, day of the sun, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just calm, I'm just flowing with it, you know, just calm, you know, getting it out. Yeah, I asked a question seven years ago, so I'm giving you the answer on that. All right, so somebody can give me the answer seven years ago. <laughs> My damn cousin turns around, Pastor turns around and said, John Murray. So he turned around and said, You don't sit your behind, <laughs> No more! No more! That was it! That's when I knew that there was a Masonic secret somehow. And I'm like, this ain't no damn secret. It's in the book that I read. <laughs> I read the shit in the book. Only reason why it's a secret is because niggas don't read. <laughs> That's the secret. <laughs> That's the secret. Seriously, y'all, that's the secret. You don't read. That's the secret. There is no secret. You can find all the Masonic rituals in a book. It's called Duncan Rituals. <laughs> and there's other books that you can find in there. So anyway, um, I can say that my cousin discouraged me. <laughs> I didn't go back to church any longer unless it was for a funeral or some shit like that. <laughs> that's, that's what I did go back, you know what I'm saying? Um, other than that, no. <laughs> did not go back. Did not want uh, 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 to, you know, have him tell some ass down again. <laughs> it embarrassed me in front of my family in the church because you know that's really the all that goes to church is the family, my cousins, or you know, or close relatives, or you know, or even you know, or that's all who was in church anyway. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, and hey, you done embarrassed me in front of everybody. <laughs> you embarrass him. Yeah. Um, you embarrass him. I guess. Go I, guess I guess so. You know, but you know, I ain't kidding no more. You know, that was the last time, buddy. You know, everybody knew that was the last time too. They're like, "Oh, um, yeah, he don't come to church no more." <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> if I want to hack on someone, I do the damn self. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you know, I just got bored. Yeah. Because they just, they just, they just, like you said, they just, 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 I don't think so, but if that's what you claim, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I do. Oh, wow. I like the mayor. I am God. <laughs> right. 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 right, right, right. I am God. <laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> I'm like, that's what your Bible said. Right. Right. We made right. 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 the image after the likeness of God. Right, right. Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. Right. Right. 
Because the church is the most high God. In the book of Psalms, it says, in the book of um, um, the 82nd um, chapter, it says, be a God. It says, God judges among the gods. Wait, what chapter? 86, Psalms, the 82, on the 82nd chapter. Yeah. It says, John 10th chapter, 34 verse. Jesus said, ye are gods. Now, Jesus is saying this. Uh, here go the son of God, who they, some say is God, and he's saying that ye are gods. Well, God damn. <laughs> and then it says, you describe from the back. Right. And you go away and die on the message. Right, 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 exactly. So now they don't want us to have no knowledge and get done away with. That's what this is all about. All right, so Choku Ray comes from the hum symbol in the Japanese script, or hun, symbol of the male son. All right? Right, so this is the Choku Ray symbol. This is how it is drawn. It is drawn from the um, left to right, downward. Vertical and then in an elliptical three ring circular manner. Choco ray, choco ray, choco ray. And each symbol you say three times. It's no coincidence that it looks like a, a musical clip. Because this is, remember, music is the sound of the universe. Music is, the, is what comes the savage beast. Music is what awakens um, sensations and desires within an individual. Music is what is healing and soothing to a person, okay? So this is why this is actually utilized. So Choco Ray is a very powerful symbol. Matter of fact, it's called the power symbol, referred to in Japan as symbol one. Possible origin, Choco Ray origin is obscured. However, well, actually it's not obscured. It's one of the symbols in which that I told you about in which that was found by um, Grandmaster Mukeo Ushi, right? Mukeo Ushi. Um, who I showed you earlier. Um, so meaning is fixed miraculously. Choku means to fix, and rain means miracle, which I believe is the original intent um, of this symbol. Choku Ray is used to increase the power and the flow of chi energy or build up power within the healer and on the treated spot while giving a healing. It helps the chi to build um, the chi gathered in the healer's center where it is stored as if in a battery ready to use. So it is stored, and it's stored in the lower dantian. That's what we was telling you about. In the lower dantian, this is where the energy is stored at, right? When it comes into your body, that is the storage place. Remember, there's three storage places, the lower dantian, the mid dantian, the upper dantian. It is stored, all right? When one is over full and abundant, it goes to the next one to the next one, that type of thing, all right? So this symbol activates a large spiral of energy that we call a power boost. This helps, so it's just like turning on the switch of a light. When the light is off, you know, things can be plugged up, but they ain't on, right? As soon as you flip the light, oh shit, I can see, you know, that's the that's what's going on. So the choke ray symbol boosts your power, flip the um, switch. All right, and it helps to send the Reiki energy at greater distances and with more power. All right, um, you have to use this symbol first before you can activate the other symbols. It is capable of sending healing energy out to other people at absent healings, in other words, distant healing. You can also set up protection and heal, heal situations in the past, present, or in the future. You can actually take this symbol in the past, present, or future. So if you had trauma in the past, and you're always remembering it, you can actually use this symbol to go back into that time and visualize that image of what is going on and take that symbol in place over the situation. And it will begin to start decreasing the attachment that you have to it so that you can heal and move on. Okay? All right, Choku Ray is capable of going into the future as well as going back into the past, as I just stated. This is to help set up positive outcomes to any upcoming event. So if you have an upcoming event, you visualize the date, times of the upcoming event, and you can actually take the symbol and place over those times and dates in which that you're looking at in your mind's eye. See, this is how you use sigils. This is why Wudan, or what's called Voodoo, is powerful because they have babies 
written characters just like this in which they can utilize, in which that means certain entities or deities. Right? And this goes for any system. The same system, you get the Sumerian text, they have it in what is known as, um, um, probably in Pentagon, he's talking about it, y'all. Um, um, they, they love talking about uh, particular books by these by this author. You may know who I'm talking about, right? Cthulhu mythology. Mm -hmm. um, who did that book? Who did those books? Okay, but but Bobby and Penny were always talking about Cthulhu. Pascal. No, not Pascal. Beverly Randolph. What's his name? Come on, guys. Come on, you got it. Come on. I know you're talking about that. Yeah, come on. Thank you. Because it's H.P. Lovecraft. Exactly. Exactly. H.P. Lovecraft. If you read. Right, right, right. Country Lovecraft. Right, right. People say, nah, that should have been Bobby Lovecraft. Shit. They show Bobby with Country Lovecraft. On and everything, they, I think they done made shirts on that shit. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, H.P. Lovecraft, and in his um, Shukulu mythology, mythos, um, information, um, and also in um, several of the books, he actually showed you the sigils for these particular deities or entities. All right, and this is why Bobby and, and um, Panic is always talking about talking about that. All right. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's in certain books it's of Lovecraft. Um, I can't remember the name of the book right now, but it's in that certain book. But I got the book. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't remember the name of it right now, but you know, y'all help me out with um, HP Lovecraft. So thanks, Gunner. <laughs> 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 but yeah, that's what's going on. All right. So. Same thing. So all these various systems around the world, the most powerful systems are those who have sigils. Because remember, writing is what? Bingo. Writing is spelling. So this is you casting a spell. This is why they always tell you, even if you want something in life, the first thing you must do is thank it. But then the second thing you must do is write it. No, you want to write your plan out. You want to write what you did. So you got a business plan. Even now, they tell you, if you got a business, you got an idea for a business, well, you need a business plan. Well, hold on, I got to damn do a business plan when I already got it in my mind. Because when you write it, you spell it out. You get specifics. You're doing more. There's things that, that you might have missed. You might want to add something else. You see what I'm saying? So the more that you can concrete the spelling, and then if you can even do a picture of the spelling, is even more powerful, and this is what the whole sigil thing is about. Is now taking doing a picture of what you done written out on paper. Now you say, okay, all of that is nothing but this right here. This whole symbol I just drew. That's a terrible Yeah, see, that's that's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. So now you can use the sigil or the symbol, which meant all of this that you wrote. And it has the same exact effect, if not greater. Because now you're going to transform it into a deity for yourself. <laughs> That's why so these they, are thought forms. That's what and, I mean by we create God. Right, we create the gods. But this is a thought form that you created. And now this thought form can work on your behalf. You see? So this is healing thought forms. And now they can go into healing on your behalf. Because now these are entities in which that you created from a healing perspective. Same science. Right? Most people just think of voodoo. Oh shit, that's some evil shit. Oh, you know, because that's how we've been trained. But those babies on the evil, those babies are just what it is. It's just like the um, brother Shim was going over the other night. Uh, you know, yesterday, hold up. This is fire. You can warm up yourself with the fire, or you can burn your shit down, your house down with it. You can drink water, or you can damn drown by water. You know what I'm saying? Which one you want? You see what I'm saying? 
So it, 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 you got to know how to use it properly, in which that helps positively. But drinking water, that's positive, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> Getting drowned by it. Might not be so positive. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or you get fired. Oh yeah, shit, man. It's kind of pressy out here, man. I'm glad it's you. It's cold. Damn, you think you lit that fire? Oh, burn down your whole damn house. Be like, God damn, I got nowhere to stay, nigga. You gotta come and stay with your mama. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it's how you use it. That's all these centuries are. This all but these are entities, thought forms, written thought forms. That's all it is. So you have to learn how to utilize them in a proper manner. And I say positively, all right? They turn the babies into negative purposes, throwing that shit on each other and shit. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. Come on. Wonder why we in the same predicament. Y'all damn over there throwing that shit at each other. Y'all thinking that shit is funny and shit. Y'all think that shit. It's, you know, it's some crazy shit. Right. Exactly. It's called cause and effect. It's called karma. You know? I had I Nick brother say, well, karma, uh, 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 there ain't no such thing as karma. Nigga, you might not get it in this life, but that's what you're going to get some karma. So you might not think that it can't say, ah, oh, ain't shit happened to me. I've been doing this for 50, 60 years. But if then you die, you wonder why you in the goddamn state that you went. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because you put yourself in that state. You thought nothing happened to you, but you really had subconsciously all these damn regrets in which that you had these attachments. Because you were so busy trying to attack others, that was an attachment. You see what I'm saying? When you attack someone else, that's an attachment. When you talk about someone else, that's an attachment. You see what I'm saying? See, in New York, when I was growing up, yo, we used to, yo, stop, yo, son, yo, stop writing my dick. <laughs> I'm sorry, blanking, but that's what we used to say because when somebody becomes so attached, you know what I'm saying? You're like, yo, yo, son, yo, get up off of bra straps, yo. And I hear you connected to the right right, more. Right, 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 exactly. That's what we used to say, you know? It was harsh, but we understood what it meant. You know what I'm saying? Growing up. You know what I'm saying? Get off her bra strap, her panty legs. Get up off her. In other words, son, you chasing too hard. Yo, you getting too much of an obsession. You attaching yourself too much. Yo, relax. That's what it meant. You know, me saying all of that when I can just say the phrase. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Right, right. So we transformed that into a, a one sentence phrase instead of saying, a whole damn paragraph, you know? And that's what New Yorkers always did with language. You know, that's why when it spread throughout the country and then throughout the world, all these particular um, wordage, you know, it oftentimes when every com everybody come and find out, it started somewhere in New York, you know what I'm saying? And oftentimes it's the Bronx, Harlem, Brooklyn <laughs> area, you know what I'm saying? I even thought about that. All this stuff that comes up from a lot of the Empire State. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Hip hop, <coughs> uh, uh, um, you know, all types of music genres. If it didn't come out, I'm um, out of there specifically. Um, it was right in still in the northern area. It could be Philadelphia, it could be New York. I mean, hell, it's only an hour, hour, 15 minutes away, you know what I'm saying, from each other. So, I mean, it's always in these areas. I did not know about this. Mm -hmm. Something you said yesterday. It's called New York called the Empire State. Right. And Morak and Empire State. Yeah. The seat. Yeah. Right. The seat, the seat was there. Right. So the so the so called I never knew why it was called the Empire State. Right. I thought it was just because of the building. Right. <laughs> right. Right. That's what most people think. But that Man. was just built in 1977. Mm -hmm. I think it was just resurrected fully in 1977. I think I was eight years old when they um no, not the Empire State, but the World Trade. Those are the World Trade Center buildings. I'm sorry. They, they get, you, know, you already know what happened to those. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was, um, I think the Empire State building was built in 19, 1930s, 1934, somewhere around there. So I think somewhere around there. I can't remember right now. 
But um, you know, I remember as a kid going all the way up. My mom took me all the way up in that joint. I'm like, ooh, wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, um, I think I went up the World Trade. Yeah, I went up the World Trade Center buildings too. Went up in oh, <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah, they got some crazy, crazy times right there. I'm glad I got a chance to go up there before we got torn down. Hmm. Oh, demolished, as I would say. <laughs> demolished. All right, so um, so it helps to um, set up positive outcomes to any upcoming event and to relieve the pain caused by something going wrong in your past. That's what it does. All right. The next symbol is called Say Hey Key. Say Hey Key means one's natural disposition, um, basically propensity or mental habit. In other words, this symbol helps with the emotions and help with the mental aspect of oneself. So if you have a lot of trauma, drama, um, negative things in which that has occurred and you're mentally um, hurt by it, your spirit is hurt, your soul is hurt, you emotionally flustered, this symbol here helps to alleviate the emotional stress and depression in which that you are experiencing. Say hey key, say hey key, say hey key. Each one you say three times as you're doing the healing on yourself or on others. Okay? On yourself or on others. Right? This is how you draw say hey key. You come down um, from the right down the left, zigzag zig type of thing, and come down horizontally to an angle, then of course horizontally down. Uh, once again, the horizontal vertical scoot me down. Um, then you do the humps on the back like a little camel, and that it is um, say hey key. Say hey key. All right, say hey key is the emotional healing symbol referred to in Japan as the symbol number two. The origin of say hey key is still recognizable. It is Hari. All right? Hari. This is synonymous symbol of the Amida Butsu. Which is Amida um, Nairora, and Nairobi, which is the Buddha. So this actually is the symbol of the Buddha. Right? That is the symbol of the Buddha, uh, which means infinite light and life. That's what it is said. Um, when you chant within the Sanskrit, Om Mari Padme Hum, Om Mari Padme Hum, Om Mari Padme Hum, Om Mari Padme Hum. Yeah, yeah. That is, this is the condensation of that phrase. <laughs> That's the Buddha. All right? And Almighty Pami Hong, within Sanskrit, means um, the jewel in the lotus. The jewel in the lotus, I'm talking about the activist and the pioneer. Everything. Yeah. Exactly. All right, so um, the Japanese Buddhist words, I don't know. Right? He might not know, but the words say, hey, key, however, means one's natural disposition, propensity, mental habit. And so I can uh, include the characters for this word. In this case, it is indeed a connection. As befits the Buddha, whom this symbol represents, it is, one, it is one use for emotional healing. It is also known as love symbol. So this is also the love symbol. All right, this original concept is naturally the invocation of the Buddha. All right, it likely also means God and man coming together. That's basically what this symbolizes God and man coming together. God and man coming together. All right, so this is actually the whole Bible verse where it speaks about that man was created in the image and after the likeness of God. So instead of just saying that verse, say a hey, key is the accumulation. Of that phrase in English. You get it? See, this is how you put this information together because this, all religions around the world stems from one world religion thought aspect, and that's out of Ethiopia among the Kushites into Egypt and spread it throughout the world through the ancient mystery school system. Everybody had the same ancient mystery school. In other words, if you study Christianity, you know that the ancient mystery school for Christianity is. Gnosticism. 
You study Hebrew Israelites, Jew, Jewish, and that's Kabbalistic teachings, the Kabbalah. That's the esoteric side, right? If you study Islam, Sufism is the esoteric side or mystic, or mystic Islam, mysticism of Islam, right? Same thing all over the world with all of the major religions around the world. That esoteric part of those religions is the ancient mystery school system. And within the ancient mystery school system, all of that comes together. All of that is connected. Okay? That's the, that's the um, silver lining or the golden thread in which that ties everything together. Right? Because within those esoteric fields is the exact same information. It's only the outer circle, all right, or the outer surface dwelling information, which is those forms of the Christ, of, of Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Shintoism, blah, 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 Buddhism, Hinduism. These are the outer shells, and they are the ones in which that come up and always debating. Ah, oh, no, Jesus is the son of God. No, Jesus is God. Ah, oh, you know what I'm saying? So now you get Baptist versus Methodist. Pentecostal holiness versus Jehovah Witness. You got Seventh day Adventist versus Episcopalian. You see what I'm saying? They're the ones who come up with their different interpretations of the. We ain't got that problem over in, in, in the esoteric world. I can build with a Sufi, a Gnostic, a Kabbalistic teacher. It's the same damn information. <laughs> what I found interesting in the Circle Seven, how um, it showed where. Christ was going around to these different cultures that you were talking about, right? And he was teaching, and that's the part that left out the right. right. 18 years is missing, yeah. and then you come to find out that 18 missing years is in a book in which that Noble Drali is pushing, which is known as um, the Holy Quran, Circle Seven. Now, where did he get that book from? He got portions of it from, let me tell you, there's three books he got that information from. The Infinite Wisdom Lessons of the Rosicrucians. Mm -hmm. And from a book called Unto Thee I Grant, which is a Rosicrucian book also. All right? Also get it from Levi Dowling's book. He was a spiritualist, also a Rosicrucian, and we say he got it from the same place that Prophet Nobjali got it from, except he put in some things on which that um, he tried to hide. Right, like the white skin and red hair references, which was not originally in the document <coughs> because it came from Akhenaten. This is where this book came from. This, this is where this information. So, actually, Prophet Nubdrali bought us an ancient Egyptian script of information partially, partially from Akhenaten. Akhenaten. Okay, um, these are the books, and then, of course. Um, then you get the later chapters of which that um, he put together himself. I think it was like three chapters in which he put together himself. But this is the origin of the Moorish Holy Quran Circle 7, is this these particular books. Prophet of Drali was a Rosicrucian. He was a Mason. He was a Shriner. So he was a Gnostic Bible. Right. It's technically a Gnostic book. Right. Because Rosicrucians believe themselves to be spiritual Christians. Right. I'm about to do a little. Can you check me out? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, y'all. Oh, 
couple of these cellular structures uh, turning back into uh, their regular, you know, status. So now that's what I get rid of these files for the network. Now there's some people that yeah. like, like who knows, he has 
I'm in a generation, you know what I'm saying, that we understood what was the problem and and actually trying to find a way to get out of the situation. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's 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 the key to me, getting up out of this situation, you know, because we want to be right, you know. I mean, you know, uh ain't the one for marching, you know what I'm saying? You know that marching ain't Get nothing done. I mean, they might have passed a few of the civil rights legislation, but we never supposed to have been following the civil rights anyway. Malcolm already said, you know, that we are, you have to be recognized as human beings first. Once you are recognized as a human being, your civil rights come automatically. You not recognized as a human being and you fight for civil rights. That's a that's a that's a no for all. That's that's something in which that can't help you. And that's what that's what we did. You know what I'm saying? We 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 got behind Martin Luther King, we became the voice of the people. But as you seen yesterday, even by the time he finished doing all that damn marching, he realized I'm bringing my people into a burning building, Harry. <laughs> to a burning house. You know, he he realized it. That was only during the third the last three years of his life that he knew that he was being pimped by the rock by the rocket. You know, because they was paying a lot, they was paying for some of this, you know. But he didn't realize, he he started to realize that what we need to been going was human rights, not civil rights. But Malcolm already told, told him that. So him and Malcolm started, you know, coming to the same conclusions. And then when you see them picture together, you know, that was something in which that, you know, Malcolm talked shit about him, you know. Martin didn't really say too many things. He took the high road, but you know, they both had the same thing in heart, which was to make our people better, to bring us to a better situation. They just had different methods, and but the method in which that Martin used was not a method in which that should have necessarily been used without, because he he was labeled already civilist more tools. Martin. Said, okay, we get civil rights, then we no longer civilize more tools. Well, you are if you don't get recognized as a human being first, you know, and the only way you can be recognized as a human being is through your nationality as a natural person. So if you're not a natural person, then you still operate under this system as an artificial entity, hence you're still civilist small tools, which is dead in the eyes of the law, which means you fight for civil rights. It's for not. Everybody understand what I just said? Right. So that's what happened. You know? And you know, you kind of think like, how did these guys get to these conclusions so late almost to the end of life? You right. They weren't old men. Right. And, and right. They, but they, <laughs> it's like fucking big. I look at them right. like, they were 15, old, 16 was, when they died. They was 39. Yeah. How <laughs> come? And Martin Wolf was only 39 years old. That's it. 39. Man. You know what I'm saying? Right. You think, you think they in their 50s and 60s. These dudes was 39. They might look older than 39 because of the stress that they had to bear. You know what I mean? That stress guy. Damn, you tell me. Cool. That's just the truth. They did so much in it. In their twenties, like right, Martin was, was was a pastor and already had his doctorate right. in his twenties. Yeah, yeah, he graduated um at sixteen from high school. I was still thinking, man, that you broke 
Yeah, my aunt told me my mom graduated um, at the age of 16 from high school. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Um, so it's just it's just here they are. This is the one. Now you go back, now check this out. You go back now. I got Martin Luther King's papers for when he was in college. He knew the same shit that we're talking about right now. He knew about Jesus being Hiru, all of that information. He wrote it in his papers. I got his papers from when he was in college. Now, he didn't tell us none of that information, did he? But he was writing papers on Jesus being actually Hiru, ancient Kimmy, all of that information. He's writing, writing papers on this shit in college. And you're like, hold up. He's damn 1950s, 40s. You know what I'm saying? 1940s, he writing papers about Jesus being in rule. <laughs> you know, we think, you know, Bobby and Phil, they just damn told us about that shit. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Dr. Ben, John Henry Clark, they just told us, told us about this. But Martin is writing papers about the same information back in the 1940s. <clears throat> Where's he getting this shit from? Well, you get the wonderful um, empire of the um, ancient Kushites, uh, wonderful Ethiopians of ancient Kushites um, empire, written by Drusilla of Houston. She wrote that back in the 20s. Stolen legacy. You see what I'm saying? So the same information that we utilize in now, what we're using that shit in the 40s and 50s. They knew. <clears throat> but it wasn't, they didn't have the internet. They didn't have the vocal connection like we do today. You know what I'm saying? They gave him a platform and he only spoke on the subject in which that he and his writers designed and put together. You know what I'm saying? And then that's another thing too, is being making your speeches digestible to people. Like you know all of this, but you can't tell everybody mm -hmm. that you. No, it's like it's on. Because I kind of feel like even with my father, he grew up in church, he got Christ. And it's like they're very strict in the teaching and thinking. And when he died, I understood that there was a lot of people that didn't understand. Even my mother did not understand the man he was. Because me and him had personal conversations where he talked about, uh, he said, growing up, I said, why people didn't wear long ties, they wore bow ties, he said, because the bow tie pointed down the hill. Coffee and marvels, they misread the Bible and said marvel not so they said marvels, just mm -hmm. certain things. And and he knew a lot of other things that he just didn't share with people. Right. Because that's, that's the crazy part. Was he a Mason? No. He wasn't. He was around Masons. Yeah. Yeah. My mom felt right. 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 So when you're around them, if you are one or if you are around them, you don't talk much. <laughs> But men been taught not to talk much anyway. You know what I'm saying? Not to express ourselves. So, you know, that's not something that's, you know, uncommon. Maybe a lot of the first one to turn the book on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, he definitely knew more than what he was laying on to. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what happens. You know? Uh, ain't nobody want to hear that shit. <laughs> that's, 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 you know what I'm saying? Now I got to the point, I don't teach unless I'm teaching people who want to know. But other me just walking up the street, hey, young blood, yeah, come on over and let me tell you some things. <laughs> come on. I don't do that shit. I don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Back in the days when I was in college, I'd be happy as hell. Oh, yo, son, yo, let me tell you what, yo, let me tell you what happened. Yo. Nah, I don't get I don't do all that. Like what Brother Shem was saying yesterday, about the, the, the guys on earth, right. the guys, how they just run up on Yo, 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 y
All right, so with this symbol, we say, hey, Keith, we are able to connect to them from the inside to help them move through any negative thoughts and fears that they have built inside of themselves. So you see how powerful this say, hey, Keith symbol is? That's how powerful it is. This symbol works in healing phobias, anxiety, depression, and any mental illness like schizophrenia, etc. You cannot take control of the patient's mind, but you can act as a little voice that goes inside and send positive thoughts to them. This helps them to feel good about themselves and to move through their fears. This symbol can be used to help people lose weight, give up smoking, give up drinking, help to increase memory capacity. It is like to use the Reiki ideals when doing a mental healing. If you have discussed the problem with the patient before healing, you are organized a special affirmation that they can pick out for themselves or it's basically used on the healing so you can use the Psalms. All right? They can read that. The next symbol is called Hush Hush Shonen. Hun means basics, essential things, principle. Sha means person. Ze means right, just. Show means correct, proper. And Nin means thought, mind, idea. So basically, the full sentence of that and what it means, this is how you draw the Hush Hush Shonen symbol. Now, I was taught how to draw it here to the left, I mean to the right. That's how I was taught. The one that's actually to the right, that's at the top, that's how I was taught how to draw it. It's the version I learned. Right now, these are the very incidents there at the bottom and over to um, the full sentence on how they write it. I write it this way here um, to the um, right. All right, so it's the distant healing symbol. This is what this is, the distant healing symbol. All right, Hashishi Shonen has kept his original form in Japanese script almost intact. His name is actually meant to be a mantra that helps one connect with the simple energies and means right consciousness is the root for everything. Right consciousness is the root for everything. It also means correct thought is the essence of being. So even in the 5%, we always say, yo, but when you say peace, yo, peace means is the acronym for positive energy always correct errors. That's what we used to say, positive energy always correct errors. Basically, that's the same thing. What does mean? Positive energy always correct errors. Or correct thought is the essence of being, right? Consciousness is the root for everything. Right? Um, some say it means the higher being in me reaches out to the higher being in you. But that's an expression of its function rather than its translation. Right? The higher being in me reaches out to the divine, um, higher being in you, and no past, no present, no future or erroneous translation. But this is actually what this symbol does. They accurately describe what it's used for. This is the symbol that cancels distance in space and time. So it don't matter if you're on Mars, if you're on Earth, you can send a healing to somebody who's on Mars. And it don't have nothing, to, this distant thing has nothing to do with that. You breach time and space with this symbol, but she's shown in. Once again, you breach time and space with this symbol. Okay? <clears throat> That symbol is used in distance. The next symbol is Decomeo. Decomeo. This is the last and final symbol of the Ushi Reiki symbol. And there's hundreds of symbols. But this is the four symbols that originally came by way of the Buddhist temple in Japan under Ushi, um, Mikhail Ushi. All right? Decomeo. Nicomeo. This is the non-traditional one. This is the one that I use is the non-traditional one. I don't use the, um, the original one. Even though I was taught to draw the original um, the original one. All right. Actually, the one in which that I was taught how to draw looks more like the one at the lower right hand side. The lower right hand side. That's the one that I was taught how to draw. 
However, I use the non-traditional one of Deco Mayo. To me, that works better than the other one. I feel more energy from it. You don't know where that symbol come from, but once again, similar to a musical clip, a note. Um, you know, except this one is a spiral inside now. The other one's choking great spiral outside, back in. This one spirals inside, as you see. All right, so um, this one is Deco Mayo, um, which is the master symbol. All right, it means big light shining or the great illuminating light. That's what it means, the great illuminating light. And this one taps into your spirit. So the spiritual soul need cleansing. Deco Mayo is the symbol which that helps with that. So it takes you back to the origin, the essence of yourself. So we got the power symbol, which is Choku <coughs> Ray. That helps with the physical body. That's the physical body. Then you have Seheki, which helps with the emotional and mental body. You have Hansha Shishonen, which helps with the distance between with the healing effect. So it doesn't matter where you are, past, present, or future, another planet, uh, across the country, uh, across the world, it doesn't matter. All right? Um, it, it's like um, on the post office, it, it gets you there. <laughs> All right? And um, Dan Comeo is the symbol for spiritual cleansing. So this is what this symbol is for spiritual cleansing. All right? Now, it's a mystery of where um, the non-traditional one comes from. Um, he said he don't really have an idea. He says, when I look at it, it looks like an image of two hands cupped, um, pulling pain away from someone towards oneself. This time, the spiral goes from the center out. Um, so does the um, second spiral stroke, a good um, invocation of this motion. The Ecomeo is the healing symbol, the one that takes away pain or disease. It combines the power of the previous three symbols on a more subtle level. and is used by Reiki masters for attunements. I just don't use it for attunement. I use it for <clears throat> healing altogether. All right? If I'm using, um, um, I, I use Decomeo along with the rest of them. I don't just use it just because of an attunement. All right? Um, now, this symbol here is called Raku. Um, this is the last one. It's not really part of the four, but it is used when you're doing the tuning, and this is a grounded symbol. If you want to get grounded, you just simply come down like a lightning strike from the sky. Come down, and that grounds the person, grounds the individual. All right? Because remember, you're dealing with electromagnetic forces, so sometimes you need a grounder. This is the grounding symbol. Um, think of it like electricity, all right? You got the, you got, you have some plugs that's just the two prongs, right? That's stuck into the socket. Even though it might have a neutral hole there, but that's what that prong, that third prong is, is, is neutrality. So that is a balance between the positive and the negative prong, right? So, you might put the um, the prongs into the socket, but it also has a hole there for the third prong, but it's not used, all right? Or vice versa. You might, you know, get, get a um, you know, joint there. You might have to break off the third prong and just put in the two because there's only two there. Yeah. You know, either way, this third one which actually would be this symbol here is the grounding symbol to that neutrality one that's between the positive and negative um, current. So which that's coming to called electromagnetism. Electric is positive, magnetic is negative. So we're not talking about negative as in bad, you know, you know, or I would say, you know, bad meaning good. No, you know, we, we talk about you know, in that way, all right? So the Raku symbol is mainly used at the end of a tumor. Take a deep breath, hold it in, move back to the back of the head of the receiver, and then draw the Raku symbol down the head, along the spine, down to the ground, simultaneously releasing the breath. 
and then you inform the receiver that the process is complete and that they should have sit for a few minutes before arising. Um, it does not initiate healing energy, but instead is involved in grounding the receiver. It may also be used at the end of a healing session or at other times if additional grounding is needed. Now, big tip, when attuning people to Reiki, send in distant healing, do not try too hard um, um, try to hard trust in the intelligent uh, Reiki energy and you will never fail. So, so don't try too hard. Trust in the intelligence of the Reiki energy. The main words to remember is your intent. So take it easy and let the energy flow. All right? So... In order to do healings, you have to know the areas in the body in which that, where the organs are located at. Um, the lungs are located, of course, on each side of the chest with the heart in the middle, um, the liver um, right over uh, around what is called the solar plexus and right inside of the rib cage area. Then you have the stomach and behind the stomach and the liver is the pancreas and the spleen is over on the side behind the stomach as well. Then you have the large small intestines and the colon area, as you see here, in which that is the lower abdomen area, um, you know, the navel area, down going towards the um, rectum um, area for, um, you know, defecation or whatever the case is, and also going towards the bladder area, which is in the front of the small and large intestines area here, colon area in the center. So you have to know where the organs are so that you can do the healing. All right, this is another example of how it looks with the um, lungs and the heart behind the rib cage, the liver behind the rib cage, as well as also the stomach, the spleen, the pancreas. Um, all right, as well as you got the colon coming across here um, below the um, middle of the rib cage in the center, down into the abdomen area. Right, you got these various glands also that's in the body. You got the pituitary gland, pineal gland, um, you got the thymus gland, hypothalamus gland, um, excuse me, the, well, they in the brain too. You got the thyroid gland, the parathyroid glands, you got the adrenal glands, um, you have the pancreas um, gland, which is the pancreas itself, um, also the um, adrenal glands, as you see here, which sits on top of the kidneys. Um, you have the ovaries, the testes within the male, which is nothing more than falling ovaries, hence the fall of man itself. And you have the prostate, which is the uterus that is shrunken, which is within the male also. And if it begins to start swelling, then brother, they, they have a situation because they can't pee as well as they did before. All right? So there's a blockage, but that actually would be what we refer to as the uterus. Um, now it is the prostate gland. Um, so every gland in which that the male has, the woman had originally, because the male is actually a master, uh, a masculine, a masculine uh, female. I guess you can say for lack of a better term, terminology. So the testes is nothing but the falling ovaries. This is why, as a child, the, the um, testes are inside of the body, and you have to wait for them to fall. All right. And you heard um, medical doctors and nurses saying that, right? Oh, no, we wait for the testes to fall. But it's the ovaries. They, they come in from inside the body, just like where, where the ovaries are within the woman, and they fall down into a sac called the shoulder sac. <laughs> the vast deference are nothing more than the fallopian tubes. The penis is nothing but an uh, enlarged uh, 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 clitoris. Clitoris, all right. So the exact same organs that the that um, men have is the exact same organs the women have, is that they just function differently. Okay. So this is why I said yesterday that there's no opposite, there's complementary, right? So um, <clears throat> this is pranayama for awakening the kundalini. This is one of the techniques taught by. Um, Master Sanyata, my teacher, um, he passed, matter of fact, just a month after the Empress passed in 2014 in May, May 21st, May. Um, yeah, yeah, May 21st, 
May 21st, uh, 2014, in his sleep. It was past April the 19th on my born day, 2010. So it says, when you practice the following, concentrate on the Mahara Chakra at the base of the spinal column, which is the triangular um, in form, which is the seat of the Kundalini on Chakra. Well, you um, see, this is right here, right above the crack and behind is the bone, that is the sacral bone area. This is where the Kundalini resides at. That's the seat of the Kundalini. Close the right nostril with your right thumb. Inhale through the left nostril till you count three ohm. And close the left nostril with the little ring fingers. Of the right hand, retain the breath of now 12 ohms. Right? So, once again, it says, imagine that you were drawing the credit in <clears throat> with the atmospheric air. Then close the left nostril with the little ring finger in the right hand. Then retain the breath for 12 ohms. So as you breathe it in, it's for three ohms. Then retain it for a count of 12 ohms. Okay, so, ohm. So, ohm, and then send the current down the spine. Send the current that you create down the spine. All right? And then you take the breath for 12 ohms. It says send the current down the spinal, straight into the triangular lotus, which is called the little hara chakra, or you call it the sacral bone. Imagine that the nerve current is striking against the lotus and awakening the kundalini. Then slowly exhale through the right nostril, counting six ohms. Repeat the process with the right nostril as stated above, using the same units, having the same imagine, imagination and feeling. This pranayama will awaken the Kundalini quickly. Do it three times in the morning and three times in the evening. Increase the number in times gradually and cautiously according to your strength and capacity. In this pranayama concentrated on the Mulahara chakra is the most important thing. Kundalini will be awakened quickly if the degree of concentration is intense and if the pranayama is practiced regularly, right? So this is one of the techniques. Now, before we get to that, the first chakra that you must open in a wicked is the third eye, okay? Before you even start the kundalini transition, right? So you want to open your third eye first. So this is a qigong exercise for the pineal gland. Right? You want to open your third eye first. <clears throat> Cover your ears with your palms, with the middle fingers in the jaded pillar, in the cavity area under the um, external optical um, protrusion, actually. Um, put your index finger on the middle finger and snap them back. So this is basically what you're talking about. Right? Hitting at the medulla on the god at the back of the head, which correlates to the pineal gland area. All right? And this would generate a drumming sound in the brain cavity. This exercise is commonly called Min Tian Gu, which means sound the heavily drum. Hit it 24 times in an even steady beat. You may hit with both fingers at the same time or else. Alternate the fingers. All right. 
So you want to activate the pineal gland first, then you do the Kundalini exercise. And also before you want to do the Kundalini too, you want to do a concentration on the solar plex area. The solar plex area, this is the area here. This is actually the emotional body area. Um, when you get nervous and you get ready to speak in front of, of people, you feel the little, what they call, what they call it? What flies in the, in the guts. <coughs> this is the area that this, this is stemming from is your solar plex area. This is stemming from your solar plexus. Okay? So you want to be able to remove as much nervous energy because this is actually your sympathetic nervous system. It is your solar plexus. This is this is where your willpower stems from. Um, this is where your um, feelings about yourself stem from, your self-love, your self-worth, your self-esteem. All of that stems from the solar plex area, all right? So the solar plex is often called the abdominal brain. So um, you have technically uh, three or four brains. <laughs> you have this brain here, but even this brain is composed of your cere cerebellum, your cerebral, your limbic, and this is also your reptilian portion of the brain, <laughs> all right? Your heart is also a brain because the same neurons that's in the brain, they have located it in the heart. And then the crazy part is that the same neuron that's in the heart and the brain, they found that is in the abdominal brain, which is your solar plex area. This area here, the same neurons. So this is why when somebody says, I got a gut feeling, that's their instinct. If they were using their brain, then that would be intuition. Instinct is your animal instincts, which is right too. But your intuition is also right. So you have different ways to verify situations. Okay, you have your instincts and you have your intuition. Either way, whichever one that you use is can be right in any given situation. All right, so this is this um, abdominal brain area. It's an important center of the nerves connected with the sympathetic nervous system. It is located in the epigastric region behind the pit of the stomach on both sides of the spinal column. It has control on the main internal organs of man, in particular, the liver, the stomach, the spleen, the pancreas. All of this is right here. All of this is in this area. That's what this is. And the solar plex connects all of that. So any weakness in any one of these causes a weakness in the solar plex, which is your willpower. Okay? Um, it plays an important, uh, more important part than generally recognized. It takes an important, um, a part in the control of the emotions and of various bodily functions. It is composed of white and gray brain matter. That's why I talk about neurons. It is one of the most vital parts of the body. A blow over the solar plexus, well known within boxing, can render the opponent unconscious or death. All right? Hit them in the solar plexus. All right? It is the storage house or the storehouse of prana. It is the powerhouse. It is the most important of the hararas, supports of the body. There are 16 in number. It is known fact that men have been instantly killed by a severe blow over the solar plexus. The solar plexus is literally the sun of the nervous system. When the sun is shining harmoniously, the whole of the physical system is harmonious. It radiates, all right? So you want to be able to visualize at your solar plexus a sun, a sun. And that will light up the rest of the organs, all right? It radiates strength and energy to all parts of the body. Thoughts and prana, when directed towards the center through pranayama, will stimulate and awaken the sunshine latent therein. therein. So a person who has diabetes actually has lost the sense, metaphysically, has lost the sense of life. 
They have lost the, um, the taste for living. They've been emotionally so messed up, you know what I'm saying? And that's what that has caused. So technically, diabetes is not a genetic disease. It's an emotional disease. It's an emotional disease. Emotional trauma. That's what it is. So how about people that are quote unquote born like type two? Type one, you mean? Type one, right? Yeah. Um, they came through a traumatic experience while inside the womb. It was too young. Their body was too young to handle it. You know what I'm saying? Their mother and father could have been fighting while she was pregnant, or whatever the case is. The baby hears the yelling. The baby hears what's going on. It feels the the fear element from the mother feel, you see what I'm saying? All of that becomes encapsulated in the child as the child is growing. So that affects the solar plex area of the child as the child comes out, all of a sudden, they find out by the child, by the time the child is seven years old, that the child has type 1 diabetes. Because the ability for it is Exactly. That's the dominant brain. The child is getting fed the nutrients of the mother, whether it's the mental nutrients, whether it's the physical food nutrients, through the umbilical cord. You said, like, you live in the eating fear or, you know, literally tasting it, tasting those things. Because these are chemical responses in the body. And if you don't do something, if you put it this way, chemical responses in the body, this is what happens. There's a storage place for the chemical responses in the body. For fear, it's the kidneys. For anger, it's the liver. For depression, it's the lungs. For rejection, it's the genitalia. For stress, it's the brain. You see? For hatred, it's the heart. So any place in which that is weak, those chemicals accumulate at because you are producing these chemical responses in the body, and now they have to have a storage place for the body. The body in dis ease. Exactly. And they'll call organs. Well, hold up. When you, when they call, play a piano, what's that called? Organ. So, music, these seven notes in music can help relieve the seven chakras where this shit is accumulated at. Sound can help accumulate or disaccumulate, I should say, this stressful dis ease. Symptoms in the body. Right. Everybody got that? Um, if we just work on the solar plexus, would that get the, the lowest chakra automatically yes. in mm -hmm. So that's the powers shot. Can you say the the fear factors again? Yeah. Fear, kidney, stress, brain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're right, because I don't got it up here. <laughs> All right. For Fear is stored in the kidneys. The adrenal glands sits directly on top of the kidneys, as I showed you on the, on the, on the picture, right? So what is produced from the adrenal glands? Adrenaline. What is adrenaline? Adrenaline is used for fight or flight, right? That means when the adrenal glands, which sits directly on top of the kidneys, is iodine deficient, what happens is that you develop adrenal disease. You have to have enough iodine in your body, right? which helps with the production of the adrenal, um, adrenal. It also helps with the thyroid and parathyroid glands for thyroxin, which is the chemical which that the thyroid gland produces. So now all of a sudden you have a lot of people who have the thyroid issues. But that's because there's not a lot of <clears throat> iodine in the body or in the foods any longer, as a matter of fact. They've taken out iodine from out the foods. This is why you have so much disease now. Iodine deficiency. 90 to 99 percent of the um, of the people in the United States are deficient of iodine. And iodine helps with the manufacturing of various chemicals in the body. So if you have so much fear, so much fight or flight in your life, 
you done depleted the resource of your iodine, and then it's not in the food any longer. But it used to be in the breads and the doughs and things like that. They took that out. They replaced it with um, bromine, which now strips the body from more iodine. Bromine is the cousin to iodine. But if you don't have enough iodine, it strips the remnants of the last vestige of iodine that you have from out the body. So now, yeah, and that was purposely done, y'all. These, this is what these evil scientists, geniuses do. All right? It's found ways to work to depopulate the planet. This is one of the ways to depopulate the planet. And plus, not give you, go back to the um, TV show Raising Dion. Who's seen that on Netflix? Yeah, a little bit of it. All right. Yeah, you got to see the whole thing. That, that, matter of fact, the season coming back, um, um, I think, the end of December, December 31st or somewhere around, right? I think they get ready to put the new series, second series um, season out. But in the first one, Dion was in the hospital. Um, the mom's sister, who was a, a doctor, she tested Dion, and she said, mm, that's strange. His um, levels of iodine is three times that of the average person. It just told you in the movie what gives you the strengths and the gifts which that we just talked about. It's iodine. Back in the days, your grandma, if you had a scratch or got hurt, they put some iodine on it and eventually would heal to where there's even no scar. You remember that? See, grandparents don't know this information any longer. And they don't sell iodine like this at the stores any longer. But back in the days, your grandma would put iodine on your soul. Yeah. Whether you got a little, yeah, yellow or either um, brown, dark brown. And it, and, and it would heal as if nothing happened. That's how powerful iodine used to be. But when they take it out, now we get the scars, we get all of this, wounds, you know, don't properly heal. That's what diabetic foot sores is. They lack iodine. They lack, they got diabetes because they lack magnesium. They also lack two other chemicals, or what is known as minerals. They lack chromium. They lack vanadium. Yeah, you can hear every damn thing. Upstairs, outside, <laughs> shit. <laughs> that's, that's just how this is. Y'all hear when the ambulance and the, and the, and the um, fire trucks and all them come by, they be by in a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they'll be buying the second, yo. You know how they do. <laughs> no. Because when we do all that shit, why are we doing this? All right. <laughs> All right. Who was that? Okay, we was here last week. Oh, yeah. I, 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 okay. <laughs> I, so, the missing chemicals for a person who has diabetes, and I'm going to go through a lot of this, is chromium and vanadium, magnesium. A person who has strokes, they have a magnesium deficiency. For heart attacks, they have a copper deficiency. Right, I'm, I'm telling you everything that's going on here, mineral wise, what's lacking, and what we should be supposed to be taking on a daily basis. You want all of these minerals in a liquid form. The best one is the 75 to 77 minerals that you can take, is in a bottle, in a liquid bottle. Matter of fact, I'm showing, I don't know if I can pull it up, but I was able to pull up um, a lot of the screen the um, other day, but for some reason. Um, ain't been able to do the same thing. Don't you have like the MC3 or whatever it's called? Isn't it drop it? Oh, see, see, there, there you go. You, you, you go help me. See, Neil helped right. me yesterday with that, with that joint. That's, <laughs> see, that's what I'm talking about. I got, I got, gotta be able to get it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna try it the way that Neil showed me yesterday. I'm gonna see if that works. <laughs> Right. 
Oh, you need it? Yeah. Right now. All right, so this is hit here on the computer. It's called TRC Minerals. There's a 75 plant derived minerals. Right? Can you see it? TRC Minerals. TRC Minerals. TRC Minerals. 75 plant based minerals. This is what you want. Right? You want to take this on a daily basis. Plant based minerals. All right, so that's actually what we have is a mineral deficiency, y'all. Any disease is a mineral deficiency, and you or a vitamin deficiency, and you just have to find out what it is that you're missing and get that mineral or that vitamin back into your body. No, no, we will we will we'll catch you. Yeah, we'll come back to you. It's one tablespoon to two tablespoons um, is recommended. Um, so you want as much information concerning these minerals. Um, you should be able to get the rest of the minerals content because you may you compose of ninety nine. Basically, man, not elements, right? Um, which is on the periodical chart. So you will avoid as much of this information as possible as far as on these minerals. Um, they'll tell you the 75 minerals that is in there. You can read up on it, and then you can go and do the research on, you know, on these minerals. But um, iodine is in there, copper is in there. Selenium is in there. All well, these things is in there. Okay. Um, now for the vitamins, you will want vitamins. These are the main vitamins in which that we are missing as a people. Is vitamin C. Vitamin C is basically number one. Vitamin D, I actually would say is number one. In particular, vitamin D three. So you D three. Right. Right, if you give you if you deficient, then you got scurvy, you have um cricket um, rickets, um yeah, rickets. Um if you don't have it, and that is based on both of these. If you don't, if you have um, you can develop scurvy if you have vitamin C deficiency and rickets if you have vitamin D3 deficiency, which means bone problems. That's what rickets is, is bone problems. Um, um bone um, spurts. And so forth and so on, those types of things. Osteoporosis, exactly. And women has a, has a situation that can cause every month they bleed, menses, and they <coughs> put a lot of those minerals is being lost through that. So women have to replenish themselves, you know, during that, during that particular time of those um, three to seven days, or, you know, some have less, um, depending on the diet that is. Um, I know women who just fought because they were vegans. And you don't really have a period like that any longer. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And then there's some who still eat meat and they still have periods that last three days to seven days. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Bible shit. <laughs> Biblical <laughs> periods. <laughs> whole seven days. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, whole seven days? You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. It depends. So, uh, but the replacement of the minerals is necessary during that time period. 
specifically for women. Um, for the men, um, during the teenage years, those minerals need to be replenished because men have wet dreams. That's just like the women um, in a messy cycle. Mm -hmm. um, matter of fact, the wet dream or the semen um, or, or, or is a concentration of blood. That is blood. No matter of fact, um, um, the ancient tells us that one drop of semen is equivalent to 40 to 80 drops of blood. Just one. Life force. Right, that's the life force. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna tell you this again. So he's just gonna round it out to 60, because 40, the ratio of 40 and 80 is 60. So one drop of semen is equivalent to 60 drops of blood. Just one. This is what the ancients teach. Okay, and you read um 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 Dawah's sexology by Stephen Chang. He speaks about this in here. <clears throat> okay, so this is what we're looking at. So that's so during that time when you have a lot of wet dreams, masturbation, and all that type of stuff, men, these minerals become necessary. Otherwise, you deplete your life force. This is why they say, "Man, you don't stop playing with yourself. You don't go blind." And all this stuff because the minerals and the vitamins in which that is being depleted from the body. This is real. We think it, we know, we, we laugh about it. Man, you ain't gonna nobody gonna go blind from playing with themselves, man. Let's stop telling people that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? But no, but you all losing life force, minerals. And vitamin A is one of the main ones. So vitamin A is one of the vitamins in which that oftentimes we are deficient in. Zinc is a mineral, but oftentimes we are deficient in. All right? Um, zinc plays a part in the reproductive system. So if you're deficient in it, then you have all types of um, abnormalities. It can be, create um, retardation. Um, all these types of things can happen. Um, um, children with autism. Um, you know, so all these things can take place. All right? There's a um, zinc deficiency. Um, um, so vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D. Um, I said vitamin E, right? I said vitamin E? Vitamin E. All right, about, that's the, this is the last one. These are all the deficiencies that we have to make sure that we account for in our bodies daily. You think I can mix it with my sea moss? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you want these in liquid form. Anything in liquid form, because liquid is, gets into the body, into the bloodstream the quickest. You don't want capsules and pills. That only gets into about 22 to 28 percent absorption rate. This liquid gives give you 96 to 98 percent absorption rate. So you want liquid. This is what they're not telling you in the industry, but they be selling all these goddamn um, um, capsules and bottles and uh, sugar pills and sugar-coated <laughs> vitamins and right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? This right, Flintstone tablets and shit. I remember <laughs> my mom gave me them, them, them damn Flintstone tablets. You know what I'm saying? I had them shits growing up. You know what I'm saying? I used to be playing with them and shit beforehand. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey, Fred. <laughs> I want the car one. You know what I'm saying? Double, 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 double. You know what I'm saying? This shit. <laughs> yeah. Yo, boy, we grew up on some shit. I'm telling you, boy. <laughs> but yeah, sugar coated. Thank you, God, for <laughs> saying that. Sugar coated, vitamins. Everything with sugar. Right, everything with sugar. Right, especially vitamin C. The thing that's supposed to be helping you the most, citrus, they didn't put the most damn sugar in. Okay? So, these are the vitamins and minerals that you need on a daily basis. That's basically what I'm saying. Um, the other stuff you can get from, mostly from the rest of the food through, you know, through eating. But they have taken out most of these vitamins and minerals out the food supply. This is why the food don't taste the same as it used to when you were growing up. You know, you don't have that flavor as it used to. You know, it, it, uh, um, a matter of fact, even when um, it don't even mold like it used to. Okay. It, it, it does nothing like it used to, because it's not the same. And they have taken out these 
vitamins and minerals out, out, out so that we can be in a dis-ease state purposely. Because what's their largest industry? The pharmaceutical industry is the largest industry. Billions and trillions of dollars through there. Especially now with this jab. Shit, they done damn learn how to maximize that shit. <laughs> but then they can say work. Right. Right. And I can say tell me he can cure all this shit. What the hell? And he was using herbs, but along with the herbs, if you use the bottom, it would even work even better and quicker. And then right in the alkaline water because you talk about liquids. Once again, liquid vitamin A, liquid vitamin C, liquid vitamin um, 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 E, liquid um, vitamin D. This is all in liquid form. Once again, 96 to 98% absorption rate. So that means that it gets throughout most of the cells in your body as compared to capsules or pills, which only give you 22 to 28% absorption rate. So it barely gives you a third. Barely gives you a third of the absorption rate of it being in liquid form. So we, we need this. And this is what keeps us healthy, y'all. This is why some people you see decrepit, they're the same age as somebody else, and then you might see somebody else who damn like, damn son, you damn like 20 years, boss around this bitch like 20 years younger than you. You know what I'm saying? Then? And you the same age as he is. You see what I'm saying? That's 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 what's going on. That's what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Some are getting better absorption rates than others. So there's no hereditary disease, as they were saying. Oh, that is bullshit. Uh, well, certain people with different physiology, like alcohol. Different physiology means that they need even more of these vitamins and minerals. You know what I'm saying? Um, for example, um, an Albion might can only take 15 to 20 minutes in the sun and they got enough of their vitamin D3 for that day. We on our hand need at least an hour to three hours in the sun to reach the same amount. But even then, what the sun does for us is different than what it does for them. Because they can only take in so much um, sunlight, which is the hormone vitamin D, all right, in the form in which that comes down. Mostly comes down in D2 form. Um, for them, I think it comes down more so in D3 form for us. All right? Um, so you have on the markets now um, vitamin D2, vitamin D3. D3 is the one in which they, uh, most of the time that we are able to go through. All right? And it's real good for us. Um, especially since we don't probably, a lot of people don't get no three hours of sun, but they especially not during winter time. And when that happens, we develop what's called SAD. Or seasonal afflicted disorder. It's called SAD. And um, this this is actually a disease. It's called SAD. <laughs> oh yeah, well you 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 in a good place now, right? Almost on. Yeah, because Dallas is is the sun. Shoot, you still getting seventy five and eighty degrees over there, ain't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 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 you come here and we, and we still get a little sixty five to seventy degrees here. So it ain't too much different. You know what I'm saying? You know, but normally when we get this, so you don't want this with you. I was thinking it was gonna be you know colder. So yeah, so I said you can buy Yeah. Yeah. And what was it on being Cali, guy? What, what what you get? It's something out. It's been just raining before we, before I left. But you know, they they've been having a, a hard time getting rain from there. So oh yeah, it's something out. Oh, so so what's the what's the degrees out there? Probably like uh, getting like uh, seven five something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. Seven five, seven five, eight, yeah. <laughs> we even get sixty five to seventy five here. So, um, some years that's normal. Some years it's not. <laughs> some years, like Brother Shu could have told you, shoot, one year we had had this conference. It was snow on the ground. This damn high. <laughs> Right, right, right. It's that hot. You know what I'm saying? North, North Carolina has some strange weather, yo. We have a combination of like all four seasons in one in, in one um in three months. We have all four seasons in, in three months. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this is 
supposedly uh, this now is the winter solstice time. So we end in fall, coming into um, winter, and it's 75 degrees outside yesterday. <laughs> right, you know what I'm saying? You know, but see, Cali in Texas, that's that's so what, you know, that ain't too far off your path. You know what I'm saying? This is like, we damn near, near Florida for us. <laughs> and we damn three states above Florida. <laughs> you know, so. Cave over the, the kidneys, the beard. The yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't win everywhere. I, I forget. I'm sorry. Right. God asked me. I'm sorry. I, keep you on track. Keep you on track. Yeah, like, I, 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 I
in particular spring water. Right? Spring water. Yeah, well, right, because of the anger in the liver. The anger in the liver. They never was able to get rid of the anger in the liver like they supposed to. This is why the liver is said to be one of the most um, stubborn organs to heal. Right? Cirrhosis of the liver, if you don't stop drinking, that's what happens. And cirrhosis of the liver causes death. Right, my um, um step grandfather, he died from cirrhosis. He basically was about to die of cirrhosis of the liver, and he was in so so much pain. He just ended his life. He shot himself. So when you kill yourself, do you go? Well, I guess, is there really a hell? But it's like if you kill yourself, do you go to hell or? You you put yourself into hell. Nobody sent you there. You put yourself there because what exists is your mind after the death of the physical body. So whatever the mind is uh, attached to, that is what will create the health for you in the afterlife. So for example, let's say um, my step grandfather, he shot himself. So if nobody put him on the altar, the hell on which he would cause in other words, he would never raise from out of the depths of hell into a heavenly state because nobody is remembering him. So he'll stay in that perpetual state of loops and that would probably be of his last life is you know of the present of the of the previous life that he had hurting of the liver hurting about to die he sh shot shoot himself because of the pain he can't bury it and so that would be a loop that would be played over and over again in his psyche because he'd become attached to it Right, right. Well, the movie Lucifer, that's real. That, 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 that's some real shit. And that's actually what they showed you there. No, you go to your own time loop. It's you put yourself in that state. Yeah. And remember, they was trying to figure out on um, Dan, you know, why he hasn't gone up into heaven yet. It was something in which that he was feeling sorry for, but he never figured it out. And then all of a sudden, he ends up figuring it out this past season. He ends up figuring it out. He never got a chance to say bye to his daughter. <laughs> how much he loved her and how much he, you know, he never got a chance to do that. Now, that should have been easy as hell to figure it out, right? But as you follow the storyline, you're right. Why, why, why is it? Number one, he always avoided going to see because he didn't want to put her through that pain. But she, she is crying and she wanted to see him. <laughs> so he was in a state of hell. He put himself in that state of hell. Because of his own mental condition. This is why in the Buddhist teachings it tells you no attachments. And it don't mean that you can't be loving. It just means there's no attachment. In other words, don't get caught up into the physical sensations of life. That it causes you to become so bound by life itself. By this material realm. That you don't see the spiritual side of everything. Right. So human. Right. Human <laughs> stat. They became human stats. <laughs> exactly. You know? So yes, so yes, there is a hell, but you put yourself into the hell of state because of your mental conditioning of your attachments to the things on earth. As same thing with heaven. If you see yourself in heaven, that you want to have joy, you want to have peace, you want to you know, see your relatives, then that's what you'll see. This is when you see people who are passing on, all of a sudden they see, Johnny, that's you? Oh, that's my sister Avery. Oh, they, they already see the ancestors are already coming to them, telling them, look, relax, we get ready to take you with us. So it's good to be attached to the ancestors on that side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But not to the niggas on this side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You get it? Because yeah. <laughs> the niggas on this side drag your ass down. Yeah. This here is the damn crab barrel. <laughs> Earth is the crab barrel. All right? 
But them niggas on that side, you go with them when they come. You say, oh, what's up, cuz? <laughs> Whoever. That's my brother, you know what I'm saying? Tracy, yo. Ain't seen this nigga in damn 40 years. <laughs> he gun came to me. You know what I'm saying? So you see the ancestors, and then you see some people dying with smiles on their face. How the hell is that possible? <laughs> when you would think, hold up, this shit is damn excruciating, ain't it? You see people avoiding that shit. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. They, they, you know, they going through turmoil and shit, and you like, what the fuck? I don't want to go through that shit. <laughs> and they going through it, you know what I'm saying? And you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, they and they die with you know excruciating face pains and shit on their face. Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, just just fucked up. And, <laughs> and you like, damn me, whatever they seen. <sighs> you can tell that they had some attachments, which yeah. wasn't good. But when you see people pass up with smiles on their face, and you're like, damn, hold up. This one died in excruciating pain. This one died with a smile on his face. How the, what's up? What's up? Because it's mental. If you're seeing all your ancestors that you love that's passed on that you haven't seen in 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, and they damn coming to you, and they damn going to say, look, we're going to take you for fast. You better, hell yeah, I'm going. <laughs> Shoot. Hell yeah, I'm coming. Shit, bye niggas. <laughs> <laughs> Be like everybody do. See you next lifetime. <laughs> next <laughs> lifetime. Right, next lifetime. See you next lifetime. <laughs> For real. You know what I'm saying? So this, this is how you can tell. And I've seen both ways people have passed forth. One with the smiles, one with the excruciating pain. I don't want that one. <laughs> now, like, with the suicide relative that you had, right? Do you, can you bring that's them just out? A, that's just like the movie Ghost. Can you bring mm-hmm. them out to like your cousin? Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, If you get a picture or if you think about him at your altar for libations and you begin to start doing some ceremonial rituals for him in the state in which that he was. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But see, some practitioners will tell you, don't even mess with the niggas who um, did suicide or who are drunk or who are molesters or whatever the case is. Don't, don't mess with them at all. You know what I'm saying? Some practitioners say that. You know? um, so you got to know the person's heart. Like I said with my cousin Tim. Yeah, I know the nigga was robbing and thieving. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Robbing and stealing. You know what I'm saying? But I knew his heart because I grew up with him. I knew he was a good kid. You know what I'm saying? He just was in a bad predicament, bad circumstance. And he thought the only way that he could do some shit was to do that. You know what I mean? So, you know, if you know the person's heart, you know what I'm saying? You know, like you got a chance to talk with your dad to get to know him more intimately, his thought process and so forth and so on. You know what I'm saying? You know, as compared to somebody else. You know, another relative that you might not got a chance to talk too much to or whatever the case is. You just knew that they passed, but you don't really know the circumstance behind that. Sometimes you just got to let the ancestors on the other side handle that. If they can come to you in a reading, oh, okay, she's there with y'all. Okay, word, I can put her ass on the altar. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because I didn't know the thought process. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so that's how this is, y'all. Yeah, everything, remember, the all is mind and everything is mental. Let me say that shit again. The all is mind and everything is mental. So what exists after the death of the physical body is the mind. That is your soul. That is your soul. Okay? And then the spirit also leaves the body at the same time. This is why your last exhalation, exhale, is the breath, and at that point, you release the electronic emissions from your body. The body begins to start decomposing and breaking down, and then whatever remnants is left of energy that goes back to the planet Earth, and then it's fed to those on the planet Earth. All right, in particular, the woman, when she's pregnant, she actually takes in those remaining electrons from the transmissions of those who have passed physical form, and she takes that in to form the body of the, of the, of the next being who's going to incarnate here. That child. 
I got to get it for you. Y'all asking questions? I got to get it. You got to find out what the hell going on on planet Earth. You can't be silly no more. <laughs> all right, so these are the keys. All right, what I'm telling you are the keys of what takes place after death, so forth and so on. Next incarnation, same thing. And then when you leave the physical body, you go into what's called the star plane or astral plane, as we talked about yesterday um, morning. Um, the astral plane, the various levels of the astral plane. Um, the more that you go up into the astral plane, the more it becomes refined and the name changes according to what we say, um, say and perceive here on planet Earth. So you have your etheric body, you have your astral body. This is all present with you here now, but you go through each one after the point of death. The body dies, but the etheric body lingers. This is actually who you are calling on when you talk about the ancestors. You are calling on the etheric body. But even the etheric body dies. That is known as the second death. <laughs> then you have the astral body. Right? Now the astral body, you can go to now understand that these are cosmic zones, these are planets, <laughs> other planets, y'all. These are um, um, what is also referred to as realms or dimensions, parallel worlds, universes that you go through, all right? Some places you might be there 100,000 years and then incarnate back into a physical form. Some of you might be there 5,000 years, incarnate into a physical form. Some of you might be there only two years and incarnate back into a physical form. <laughs> These are the various dimensions and realms, cosmic zones, okay, planets. Because each planet actually is a different dimension. Like Venus is a fourth dimensional planet. Jupiter is a fifth dimensional planet. Okay? You all heard this information before? Okay. You say kind of. So these, so each, right, 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 right. So each planet is a various um, reflection of a different dimension that you might go to, that you might only be there for a certain amount of time. Then we have the atmosphere that is around the planet Earth, and there's several levels to this atmosphere. You might go to what is called the magnetosphere, or what is called the ionosphere, which is about um, 65 miles to 3,000 miles up into the sky. That is actually the first realm that we go to. That is what is called the astral plane. That is where the actually the stars are actually located at. This is this is according to um, the flat earth theory. I'm not so much into the so-called flat earth, but some of the things that they say correlate to um, information of the ancients. Okay? Not everything, because we know that the earth ain't really flat, because shit, how come I'm seeing the damn mountain that's down... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing hills and mountains. I'm going through down West Virginia, and they got. I'm like, God damn! <laughs> These are some big ass hills and mountains up in here. You know what I'm saying? Or well, I'm going towards Tennessee, um, um, which is um, the Appalachian. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing all these damn hills, and you know, or I'm going towards Colorado, towards the Rocky Mountains, and I'm seeing all. So we know the Earth ain't flat, flat. You know what I'm saying? So that shit goes out the window. But is it? Flat in the sense of um, that we are in some type of dome. Well, there is a TV show that was called Dome, which came out, which was shot right here in North Carolina. In fact, it was shot right where I lived at before we came up here, two and a half hours away near Elizabethtown, which is in Kelly, North Carolina, near White Lake. All right, they shot it. They shot some of the episodes right there. Where we live at, and use some of the house. Matter of fact, use the house that I lived in, my grandma's house, and the um and the two um houses that my cousins and them that they stayed in. They used that area. They used that area. So the name of the show was called Dome. Go back and watch this. I don't know where it's at right now. It's not on Netflix, but it's somewhere. But they show you, you know, um, the same thing that the flat earthers are speaking of. That there's a dome. Over the planet. Now, we refer to it in science, I mean, the science of astrophysicist realm as 
the Alex, um, the um, Van Allen belt. All right, that's what it's called, the Van Allen belt. And even for those who say that they faked the moon hoax, they never went to the moon. We say specifically that they never got past the Van Allen belt. That is the same Van Allen belt. That is the dome that this flat earthers are speaking of. You can't go no further. This is why you've seen when um, um, Jeff Bezos, head of um, Amazon, you know, for, I think he's former head of Amazon. I think he stepped down just like Bill Gates and all the other ones. They, they don't what they put their little interest in other shit. But um, this is why you see, you know, them particularly, you know, when they went up, as soon as he got black, they brought their asses back down. They ain't lingered too long, did they? Because they, 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 they didn't want to. Right. Right. Yeah, hit the top of that damn dome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, no, I mean, there's some things in which that the flat earth is safe, which you have to go back and ponder and say, yo, some of this shit is not right. Because the ancients say that when you die, you become a star up in the sky. If the star is that goddamn far away, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know. Because that's the thing when I, when I look at videos. The thing I notice is that my thing is I, I can see the stars from the ground. Why can't I see the stars when I'm in here? Exactly. And everything's in the stars. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now I think about it. See the stars more clearly. Right. Remember, they <laughs> went to the moon, but in none of the damn moon pictures do you see stars. You don't see the sun. You don't see the stars. You see a damn CGI image of the Earth. A CGI image of the Earth. All right. That's what you see. And then from the moon, the earth looked like damn, um, like it's going through half of the, they show you that, like half of it is dark, shaded, because allegedly the, the sun is on one side, the moon is allegedly on the other side. But then there's times when you see the moon and the sun up in the same sky at the same time. One is over here, one is over here. And you're like, hold up, ain't your ass supposed to be on the other side of the sun? <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Some of the shit that the flat earth is saying. You see it, and the shit don't make no sense when you study this shit in school. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, what is this y'all trying to get us to think about, yo? Because I'm looking at the damn sun and moon right now in the damn same sky. Yeah, they, right, it's right, right. And you know damn well that allegedly your ass is supposed to be on the other side, moon, because <laughs> it's daytime over here. What the hell is you damn, how the hell are you showing yourself right here, right now? So there's, there's, there's some things. You know, and, and and you know what they'll tell you is is well, you know, is it's going it's going on the other side now and you know <laughs> Okay. I do have a question. Um, back to the um, the you know, know it's three o'clock in the damn afternoon, right? So yeah. he's supposed to already had his ass over here. <laughs> but, 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 but go ahead, guys. I'm sorry. You talking about um, the altars and stuff like that. Right. Now, does it also count for objects? Jacket and that's my father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The thing I was already. Yeah, the smell is still on the smell is still on the jacket. The energies is still on the jacket. So yeah, that, that's gonna get you you put that on also, that's gonna get you some good clarity. He'll come into your dreams, he'll 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 be teaching you once again, no problem. Because I had an image here that does not come visit my father's at the time. Yeah. Right, right. Right. Or he'll come and visit you. So yeah, I've been to like two thousand. Okay, see, so he's living it up yeah, over there. Yeah, he's living it up over there. He got his little garden, got you know, he got his little houses. You know what I'm saying? One of the houses looked like the house I grew up in Michigan. No, had, like, of course that would be the one that he chose. Yeah, like twenty cars in the garden. Oh, see, <laughs> hey, 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 he ain't playing. He living it up. Yeah. And see, that's what happened. That's see, that's the that's heaven. See, that's the heaven. See. He didn't have no regrets. He was able to say, look, I'm going up, I'm going up yonder. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's that's the song in church. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, that's what he did. He went on up, he, he made his own world. And that's what it is. It's a mindset. You make your own world, whether it's a hell or whether it's a heaven. Okay? Some are in purgatory. The ones who's in purgatory, those are the ones in which that didn't decide yet. They wanted to um, have a hell or a heaven yet. They wanted 
you know, maybe some things in which that depends on reincarnation back into the physical body. So they are purgatory in order to get their body, to get another body, to reincarnate, as they would say. All right? They're the ones who say, now nah, I'm going back. Some say, I ain't going back. You see? The ones who say, I ain't going back, they live there like your dad. You know, <laughs> sure, they had two houses, they had 20 cars. You know what I'm saying? They <laughs> lived a whole other life. Right. Yeah, when I, my first dream was that mm -hmm. it, uh, I saw him, he was in a bed of like flowers or something, sleeping. Mm -hmm. And he woke up. We had a conversation that I don't remember. Everything white everywhere around him. Yeah, that light. And then, like, when the conversation was over and he was leaving, he played the guitar mm -hmm. and the church and stuff. So okay. He yeah. had the guitar strapped on his back, went through the door. Uh -oh. That was all white. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. He done threw the matrix up in there on you. <laughs> <laughs> so we went and he opened through the um, light on the door that turned the light. Yeah, yeah. And then on the other end, he seen his father. Oh, uh oh, the architect. Remember that? Same same story. Yeah, same yeah. story. Is that you got a chance to see him before he went through the door? Yeah. Yeah. And my, on my way there, and I saw it later, the Tupac video of that very. Oh yeah, yes, with, yeah, 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 with, 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 thing, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. in a bus. It was dark outside. I got into a bus to get to that spot. Yeah, and it was just like that Tupac video. It was, it was the weirdest thing when I saw the video. I'm like, whoa! I mm -hmm. literally dreamt that. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Tupac video. You talking about the one where he unless you died in? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. And on the bus, it was like. Video of like the, like the elders and everybody right. going to other dimensions. Yeah. Okay. Is that? Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. You said elders? Yeah. Okay. In the video. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, but yeah. in the dream, it wasn't, I didn't see that. Right, right, right. Dream, I remember people there. But right, I was right. Like, yeah. right. Okay, I got you. You just focus on your dad. Yeah. And y'all get ready to see dad, yo. Yeah. It worked. It worked. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so um, any questions concerning anything that we talked about? I answered the questions for us. Life, death, what happened? Oh, let me finish the bodies. Physical body, etheric body, astral body, which is also called your emotional body. You have your mental body, your causal body, your spiritual body, and your soul body. You have all seven of these bodies here and now. Right? Only three of those seven bodies survived death. They're referred to as your Ba, your Ka, and your Aku. Aku, K H U. Or Aku, A K H U. Aku, with the H commandment, teaches me to glorify light body. Your glorified light body. The Ka means your spiritual body. And Ba means your soul body. These are the three bodies. So the causal body survives, which is called within English, your aku, your spiritual body, which is called your ka, and your soul body, which is called your ba. These three survive death. The other bodies die over a certain amount of time. You put your altar up because the remnants of these energies still exist from that body. And, they, and these energies come, and they're the ones in which they help you. These other ancestors that help you until you know they decompose. So the three layers that you mentioned, the three layers that you mentioned, that's the immortal part. That's the immortal part. Since you brought that up, that's the um, the first speak of the Kaaba. Is that in that that's the combination of the Kaaba block? Right. Okay. And the, the spirit, spiritual soul. That's what Kaaba means. Spiritual soul. So when the is, um, Muslims are running around the Kaaba, you know, seven times, that is talking about the awakening of your second shoppers. And then they kiss the black stone, which is talking about kissing the pioneer gland, which is housed the melody. You know, and that kiss is the adoration of the Kutalini striking the pioneer gland, which is creates the divine marriage in heaven between our set and our soul, in order to birth forth a new spiritual awareness, which is called Heru. So this is them traveling around it, 
seven times, kissing the black stone to create com higher consciousness to a law. You know how many misinterpretations of that I've heard? <laughs> and this is like the best one I've heard, like ever. You know, oh, you're worshiping the thing. Like, not that. You know, like, no, they're doing a ritual. Rituals is something that humans do because they need something linear to tap them into the spiritual side of themselves, which is the right hemisphere of the brain. So they need something that's left hemisphere in order to tap them into the right hemisphere. And then you have to come reach the left and right hemisphere. Right? They're not just doing rituals just for the hell of just to be doing rituals. The rituals have a meaning in order to help them um, reach a higher form of consciousness. You know what I'm saying? And that's the key. And that's what you said earlier about the use, uses of tools like the cards. Yeah. Once you get to a certain point, you don't need the cards. You don't need the cards. Right, right. The only thing you did was open and awaken the mind, consciousness. I heard Sir talk about something like that. When he was doing the altar and something he was trying to do, then he was like, wait a minute, it's all up here. And so he just did away with law and just started manifesting straight yeah, to his mind. Yeah, yeah, but some people can't stop cold turkey and just go from one point to the next. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to do it gradually. And tools is nothing more than a gradual way of doing it until you have mastered the working tools of the mind. Workshop, the tools of the work. It says the handyman's tools of the workshop is the mind. This is what it says in the Holy Quran, Circle Seven. And they got a whole chapter on, on on masonry in the Holy Quran, Circle Seven. It's a whole chapter on masonry, and most people bypass that information. They part of the temple of where they uh, read in the Holy Quran, Circle Seven. You know, prepared divinely prepared by Prophet Muhammad. But there's a whole chapter in there about the workshop of the mind. And they speak of all the tools in which that you need for the workshop of the mind. But then eventually it says, um, you have all these tools, but then you don't need it. Because it says they got hammers. Hammers, you know, make sound. You know what I'm saying? Bang, bang, bang. But then it says that they're using this, this hammer, they're using these tools, and it's not making a sound at all. There's no sound being made. So that means that it's not physical, it's spiritual. So that means, yes, spiritually, you don't need any of these tools. However, these tools, which is described as, which helps with the linear brain, helps you get to the holistic aspect of life. So whether you're doing tarot cards, whether you're doing um, divination, such as with coconut shells or, or, or kari shells or, um, you know, or you're doing... Um, dowsing, you know, with a crystal dowsing, or whether you do whatever you're doing, these are just tools to get you to open your psychic center. So once they're open, you no longer need the tools. Right? But most people can't jump from um, just using the mind itself. You have to sometimes, for most people, based on their genetics, based on how much their ancestors work with these tools, you know what I'm saying, all these rituals. It might need to take a little bit longer time for them. It's like working out. Right, working out in the gym, exactly. You might not reach the same number that the next man did, and you're all both up in there at the same time, but yet, you know what I'm saying? You might be eating some of the might be eating basically the same food or whatever the case is, but he might be a little bit more refined or a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you might have to work a little bit harder. You might have to get a little extra half an hour, hour in the gym just to get to the level that he's at. Now, are women more naturally refined than men? Yes. In that aspect? yes. 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 They're more open than we are. Same. Yeah. So, men, um, really, these tools more than likely was for men. <laughs> All right. To help us get to where the women are naturally. And I can tell you, my wife, she's a psychic naturally. You know what I'm saying? If there's something that's getting ready to happen, she'll tell me, and I like word. Let's move on it. You know what I'm saying? I'll take give you a good example. Um, um, August of 2016. All right, we was getting ready to move up here because her mom and dad was getting ready to open up a um a car dealership. So we was getting ready to be vice presidents over the car dealership. So we came up here. Um So we came, and my wife, she had a dream. She didn't even know what was in the dream, what happened. She couldn't remember. But
But the way that she woke up, I knew that I better have listened. Okay? She said, Ali, if you want your books, you better get them up and pack them up now. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to leave my books. I'm like, shoot, he coming back down. You know why I need to take all my books? You know what I'm saying? I got, because I got hundreds of thousands of books. <laughs> Literally. All right? Um, so I was like, you know, but she said it, so I ended up packing up my books and everything. A month and a few days later, a flood came through. Four feet. More than a foot in the house. And would have destroyed at least two levels of my books. She didn't know, but I listened to her. Because she's she's psychically in tune. You know what I'm saying? So if I don't see something, she sees it. If I see, you know, if she don't see something, I see it. That's how that's how the way that it's been for the last 20 years. You know what I'm saying? So I listened to her. And so I saved my books. Otherwise, they would have been all waterlogged, molded and Smell real bad because that shit, whatever it was that came through in that river, in that water, was smelling ba real bad. You know what I'm saying? So we had a foot of water in the house. So we come back down there. We got to remove the drywall. We got to remove the paneling. We got to remove the damn um, insulation. All of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? The following year, that, that was um, Hurricane Matthews. The following year, Hurricane Florence came through. Now four feet, eight feet high, four feet in the damn house. So if I would have left my books there the first time, you know what I'm saying, would have been destroyed. A year later, if I ain't damn get my books in that time period, I'm thinking, oh, it ain't going to happen again. More of my books would have been destroyed. So I listened to her and got all my books the first time and didn't even have to go through that. You know what I'm saying? So this is the psychic development in which that, you know, you can develop. And most of the time it comes through the dream world. This is when the ancestors can, you know, help you out is through the dream world because they know that this is when you're most open to psychic attention and attachments or attacks. Okay? So you want attention. Second attention from the ancestors, all right? Um, you know, that's that's really what you want. So that is the good thing about this is that psychic abilities, the ancestors, all of that happens simultaneously. It's all connected. You just have to open yourself up to it and be aware of what is taking place and what is going on. And if sometimes if you don't get it. They'll send you other signs by making you see certain animals of which that you don't normally see on a daily basis. Like, for example, when the Empress died on my born day, April 19, 2014, me and my wife is driving down the road and there's turkeys on the side. They end up taking flight. When the hell do you see 10 turkeys take flight? Never. Never. <laughs> a turkey flight? Turkeys flying. And I'm like, what the heck? And I'm like this, what? The? And I'm seeing them from the ground, and they take a flight right in front of the car as we lift off. And, you know, as we traveling, they lift the north. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, okay, some shit is going on, y'all. Something universally is happening. I can't explain what it is, but birds mean spirit. There's some, something spiritually is happening. Somebody has passed that was powerful, very powerful. I knew it. Later on that night, I got a call. The Empress passed. Eliza Bly is from um, Lisa. Lisa called me. And she said, yeah, the Empress passed um, Passed this morning around 5.34 this morning. And I was like, word. She already, she came to us. That was her through the birds. It's telling us that she took flight. You know what I'm saying? That, that she's, once again, turkeys don't take flight. I seen turkeys run. I seen turkeys stay where they at. You know what I'm saying? Walk around. Never seen a fly. That's like some chicken shit. <laughs> All right? This is why they're easy to get. This is why they got so much turkey and chicken. Because <laughs> they're easy to get. They're on the ground. <laughs> stay where you're supposed to stay at. <laughs> don't be twisting. Don't be um, switching shit up. <laughs> but they switched it up on this day. And they, and they flew. I mean, flew literally like, like, I'm like, like. Hold on, y'all got some geese in y'all? What the hell is this? <laughs> well, they don't, they don't fly off. Right. They get away. Well, well they, they 
flew. I don't know where they landed at. I didn't, I didn't see, but them jokes was flying. And I was like, you know, and they waited specifically to right when we was getting ready to pass them to take flight. So that so so I had to slow down, stop, and let them do what they was doing. Then we was outside, me and a few of our brothers, because it was it was, it was during the conference time. It was during our um it was still during a conference. Um, like we was having a little conference time. It was actually a celebration for my bar born day, my birthday. And so um we see now a white crane flying over the head. We outside and we looking in the damn crane just start flying, flying over the head. I'm like, okay. So I call up my um um I call up um Kair, um brother Kair Love, and I say, I say, yo, how's Master Sanyali doing? He said, Master Sanyali isn't doing too good. Mm. By May um, 21st, Master Sanyata passed just a month after the Empress passed. That white crane symbolized his passing now. The 10 turkey symbolized her passing. The white crane symbolized him passing because we was within the 40 days of what's called the barrio. Um, in other words, 40 days before you pass, the ancestors tell you, you know, Right, they start sending messages. He taught us the white crane technique. So here it is, a white crane flying overhead, and he taught us the white crane. So I knew that's why I called Kair in order to find out how he was doing. You see, that's how I knew, you know. So these are all keys. So you have to look at nature, nature is always talking to you and find out what the animal means. This is what's called shamanistic animal um, um, lessons. Okay, shamanistic animal lessons. So you can find out what the animal means. You, you might always see a cat or a dog, you know what I'm saying? But we talk about like raccoons, you know what I'm saying? Skunks, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, um, deers, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, uh, fox, coyotes. You know what I'm saying? You've seen all these things just coming out of mountain lions and shit. You're like, oh, God, I ain't never seen your ass before. You know what I'm saying? So by you seeing the animals, they'll tell you spiritually what is trying to be conveyed. This is how the Native Americans came up with the totems. This is the science of the totems. Okay, This is where you have the bear clan. Or you have the turtle clan. Right? Not turtle mutant ninjas, but the turtle clan. <laughs> Right? This is where you have, you see what I'm saying? This is how the ancients was able to get the certain clan because the people would see these certain animals. So that became their total. You see? The one in which that you see the most is the one which went on top. Which actually becomes what we refer to as an obelisk. This is the Native American style of an obelisk was through the totems of speaking, the um, animal speaks. Animal Speaks, that's, that's a book too. That's the name of the book of, um, of um, shamanistic animal lessons. It's, it's called Animal Speaks. Well, you mentioned that? Yeah. Oh, see, there you go, know, see, you see, there we go, we, there you go, know, see, there we go, that's what I'm talking about. See? Oh, oh, see, there's in the car, see, look at that, look at that. All right, see, that's what I'm talking about. Let's see, we ain't rehearsed this. <laughs> it's like me and Brother Shem, you me? Y'all heard me the day before, she'll come in saying the exact same shit. And everybody like, hold up, why didn't you say that shit? <laughs> exactly. Because that's that's the that's the synchronicity. When mind detect mind, it all comes together. You know what I'm saying? This is why Bobby said, shit, man, everything is everything. <laughs> everything is everything. I have that connection with Brother Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, see, he was here in September. Yes. He lectured here. He, he, he was right here. Remember, he's sitting where I'm, where I'm sitting at. This is where he was sitting at. Okay? You know, and he's going through his presentation, too. So, yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. All right. So, um, let's get into the science of Reiki. Um, everybody, I'm going to initiate everybody to Reiki 1. So, uh, I guess, let's pull everybody, put the chairs up right here, and I can get everybody at one time. That way we ain't got to, you know. <laughs>
do it individually. I can get everybody at one time. So everybody put the chairs up right here. Give me a little space like this. So we can actually sit in like a little circle like go around. Give me a little circle. Give me a little circle. Give me a little circle. Oh, word. Oh, word. Okay. Yeah. I know that. I, I need to tell her this, but I'm going to perform. You're going to do another mission. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, we're going to take you all the way through this. <laughs> yeah, you master the level, so we're going to take you all the way through. Right, you can put it over here, John. Okay. Yeah, come on. Yeah, as long as I get a little space, okay. you're about to go around everybody. Yeah, there you go. Put up a little space here. Come on in, so. Come on in. Yeah, thank y'all. There you go. Yeah, perfect. There you go. We ain't scared of nobody. This family up in here. All right. All right, so what I'm going to do, the same four symbols that we just seen, you're going to put them inside of your auric field. So now you're going to become a walking, talking, Reiki healer, essentially. All right? These symbols that we talked about, the one for the physical power symbol, which is called Choku Ray, the emotional healing symbol, mental healing symbol, say hey key, the distant healing symbol, Hushu Shishonen, and the Spiritual soul symbol, Deco Mayo. These four symbols I will put in, and then at the last, I will use the Raku symbol to ground it. Because we put in the electromagnetic energy into the orbit field, so it's going to give you a boost of energy, right? A boost of energy. Now, before we do that, you're going to go through the sounds of healing, all right? But we spoke about the sounds, and we want to go through that right quick. All right, so each endocrine gland and organ in the body has a specific tone. Same tones that they use musically, whether it's on an organ, piano, flute, or any other wood instrument, all right, or drums, or anything. It's, it's always these frequencies, all right? So the main one, we're going to start at the top of the head, and that is I. I. The I. I, the I sound, because the great I am is the crown chakra, and the sound for the awakening of the pineal gland to its full potential is I. All right, and you're going to notice that these actually are vowels. The same vowels that you learned in school, A E I O U U. And sometimes, why? <laughs> <laughs> the same ones that you learned in school, all right, is the same one that you can use now in order to produce a healing within your body. And so remember, I asked y'all earlier to think about how you feel right now. As we go through, you're going to see, you're going to feel the difference in vibrations and frequencies. Okay? So we can close our eyes and we're going to do three ohms. We can have our hand on our laps or However, you feel comfortable, right? So we're gonna close our eyes and we're gonna do three ohms. We're gonna take a deep breath in and then so let's breathe. Seven times. 
is also photographic memory. This is known as the mouth of God. Why? 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 
Why? Why? Why? Next is the A sound. How is the activation of the thyroid gland and the thyroid gland? Okay, A. A. Oh. 
Think about that. You just did that through sound. 20 minutes. Through sound. <laughs> this is how we're supposed to start that day off. It's through sound. Stretching and through sound. My teacher went over the stretching. I'm going over the sound today. That's the important thing. Three That's the chain that's going through. Just from sound. So now you did the sound, now I can do the light. The symbols will come down into your own field as light. All right? It's going to be violet in color as it comes down, which means spiritual light is coming into you. Okay? So let's be careful. Go back, go back to eyes closed. As a matter of fact, if you want, take your hands and do the prayer position up towards the heart.
it's breaking. But you feel it. You feel it's like this energy. That's why I put it into your hands for you to begin to start channeling. Yeah. Yeah. Downloads? Yeah. So for channel. I can't play. I can tell. Everybody's got their hands together. What are you talking about? <laughs> Good. Good. That's what you're supposed to be saying. That's, that's the seed of the symbols. The situals. <laughs> Everything you do. <laughs> you know, like that cartoon, that Dragon Ball Z, you got right. the energy in the right. head. That's how I feel like that. Oh, that's, 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 that's what you said. That's what you said. That's what you said. That's what you said. That's what your hands will come on and start tingling when you're around somebody and you say, let me see him. That's how you go, that's how you, that's one of the symptoms of how you know someone needs to heal. But you'll feel the hands come on and start tingling, they'll be they'll activated. In fact, as I've grown up, you know, they have just as big. When the twins activate, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but, but your hands will actually activate. That's what's happening. So you guys know, you feel it, all of a sudden your body starts tingling, your hands are tingling, you might, you know, you might can ask him if you choose to when you go through such a situation you need to do. You know, sometimes you can do that, sometimes you can't. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's acceptable to anything. Sometimes you have to ask their higher self. Your higher self to talk to their higher self to see if the transmission is possible. Right? And if you get the word back from your higher self that it is, you can just do the feeling of the distance. Think you can have the things happening. The in and out, you don't take it in. Oh, you take it in. Yeah, I'm not sure you don't take it in. Take it in both. Yes. Yes. Chi gong the Tai Chi helps with bring the heat into into the body. Okay. The Reiki comes down into you. That's universal life force energy. So this is energy that is all around us at all times. In other words, you're tapping into God. This is God. All right. God as far as um, everywhere at every place in all times. That's God. So this is what you tap it into is God. In other words, love. This, this is what you tap it into literally is love. All right. So whenever you need self-love, you put your hands on yourself. <laughs> you touch yourself. Okay. You're such a chocolate. You're such a chocolate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you know, come to America style. <laughs> and, um, it's like I'm really shaky. It's like, but it's crazy because when I would like share certain information that I'm learning. People, I will always get this feeling, and I never understood what it was. I was thinking maybe I was nervous, but it would be, it was just weird. It's not nervous. I'm just not shaking. And now that I've actually that's, know where the energy is coming cheap. from, that's cheap. it's like I was right. waking at. Wow. The chi, what it does is helps with your meridians and your nodes or nodes, as they refer to as. Um, mm -hmm. You're learning about this in reflexology mm -hmm. and acupressure, acupuncture. Um, speaks about the various pressure points in the body. Um, the chi, what it does is clears out the pressure points in the 90s and the meridians and the nodes and the 90s um, in order to let the energy flow. So one of the symptoms of that is this nervous feeling or um, sh a little shaking feeling or spasms or buzzes. So that's that's buzzes. Yeah, that's just... Uh -huh. Buzzes in the ears, you might hear buzzes or it's like, like whooshing noise or whatever the case is. Um, but like something came past you, whooshing noise, or you might even feel like something crawling on the skin. But this is the chi energy. This is this is the chi energy. So that's how it feels. Right. 
It's helping to move the body, right? This is internally, it's the Kokalini Shakti principle. Right? It's the Kokalini Shakti. What's going on with your elbow over there? You need some help? I got my car ready. Uh -huh. My arm is three. Yeah. Yeah. And so, what's going on with your arm right now, though? Oh, it's like it feels normal. normal? Yeah. No. It, don't, it don't feel as black as it used to. Huh? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you let them cheat. They're going to block what was previously there. And that's why he was over there like, <laughs> normally, this hurts a little bit, you know. Right, and he like, oh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling fine. <laughs> you know, so that's why I had to ask him for y'all can have a testimony. Okay, so that's what Reiki does. And see, this is hands-on healing technique that Jesus was. This is what he was missing for 18 years because he was learning these sciences. Okay? That's why it says, oh, at the age of 12, he had to go be about his daddy business. <laughs> and then he don't show up again until age 33. Oh, well, you've been that for 18 years, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the same piece. Any questions about anything right now? What about vertical? I don't know if y'all speak up. I mean, vertical. Like, I'm dealing with vertical. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Crystals are loose in my head. Why is it screws loose? How did that happen? Um, what you need is ginger. That helps with the nausea and the dizziness or the vertigo. Um, so, a lot of ginger, and that will help put everything back into order. Um, also, the hands technique, and you said I'm getting ready to show you. When you do Reiki, and you do Reiki on yourself, is the same principle as you do on someone else, but on yourself. You simply rub your hands together and you place it on your hand. And this will help with um, we attach to the screws that was loose. Kind of like the next right here. Right, this is And then he was like, I didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> Because they cut the scene right when he started and had Daniel playing on the thing. Daniel, son! Yeah. Come! Yeah. Daniel, yeah. son, come! Mr. B, I got me for you to do that thing that you did. You know what I'm saying? Remember? He, yeah. they, and he stopped going out doing the crane on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. And what this does is just simply helps to get the energy into the hands. You can clap. Rubble, or go like this, monkey paw, you can call it. Either one of the three, you'll feel the energy now tingling in your hand. That is the chi energy. Right? So you can put that energy on yourself, or in your head, over your eyes, inside your face and ears, throat, chest, solar plexus, navel, genitals. Knees, ankles, feet, small in the back, kidneys, and you can get higher, right? Solar plexus, back to the shoulders, back to the neck, back to the back of the head. These are the 12 to 16 positions. Okay, 12 to 16 positions of your hands on your body. That you want to do. So once again, top of the head, eyes, side of the face, ears, throat, chest, solar plexus, abdomen, actually your navel, your belly button, sides of your genitals, knees, ankles, feet, small of the back, the kidneys. If your head can go further to Back of the heart or solar plexus area, then here over the shoulders, back of the neck, and then back of the head. Okay, so that's what you want to do. You want to put your hands on your head as much as possible, and that would 
you know, tell your body to readjust itself. Because touch is one of the most powerful things. Remember, Jesus, um, when you speak about the, you know, the three years that Jesus, so from the age of 12 to the age of 30, 18 years is, tell, is totally missing. He gave his mission from three years to the age of 33. So for three years, three, three and a half years, the same story that they tell the nation is not about, that's from Muhammad. There's three years of, of Jesus, uh, Allah walking in the personage of Nasrat Muhammad. Same story, same thing told over and over again. It don't change, nothing changes these stories. You know what I'm saying? No matter if it's real or mythological, same story told over and over again. So, what you want is that in this system, Ushi Reiki, because there's many systems. You have Tibetan Reiki, you have Angel Reiki, you have um, um, all types of different forms of Reiki. Okay? Um, you have Grand Reiki. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, there's so many systems, but this is the original. All right? Anybody else came after 1922 and started formulating their own, and that's fine. You can, you can formulate your own system. You know what I'm saying? You find symbols or, or, or the answers come to you and give you simple symbols, symbols or situations in which that you can use. Mm -hmm. So the philosophy is to get so powerful and skilled to that. Yeah. So like it's a, you know, it's the it's bottom of your, the bottom of your clothes. Because you look at three feet of a person's oil field. The average person's oil field is about three feet. Now, I'm pretty sure all the yards is more than that. But I felt it as I was going around, you know, um, around the yard. But the average person is only three feet, so if they put their hands out in front and then go around in a circle in the diameter, that would be the average person's body. So when the woman would to go touch the hem of Jesus' garment and she got healed, that was by her faith that she said, look, if I could just touch this dude, if I could just get, just get near him, the energy would say he's putting forth. I'll be healed. And that's what happened. Well, this is why I just turned around like, yo, who touched me? Because he felt a drain of energy. You know what I'm saying? You know, sometimes you have psychic vampires who drain your energy unknowingly. And this is what Jesus was addressing in that situation. You know, I mean, it's a biblical story, but they're tell, they telling you what's really taking place. You know what I'm saying? So you sometimes you have psychic vampires. And these psychic vampires, what they do is cycle off your energy. So you go home drained, and they got all this damn bubbly energy and shit. You're like, damn, I'm getting so damn tired. But they've been siphoning off of your shit the whole time. <laughs> you know, so that's that's what's called psychic vampires. So we want to be psychic healers and not psychic vampires. So what happened is that I'm going to teach you all three breath techniques. And, of course, you can use either one of the three, whichever one you want to choose to use. This is what's called pranic healing. Right, pranic healing is the next step um, that that we're going to show for the science of Reiki. Okay, All right? Anybody got that? <clears throat> okay. So pranic healing is three steps. Sometimes they say four, but we use specifically three. All right. In pranic healing, is three breath techniques. You do seven one seven one six three six three. Or empty retention. So 7171 is like this. You simply breathe in. To seven seconds. Hold it for one second. Breathe out seven seconds. Then hold it for one second and start over again. Either one that you choose, you can do that 100 times. Okay? We're going to do 6363. Six, three. Let's see. So, everybody try 7171 right now and see how you feel with that one. Then we're going to do 6363. Yeah, you can count too. If 
We built the second sentence, we have put in the second, we have the second sentence, and we put in the second. Let's, let's do at least nine of those. Now let's try six point six three. We have six seconds or we have six seconds. Let's do nine of these. Six point six three. Six point six three. Six point six three. Six point six three. Six point six
this one gives you a little more attached to it. So, all right, so let's pick one, whichever one that y'all want to work with individually, yourself, you're going to do it, you're going to do about maybe three, five times, which is a fourth of what we're supposed to be doing with the crowd. But I want to show you how large your own field becomes. So what we're going to do right now is show you how big your own field is now, you're going to come back and sit down and do three, five times and see what happens with your own so I'm going to show you. So normally, somebody can stand here, and I'll test the water filter. Here. Now go back about eighteen twenty feet, and I'll come into his water filter. And there's three water fills in which I'm actually penetrating here. Now we're supposed to work for only three feet. So you just did that little rough technique. His is more than that already. Right? But the thing is, is that there's three areas of his work field. You have the outer work field, then you have about a foot and a half more in, you have the health work field. And then as you go further in, about two to six inches over the body, you have the inner work field. So the so once again, the outer orange field is like the shape of an egg. And then the whitish part of the egg, the clear part, is the health orange field. And then the yolk would be the inner orange field. Everybody got that interpretation, right? Because remember, the orange field is shaped like an egg, right? You understand that? Okay. So as I come in, I put my hands up because what I'm going to feel is the same tingling spectrum that you felt. Right, same tingling effect that you felt when you just did the exercise for the chi. I'm going to feel that as I walk into his forehead field, and that way it will tell me how much his forehead field is growing right now. Then, once we finish the 25 breath technique, then we will see how much more that is growing. All right, so somebody if you can calculate if you can get a um, technique for me. I'm going to do everybody and that way. Everybody knows what the work field is now. As compared to what it will be after the new work technique. Right. Because one, when you do one of those three work techniques, and if you do it 100 times a day, what it does is increase your work field more than 15 feet. So the average work field is three feet, and yours is 15 feet or more. And that means that you're five times more powerful than the next person, than the average person, as far as your magnetism. So they be wondering, how come things come so easy to you? They can't tell you. You know, you can't, you know, they, they, they don't know why. You might know why, because I magnetize my own field. I attract what I want into my life. This is real science. This is the real science of the secret of attraction. And they keep bullshit around. They'll tell you the secret of attraction is oh, you need to read and put in the book. Mm -hmm. You need to read uh thank you, bro, rich. Or you need to read the um, secret of secrets. Or you need to read, you know what I'm saying? You need to try this technique, or you just need to write it down. You just need to do it. Today. This is really it. This is the whole this is the whole of it. You can do all those things. No disrespect to none of that, because remember, these are the tools. But this is the tool in which that you really right here understanding the breath but that's all you have really 
That's how you came into the world with, and that's what you're going to have after you leave this world. <laughs> the breath is the mind in action. Let me say that again. The breath is the mind in action. All right? So the breath and the mind is one. The word breath correlates the spirit. Just like the mind correlates the soul. So the breath, all of this is together. Yeah, this room, these are the bodies in which that you take with you after you leave the physical body. Okay? So. This is the outer one. Now I'm going to continue moving in, but first, before I do that, I'm going to check. Never fear. That's all right. That's it. That's how far his outer orbit field is right now. Just after those little breath techniques, all right? This is where his inner orbit field is. And so now, I count again. So, right. his inner orbit field is right here. It's about almost five. All right. So, what did you calculate? What it says, 11, right? 11, 7, and 5. All right? That's where it is. Write his name next to it. And Amos. Right? Right there, right here. All right? Next person. The brother here. LB. Small. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, when I first seen him, um, uh, see for me now, he's six nine. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that was tall. I couldn't jump on video. He already yeah. got the feds on. Right. Yeah. So match him with the feds on. Wow. So he was he's six nine. He was six nine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. He look big, big, big. Right. So he's six seven. Alright, so six 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 seven, you know. So right, so he's 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 the height of um Michael Jordan or um uh, Stanley Pippen or someone like that. He's probably the height six 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 seven, right? So so imagine six nine coming down the street because this is how I first met C from Manel in Atlanta. Now I was shorter than I am now, you know what I'm saying? Now I'm about six feet. Then I was in my um early twenties. You know what I'm saying? And so I come down the street and I'm like, <laughs> and like for some reason, like I was about five feet tall or something, and he was seven. And so I'm like, and I'm looking at him like this. Now, 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 I was supposed to be going to his class, but he's coming down the street, you know, and I'm just, you know, I'm going, I'm trying to find something to drink, you know, in the little area, right? And so I'm like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when they say he was only six nine, I was like, no, no. I say it's like he was there on seven feet to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I was shorter than so. <laughs> but but he was tall. He was six nine. All right, six nine, six ten. That's about that was his height, and he was slender. So when you slender, they even make you. You know what I'm saying? Even make you look more, you know, lanky and tall. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm <laughs> you look like a football player. <laughs> right? Football player. Like he getting ready to knock him up. Okay. Alright. So we're walking to his orbit field now. Okay. Okay. 
this is out of the fluid heater. So halfway. This is the output flow here. About eight. Now we will test for the inner orbit fluid. Okay, the inner orbit fluid is right here. So that's five. Oh, you feel it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it feels like it's not a push, not a push back. Uh, not what stir. Right. It's not a bad stir. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's like it's, it's like it's like I could not, like I want to like, move. Mm -hmm. you know, right, yeah. right, 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 yeah. right. So think about that. What what they just say? I right, next. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, that's more happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. You can, right. You can tell because they're penetrating your oral system. Yeah, that's why. And see, the eyes, the eyes are the windows to the soul, but the eyes have the ability to project prana. Right, you can project prana from the eyes. This, the Superman thing with him shooting lasers from the eyes, that's real. Because Prana acts as just like that. All right, so yeah, you can feel when somebody beaming their eyes on you, you're like, you know, you know, you can feel that. Okay, this is the outer part of the field. Almost ten. So this is in the world over here. Right. Well, health level. Okay. So that's eight. Is in a, a war of the That's it, and that's the B2. <laughs> <laughs> This is an out of order fill. Nice thing. Almost 10. This is not a health order fill. This is right here. Six and a half. The inner orbit field is about right here. Four. Kendra. I'll 
comes here. Nine and a half. Seven and a half. The new work comes right here. Four. Write your name down there. Okay, so everybody got this written down. So now Six. Should increase. So you just pick out which ones that y'all felt comfortable with the 636, three, or the 7171, or the whichever one that you felt comfortable with. Just do it 25 times. Okay. Into the tension. So remember, there's no number count, you just repose it for one second in between. Well, we'll do 25 times. So, um, if you do it 
breathe in, you open your hands, you do your attention, and you close for one second, you breathe out, you open your hands, and you count for one second. And do that. That's one breath. So just do that 25 times. Okay.
It's helpful to feel the scene now.
six and a half. Did I put an half? I'm gonna let y'all do me. That way y'all can tell too. <laughs> then we're gonna do each other. <laughs> and you see what I'm, what I'm feeling.
six and a half. So everybody's water fill went up just after doing two or five blocks. It was just about between a foot and a half to five feet. And so that would be on average about three feet. Everybody's water fill went up just during those 25 reps. So think about what you did 100. So what I'm saying? So this is the key. So I guess anybody do me see go and feel the timber right in the front of the hand. And what that would be the feel the energy. So you know you can feel the things. You'll feel the tingling itself. And that's how you know what's going on. Right, so what's going to feel the tingling in the sense of your arms is what's going to feel the tips. So, I guess we just. So, everybody get up on <laughs> Somebody else from the water field, like, also. He can. Because <laughs> 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 my hero is just spread out. It's all right here. You want? I'm a, since I'm the one doing it. I'm a, you can practice on me. Oh, you can practice okay. on each other. All right. Y'all see, you see what I'm saying? Oh, I got you. I got you. So, 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 I'm going to stand here now. He's going to go over here and he's going to test mine. Okay? And see what he feels. Then everybody, each other is going to test it on each other. Y'all can see it. But, but, y'all, you ain't doing, doing, you on this side right here. Okay, right, 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 See, he did a good thing because he did his hands. He got his little hands ready. Put some tingling right here. Yeah, there you go. See? Right. right. That's how it's been though. You see, it gets stronger as you get closer. So 
That's what he's doing. Right. So now feel for the health forms. So the next time you feel some tingling that you come in because you went 19 feet, now you will come in and then you will stop when you feel the next thing in that. Nineteen thirteen. Now you're going to check for the inner orbit field. All right, so tell them what you experienced and what you felt before they can have an idea on what they are searching for. As I was getting, trying to get the, the closer horn feel, you actually feel the tingling like right here and like here. It's almost like the, like the draw, it's kind of like the shield, kind of build it. All right, so y'all two next. Come on up. <laughs> <laughs> Come on up. Mm-hmm. 
He was reaching it, and then when she got it, oh, okay. Right. Now she will come for the hand and heal for your help for you. I don't know. I'm trying to tap in, but I'm not really getting it. It's, 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 it's natural. It's coming natural. It's, it's fair for it. Yeah, it's all right. You don't overthink it. You want to feel it. Yeah, do more feeling than thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 14 is the outward field, 11 is the helper field, so that's three feet in. Now we're going to go for the inner field. Mm -hmm. Crazy, 
Yeah, <laughs> so that's actually just the first part of what is called printing, which is scan. That's what we just did with the work. We scan each other's organs. You know, we see where it is as far as the width of it, whether it's the outer health or the inner one. Now, when you have someone who might have a headache. God said she was going to be doing the So, what we would do is actually now, the second part of this world has a straight line of a suit. Right? It was straight line. He would do the things. So, I mean, guys, what we're going to do is straight off any negative debris, what's called bioplasmic energy. Any negative bioplasmic energy will go straight off from her or the field. But if you leave it there, you cause some more problems and issues or disease. And we don't want that. We want to take off as much negative energy as possible and place it into the plant. We want to transfer energy from her into the plant. Because think about it us and the plants have a biosynthetic balance in nature. Right? Plants give off what? Oxygen. We take in oxygen. We give off what? Carbon dioxide. And it takes in with on the outside. So here's a balance between us. So whatever is going on with us, we can transfer it to it, and it is happy. It can deal with it. We can't. <laughs> okay? That's why radiation, you get too much radiation, plants do what? The radiation. They thrive on them. Right? right? They thrive on them. Matter of fact, the more plants that you have, the less radiation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's radiation. That's the key. So we're going to start out first. One of her comes down the body. Let the hands off the hands off. <laughs> this is the key. So just three times with your hands. Now, normally, you want to have like a little water bottle or something or a bowl of water. You can keep your hands in to the elbows. If you don't have that, you have to just Take your hands, put it into the dirt. Right? That's all you need to do. All right? Um, so, you want to team up and scrape off the negative energy, put it into the plate. That's called sweeping. So, scanning, sweeping, you're going to do re energizing. 
normally when you take off the energy of the body, that opens up, you know, the rays, you know, to absorb more light, more energy. So you actually feel good even after the sweeping. How do you feel after you just did the sweep? All right, so um everybody get to the team that we had. God, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Then just sweep off the end of your plants, you know? We'll use this one, you know, we'll use that one, or oh, yeah. you know, you know, you know, that one over there. Six times. Yep. Down. Yep. Right side. Down the middle. Right side. Um, left side. Turn around. Um, and um, do the same thing. Reverse. Okay, so you good, guys. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so you know. Ready, right? <laughs> All right. Oh, um, um, so we it. Right. <laughs> oh, second. So. Right. That makes more sense. 
game not going like Oh, no, nah, he was asking me something, but I was telling him about felt like a little light sheet come off when he started. So, you that could have been started, maybe you want to have something that showed you might have something, something, and you don't make that go away. Yeah, I like, um, like from past experience, it's, it's almost feels like I'm, almost, like I'm getting a cramp, but it's like something comes off the You see, Sean is what happens there, Sean is who seen the movie Green Mile. Do you remember John Corby? He was doing how the shamanism, which is very similar to what we're doing. However, we know that we got to transfer the energies. Oftentimes, he will wait to transfer it later on, but he would transfer it. Remember, he took the cancer from the lady, and did, but it took him a lot of time because he was doing all that coughing. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was going through, through it, but then he finally released it. It came out as like that supplies. I was so scared that movie was going on. Because it was just always that one thing and all that stuff coming yeah. out. But you know, yeah, yeah that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You did. You, you, took a, you took a long time to release it. I didn't know if he was going to get to release it or not. But you know, he finally did. And when he did, he put it inside that door. Yeah. That's <laughs> what he waited for. He right. Like he waited. He, he, that's why he was waiting so long. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't because he. Didn't you know? Didn't release it, and he wanted to. He, he wanted to do it at the opportune time. He got words to put it. And dude, who was terrorizing everybody in the damn jail cell. So. Yeah, yeah, that's what happened. But that now understand JC. That's John Corby is Jesus Christ in that scenario. Mm -hmm. All right, that's what he was going on. That's why they hit. Um, uh, the dude who did the movie, what happened was that he got in a car accident and almost died. Okay, he almost died. Um, but that was to tell him that he don't need to be doing those types of movies anymore. <laughs> With no Negro playing Jesus Christ type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Because that's not the ritual in Hollywood. So I'm okay. saying Madonna did that shit and she got she got ostracized by the Catholic Church if you look at that. Um, that video, yeah, like a prayer, you know what I'm saying? Um, on what is it? Um, on the prayer, or like a virgin the next time, whatever, whatever the name of the drink was. She had Leon from the Five Heart Beats and from um, who played also Billy Richie, um, and also in the Damn Temptation. Yeah. Leon been playing some roles now. <laughs> But I'm younger one talking about this um, tall, slender Leon. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Lead, the lead singer. Yeah, the lead singer. Yeah, right, right. I know you want to leave me, but I refuse to let you go. So, 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 so Leon, he played Jesus Christ in her um yeah in Madonna's video back in the days in the Catholic Church with Haywire. The, the Catholics, the Christians, they went crazy. They're like, what the hell? Kind of blasphemous. Is this? <laughs> That's how they work. You know what I'm saying? When he played Jesus Christ in her video, you know, so it's, you know it, it, it ain't it ain't smiled upon. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you know we the sacrificial lambs anyway. So every time you turn around, they they got the damn border or something. Every damn movie that we see, you be the first to die up in that bitch. <laughs> Still, yeah. even after we done made 500 jokes about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Every comedian that came in made jokes about, about that. They still do. So, I mean, that's a ritual. If you're not broke, don't fix it. But um, the next thing after that is we energize it or energize it. So, you can break out into what is known as the Egyptian pose. Normally, the Egyptian pose is like this. And one hand is always down as a transmitter, the 
other hand, it was always up as a deductible. Right? One. Depends on if you're left handed or right handed. If you're left handed, of course, that's the trans, that's the um, um absorption. And if this is the transmitting of it, you do it same. You know what I'm saying? If you're left handed, then it's vice versa. Left hand, oh, right hand. Oh, you're right hand. So, so it's just. Right, right, because that's the most dominant hand. So your most dominant hand, the hand that you write with, the most dominant hand normally is the one in which that's most powerful. Right? So the lesser hand is the one in which that absorbs the rays and the energies of prana, they transmit it through the dominant hand. Anybody left hand? Here, oh, no, right. I'm having, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right. So, so what you want to do is point out once again, and one transfer the energy to the next, and then another one transfer the energy back. Okay. So, how, so you, we, we know that the energy back, right? Yeah, I just understand, right? Right, and then how you do it? Just put this. This one forward, the left one. Normally, it's the left one because the left one means strengthening down even so your heart's not following the peace. That's the ancient Egyptian. This is why you see the ancient Egyptian, um, pharaohs and them doing right. Exactly, exactly, exactly. exactly. So, always the left one, don't matter what dominant right?
or get behind me rather. So I'm going to stand here. Remember, I can get behind me. Um, in fact, I'm going to turn this way to the side and have to see what I'm doing. All right, there's three um, techniques um, specifically that Master Sanyata taught us. Um, one is called the will of the law, right? So normally what we do, we pick up things from the earth, especially if we're outside in the grass, we come out with a crane beak, we step out with our right foot, we begin to rotate. And we lift up our heels, and we step with to help us do what is called activate the bubbling spring. That's the key. Activate the bubbling spring. Reverse. And as our hands go out, we exhale. As our hand goes in, we inhale. Tall. So we go, we go to the left foot, and do the opposite thing. And once you begin to start mastering, you can see the light coming from your hands. All right? You'll see the actual light coming from your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. And basically, this opens and activates the felt meridian, which helps with the channeling of the energy, all right, through the meridians. In particular, the two meridians are the vessels that's known as the governing vessel, which comes up, and the conception vessel, which comes down the middle of the body. All right? and those two are attached along the felt meridian. looks like um, a circle. Oblong circle, oval circle, then an oval circle. So it looks like um, the planets going around through the constellation, going through, um, uh, I guess you say, in lack of a better term, going through the, through the central sun, you know, um, area. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that. After he practiced for about two years, we were have to rock and walk the place. But that comes after it, it is after it. Now 
text mode is what is called achievable. Right? You do the same thing, stupid, reverse that button right quick, green key. Normally, we do these rotations, whether it's the little ball or the cheap ball. You want to do nothing like three, six, nine. Normally, it's in count three. This is how you would catch the cheap power, cheap energy. The more you do it, the more you become graceful with it. That's the same idea you can tell you that um, you try to become like the people, more graceful. <laughs> The last exercise is called the heart massage. So you do the exact same thing. Scoop the energy from Mother Earth. It takes Mother Earth to the health. And you go over the heart. Here's the moment you can hit. I hit them down here.
So, hopefully the three exercises, the chi gum, these are three most potent ones in which they help you to accumulate more chi and prana into your body. So that you can use doing the pranic healings or the reiki or the center. Right? It's a combination of all these healing modalities in which that makes you the greatest healer that you can become. Okay? That's the key. So, um, the last part, I'm going to show you what's called Tai Chi. So, what I just showed you was the three exercises, the main exercises. There's more, but these are the main ones. So, the Tibetan White Crane, Chi Gong. That's what's called Tibetan White Crane, Chi Gong. What I'm going to show you now is Tibetan White Crane, Tai Chi. Let's practice. It's all right. You're all going to get it. Let's practice. Okay. Okay. Total chakras. Down the into the shot. So, stay that part right here. And so, so
You normally do it in four, but I might need to just watch me before we do it. <laughs> <laughs> to heaven, reach for the sky, and we bring energy down into our chakras to our own. We go to the prayer position and be thankful and grateful for the energy and each day that comes from our hearts. And we open ourselves to more energy, to all possible energies. The prayer takes flight. The wings to the right. Now the crane takes flight. The wings to the left. Crane now washes face and sits. Crane now begins to wash on. Wash off. May I help you? <laughs> Crane dips into the honey jar and pushes. I'm going to push this. Crane. Tongues, and then on the foot. Crane begins to start to take the point across the thing. Show the guitar. So the punch, putting this one leg and emphasize what's my third kick in the punch. So just think about some of what I just said, and that will actually help you remember more. Keep your idea right. Keep your idea right. I don't know about that one. Okay, let's try. So we reach for the sky again and bring the energy down into our shadows. We go into a great position and be thankful for that. We open ourselves to all possibilities. Crane takes flight. Right. Crane takes flight. What? Looks through the blaze of grass and takes flight to the left. Crane washes face. Crane sits. Crane comes back. 
من رسول مشهور لحظه خیلی دیگه سکتو به خیلی جا خیلی خوشیست You're like, no, 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 Things like chakras, copies of the chi, the beautiful father happens again. I get out of reach from the sky. We bring prana down into our chakras. It goes to open ourselves to all possibilities. takes flight, it's a place of grass, takes flight again, washes face, and sits in the middle. Clean the beak, washes over, washes off, and then I hope you clean the beak, dips into the honey jar, clean Green punch, green with the side center, little punch. I'm going to be the fourth house. Who's ready for it? Why are you? It's all right. It's all right. No, I got the video. 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 So, um, anyway, get ready to get the cheek on, get the tie cheek. I'm going to say to everybody the video is not, we can get everybody the next for the video right now. And it's the last part before we do class. Okay, well, I can sit down. We got a little activity right now. Tuesday morning. Yeah, I, I should come up too. I work overnight, so I work overnight. So, 
I just want to make this shit go faster, but I ain't seen it yet. <laughs> Doing all this because of 5G. But there's protesting. But it ain't making nothing faster. But yeah, not us. <laughs> I know you're right about that, because it definitely ain't for us. It definitely ain't no faster. They should end up charging more. They work on their seats. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that operation light speed. Mm. <laughs> the way it's been going, operation no speed. <laughs> I mean, shoot, it's just. Remember when it was just um, 2G? Yeah. And, and you had to have dialogue? Yeah. <laughs> right. I remember all my friends were like, uh, they're selling the CDs. Yep. <laughs> 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 I'd still rather have that whatever's happening on this timeline now, though. This is my mind is like right. I feel like I'm a little bit different than this and just also practically right? mm -hmm. in a bit of time. <laughs> <laughs> The bit was running the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they say that 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 bit here is supposed to be pro. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah. I tell you what, when Trump was in, you definitely had no way for gas prices. <clears throat> Only thing I was happy about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like today, when we were talking about the spells and the spelling, mm -hmm. I, I actually thought about that whole right before the quote unquote plague of 19. Mm -hmm. You know, they had that BLM protest. And they right. had that on the shirts, and people talking about they can't breathe. And stuff. Right. People were literally going like this. Yeah. 
Which that now we got now the next year we got the mask go. You can't breathe. You got your face hand over your mouth like this. Or we're gonna give you the mask. That's a program. That's that's what it's called um, predictive program. You know that's what, this is the shit that they do. Chokehold with the knee on his hand. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Eric Garner was the one. Right, the big guy. Right. Okay. There's a bunch of big police officers that jumped him, mm -hmm. and his daughter, she had died. Like, later on. Mm -hmm. Eric Right, this is the cycle of chi. We talked about the 12 meridians. They are symmetrical on the right and left side of the body. They are all connected with each other. When one is affected by blockage, they all can ultimately be damaged. Chi begins to flow in the lungs. That's the first place it goes, is in the lungs. That's why the breath is so important. So all of a sudden, they get an illness in which that dude is with wet, stopped in the breath. So it went from can't breathe to your hand over your mouth to the damn mass called the COVID, which is an upper respiratory disease. You see the programming? This is <coughs> what they do. So they know that the first line of defense, of defense for um, health is the lungs. All right? Then it travels to the large intestines. From there, it goes to the stomach. Then it's to the spleen. Next, it travels to the heart. Then to the small intestines. Next, it goes to the ur urinary bladder and the kidneys. After this, it heads towards the cardium and the sangua which is known as the triple burden. Finally, it goes to the gallbladder, then to the liver, then back to the lungs, where it starts its circular journey again. Assuming your chi is flowing in a normal way, that you have no blockages, it travels through each of your organs at a specific time of day. Now, remember, normally, one side of the nostril is clogged up, the other side is open. And it normally changes every two hours back and forth. So two hours, the left one is stuffed up, the right one is open. Two hours later, the right one is stuffed up, the left one is open. Okay? That's how it is within a normal person. If you have dis-ease, then that means what happens is that one 
of the nostrils will stay clogged up longer than the two hours. That's the beginning of the illness starting to creep in. So in order to correct that, you simply do alternating nostril breath breathing. Okay? So in other words, alternating nostril breath. You take your thumb, put it over the right side, and you breathe in. And you're gonna breathe in for four, hold it for 16, and breathe out for eight through the right nostril. That's the that's the minimum minimum way. Four, sixteen, eight. Now you can do two, all right, eight, four. Starting out. Two, eight, four. So you will breathe in. Okay, so two, eight, four, and then once you learn that, you go up to <clears throat> four, sixteen, eight. And once you learn that, you can go to eight, thirty-two, sixteen. Okay, these are, I guess you would say, you know, ways in order to help alternate the nostril so that. You're back on schedule and you're going back to the cycle like this, which is long since 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning. So just think about it. If you're waking up between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. in the morning, what happens is that it means that there's something going on with your lungs. So that means it's a good time to do meditation and also to do lung work. If you went over the sound for the lungs and the heart, which is A-H. So... You have your hands on your heart and over your lungs, and oh, oh. So you know it's the lungs if you're waking up between three and five a.m. in the morning. Okay, next, large intestines is activated between 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. in the morning. So if you naturally wake up around 5 to 7 a.m., then check out your large intestines. So now your hands go to your navel chakra. They converge right here at the fingertips of the middle finger. The sound is oh, so. Oh, 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 to remove any blockage from this area. That's the sound you would make. That's what you would do. Now the stomach is from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. That's right here. All right, that's the stomach. It's only about the size of a fist, just like the heart is the size of a fist. As a matter of fact, the stomach and the heart meridian are both connected. They're both connected. So the same one that runs through the stomach is the same one that runs through the heart. So if you get stomach issues, then oftentimes you might soon develop heart issues or vice versa. So the stomach is here, that correlates to the solar plexus, and that's the H A H sound. Oh. Oh. So that's how you put everything back in line and balance. Now the spleen, which is right behind the stomach. All right, would you next leave your hand in the same area or move it further back on the side? That's the spleen, and that's between 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And it's the same sound, the H A H sound. All right, then you have the heart, which is activated between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. So, in other words, during the time of the sun reaching its apex, is the same time as the which is 12 o'clock in the afternoon, the same time that your heart is supposed to be activated. So, your heart and the sun correlates. So the sound for the heart is A-H. 
Oh. And your hand can be over your heart. Oh. Oh. Okay. Next is the small intestines. All right. That's normally like, like right around in this area, like right around the um, below the solar plexus, above the navel. All right. Um, the sound for that, you can say, actually, this you can do actually two sounds. You can do H A H sound, and you can do sh sh sound, which is also good for um, the liver, which is um, part of that um, triple burner there. All right. So. All right. Next is the urinary bladder. Now that's below the navel. All right. So that's the area right below the navel. So right here, right. That will also go with the U sound. U. You. All right. Next is the kidneys. <clears throat> right at the back here. The sound is shui. C H U I. Shui. So you can have your hands here. Shui. 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 And also another sound for the kidneys is ka, K-A-H sound. Go. Go. Okay. Then the pericardium, which also deals with the heart um, area. Um, and the aorta um, area of the body. So it's like right here, actually. So it's connected really to um, the sympathetic nervous system um, area. And that's near the solar plexus and the heart and so forth and so on. And the sound for that, along with the triple burner and so forth and so on, um, you can actually do um, the same sound. So you can do um, H-A-H sound, the R sound, A-H sound. It was also shh sound, all right? And then you have the gallbladder. The gallbladder um, basically is, is um, here to <clears throat> right near, between the appendix and the um, urinary um, tract area. So really it's like right here. And really you can use the same sound, which is the O sound. Ooh. All right, so. These are the areas in the body. So if you wake up or if you go to sleep or you wake up during any of these times, if you find that one nostril is more clogged, longer than the other one, then what you can do is these particular sounds as well as also alternating nostril breath techniques in order to put the body back in balance. That's the key, all right? And I'm saying it because now you're all a healer, so you have to be able to know how to heal yourselves in the process, okay? So, um, any questions? I just like, I got to try to wrap my head around the, like I naturally wake up at 27 in the morning, so I would start with that. Right. See in my stomach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like, in my mind when you, when you said it, you presented it to me, mm -hmm. like, my alarm clock, I get up and up for work at certain time. My naturally wake up at seven because there's no, no clock involved. Yeah, yeah. Right, I got you. right. So that's the natural time that you wake up. So, yes, you would start off with the stomach area. 
and the sound will be oh. If you find yourself constantly waking up at a certain time, kind of like out of out of your normal time, then kind of like know something. Right, then, something is off. Yeah, there's an imbalance somewhere, right. so you can remove that blockage by practicing the sound for that particular organ right then and there. So you don't have to take no um, ibuprofen and <laughs> aspirin. And, and, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to do none of that. Just you know, use your use your sound, sounds of healing. Um, use your hands. You no know, healing touch therapy. Yeah, I mean even with the work schedule, you know, especially since you work third shift. You know, it's shift. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, you work in third shift? Yeah, see? Yeah, I used to work third shift. That, that shit is hard on the body, yo. That shit is hard on the body. I, I, I did that for I, years. I like, I really don't feel like I even get rest because I'm up, you know, and I can remember. So it's just like, what sleep? <laughs> Unless I just don't recall my dreams and I'm like, feel like I got some sleep. Right. Other than that, I'll be up over there. Up over here. <laughs> right, 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 right. Right. Exactly security for years doing third shift. You know, so, oh boy, that's 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 hard. I feel free to stop like, yeah, I use the force to stop like all the time. Yeah, all the time. Coming, and going home, and it's scary because I actually started dreaming. Me, yeah, yeah, and it got good to me. Yeah, I did I, that. I, I woke that up, I've been scared, like, right, like, I looked around with no cars, no, around. your cars, right, yeah. right. It always happens when there ain't nothing around you. So, I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad about that because that's what it used to happen to me, too. Seven in the morning. Yeah. Like, hey. I'm sitting at the light and it just, and just, start, just not off. Your right. brain, your your pineal just start kicking in mm-hmm. with the dream thing. Yeah. Right. And I was like, oh. Well, 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 sometimes yeah. you make it home, don't realize how you got there. Right. Oh. And you're like, oh, I got it. I don't even know how I did this. Mm-hmm. I must have fucked sleep like six times. <laughs> <laughs> your spirit got you home. Yeah. Mm hmm. All right, y'all. So that's the end of everything. Any questions or anything that we're going over this weekend that I need to take time out to redo? <laughs> the sun was out earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, the sun, yeah. yeah, the sun hurry up and came on out for about 10 minutes. The <laughs> Aku. Uh, yeah, the Aku means the glorified light body. Mm-hmm. The glorified light body. Mm-hmm. That is your causal body. C A U S A L cultural body. You was going over earlier. You said that uh, that uh, kidneys that store fear, right? Um, but and then you said it's deficient of iodine, right? Or, well, it could the adrenal glands, which sits on top of the kidneys, is deficient of iodine. But that's but not the what kidneys, causes. The, no. Okay. All right. Now kidneys. Now kidneys themselves. That can be magnesium deficiency. That can be. Um, vitamin A deficiency, you know what I'm saying? It's different vitamins and minerals in which that could cause the deficiency for kidney problems. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not mm-hmm. saying I kidney problems. But so that juice that you were saying plus the sea moss, I should be good. Yeah. Because well, the sea moss has 102 minerals. So we just showed you a bottle of 75. But you need to have at least that in you. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have the CMOS, the CMOS helps. The CMOS actually have 92. If you add burdock to it, it gives you the 102 that you need. All right. So Dr. Sadie's going to to be um, Irish CMOS, burdock, and bladder rack. All right. Are you using your body? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. KT Arch yeah, that's right. We need to work with Dr. Sadie. So he did the C3. Yeah, I seen you put up on the Patreon. Yeah, Spirit Relina. Spirit Relina, yeah. Spirit Relina has um, a lot of abundance to it as far as minerals and bodies. Um, so that chlorophyll itself helps with radiation, helps removing heavy metals and toxins from the body. Um, also helps with melanin reduction. I tried to dose now. Yeah, 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 yeah. The taste, right? Yeah, the dose, <laughs> yeah, the dose, the dose, that dose ain't no joke. Yeah, but see, and I would blend, we, we add to it. Yeah, 
they'll say it's real salty. Yeah. yeah. We also yeah. add salt on dulce and kelp to our Dr. Sadie's blend. So we have the burdock, the bladder rack, the iris sea moss, we have dulce and kelp that we add to it. So we have five of well, four. Yeah, so I was not. So we have four of the um, sea vegetables and one earth land base, which is burdock. So we add that all together, and um, that's a pretty good blend. Um, we put it in capsules, though. We don't let you. You got to taste all that dog sand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. Eat, I, was I ordered it. My mm -hmm. man was about it in a bag. I was mm -hmm. eating that well. Yeah. I try to mix it in salad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that that dog sand it jumps out at you. It jumps out at you. It don't matter what you put on it. <laughs> you, you, you need capsules. Do it. Oh, do you have power out like twice a year or four times a year? Four times. Mm -hmm. So next one is March. Around March the 17th, 18th, 19th, or 18th, 19th, the 20th, somewhere around there. But it's around that time period. It's, it's, it's always around the um, solstice and the equinox. So we have the spring equinox one, which is normally our largest one. Normally we have about 40, 50 people here during the spring one. Um, um, during the um, summer, everybody is everywhere, so that's probably normally a little smaller one. Um, fall one, that's the next biggest one next to the um, spring one. And then, shoot, y'all are our first, first real big winter one. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I'm glad it's 70 degrees, you know, 67 <laughs> degrees down there. You know what I'm saying? But it was people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but there was people that was calling saying they wasn't gonna be able to make it. I think he had about three or four calls, so we didn't know if anybody was gonna come or not. You know, we 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 didn't we didn't count everybody, you know, who, who paid or who yeah. said it was coming or whatever, you know, but you know, we was going off, damn, we done had three, four calls that said they ain't coming, so I don't have anybody coming. I said, Well, if they don't come, I said, I'm going to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and see when I got here, I was I didn't I didn't see that email. I seen it, but then like I didn't know the address was on the very bottom. Right. And so I at the hotel and I called like, hey, because <laughs> I, I looked at you and I was like, that's on the other side of the state. I'm like, well, I'm my way up here. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody took my um my name, Hello hmm? Wings. You said on the other side of the state. The um on the Facebook. That's what the address was showing. It. Oh, you took my old, the old address, which was on um, the yeah. Wilmington, the Wilmington Kelly. Yeah, it's on Facebook. Oh, wow. I need to change that. Okay. <laughs> I need to change that. Sorry. Right. So this is the Hillary. Right. 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 I'm glad you even know that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was already at the hotel. So yeah. That's why I called. Like, yo, yeah. I don't think this is the right address. <laughs> <laughs> I already called I already, I already it the hour from the uh, airport. airport. Oh, man. And then, like, trying to get here, my man, he, we at the same hotel. Oh, okay. That's, 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 I couldn't get a ride over. I was like, oh, man. I called a cab the first time when I got here. Right. 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 A lift? Yeah. Well, like that one time when we stayed like $7, and the other one was stayed like $35. Oh, shit. What the hell? That was right by that Burger King. Somebody did. Yeah, somebody greedy as hell, ain't that? <laughs> 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 like, that little cost that much cost, 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 cost. We used to cash Ubers from, from airport to here for $55. Yeah, so, uh, somebody greedy, y'all. Yeah, they, they don't know if it's for the power, but they say it was that <laughs> Wow. Wow. Oh, well, not my grandmother, because I feel like y'all. So I was trying to make her, you know, make her drive at night, and I was just saying, nope, I'm going to come get you. So, but yeah. Oh, they're going to mess with you if, if one tail light is up. Then you have a problem with two. Mm -hmm. But okay. if one, your headlight. Your, your headlight, yeah. Okay. That's what they're going to mess with. Yeah. Yeah, they don't stop you for stupid stuff around here like that. Like, no seatbelt and all. You know, you go to other places, mm -hmm. they stalk you. 
Yeah. They're soft, yeah. but they don't really do that here. I, I got to admit, you know what I'm saying? They don't really do that. Here. In Chicago, I, I was in Chicago, and they uh, one guy he saw my cowboy following me on out of town. I believe it. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> <laughs> I saw a Michigan place and decided to follow me. Oh, okay. okay. And where was you at? I was in Chicago. Right, right, right. <clears throat> So it's like oh, I had an all black yeah. all boy with black rims. He over there. He over there. He's coming from Detroit area. I've been coming from Detroit area. That flip damn flip Michigan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Probably what he was saying. Okay, okay. Well, we we only got one more information, so that'd be a good thing. <laughs> Anybody else got any questions or anything that we went over this weekend? The um the breathing exercises we just did, mm -hmm. some of the ones we just did, because always when I when I be watching you right. um talk about the prime band, right. the breathing, yeah. breathing. Right. do those correlate. Kind of, yeah, correlate to the, okay. yeah, the six three six three seven one seven one and the energy retention. Right. What you're doing is bringing more energy into your aura field and also specifically into your chakras. So whenever you do it one hundred times. Not only does it expand your orbit to, to 15 or more feet, you know what I'm saying? Because remember, the guy, he did mine, that joint was 19 after we just did 25 reps. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's beyond 15 of the average person who do the technique, and we only did 25. So once again, it keeps growing. The orbit field keeps growing the more and more that you practice it. There's, there's yogi masters who have stated, and Buddhist monks who have stated that if Orgfield was a mile, an actual mile. And you know what? When I did George, I anticipated George being all of it. Because when I was back there and I felt it, I was like, that's a good thing. You knew this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, he knew this. Right, right. Well, well how else yeah. can I teach you about that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> that's, that's what began me. People be saying stupid comments like, ah, uh, you know, I'm like, dude, did you just see me? I didn't have no books. No, I'm, I'm doing this off the top of the dome, son. And I'm like, come on. I practice this. I do this. And like I said, when I got to your inner being ones, I felt it in my chest. Like, I felt my chest. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the same thing that I felt with Dr. York for the first time. Back in 93? In 93. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen a, another. But you show a uh, uh, Ram of the Egyptian thing where they was they, right they doing had cups right to, doing to the content, right right so I seen somebody else well, this right here, mm -hmm. so I seen somebody else that was talking about the orc field and they showed where like you said some people was only three feet mm -hmm. and then if they not active spiritually and then other people who are active spiritually their field is wider and right. in the diagram he showed there was actual a cup kind of at the top of the head the top and right. it came out it came and so right. when you were doing your uh i forgot what it's called when you were doing the chance oh yeah, above yeah. Right head, mm -hmm. i can actually feel the energy go your ahead. energy above yeah. my head yeah. right right and that's what I meant by that's, right. That's why I told you that I'm going to put the symbols into. I'm going to channel the symbols through me, the sigils through me, and I'm going to put them into your auric field, so that you can become an embodiment of Reiki, which is universal life force energy. So that's the key. So basically, I um, remember the story of in the Bible where Jesus breathed on his disciples and they received the Holy Spirit. That's the same thing. That's the exact same thing. I just pass the breath of life onto you. That's that's it. You know what I'm saying? It's not mine, but you know, I was able to help channel it and help activate you and open you up a little bit more. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So now it's time for you to open yourself up more, heal others in your locations, because now we become the healers or the light workers in the world. And this world needs some work. <laughs> Best believe that. You know what I mean? So do you think the whole Benny Hinn thing? <clears throat> it could be if he did it properly, but the way that they be putting on them shows, no. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, if there was some explanation behind it, and I knew that he knew the science of what he was talking about, like what he did here today, it would be different. But since they don't ever put any information behind it, you know, what he's banking on is that you heal yourself by his theatrical yeah. yeah. faith. Just like the same thing happened with um, the woman who touched the hand of Jesus calling it. Jesus turned around and said, This is by your faith. And he said, I, I ain't hear you because number one, I didn't want you touching me. Matter of fact, I told I tell people, don't touch me. And, and he'll say that too, because he told Mary Magdalene when he seen her after he came from out the tomb out the sepulchre, he said, Don't touch me. He said, But you go and tell the disciples that I sent it to your form and to my form. You remember that part? Oh no, y'all need to read your Bible. Y'all need some <laughs> Christians up in here. Y'all know y'all need a reading. <laughs> I thought about too the uh where the disciples were they could do what they saw Jesus doing all the time. Right, because they didn't have the faith, they didn't yeah. have the belief. And even uh, when, even when, um, um, remember they went out, Peter said, I'm coming out with you, Lord. He enough about the damn drown. Because, <laughs> because, uh, right, he, 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 he was doing it at first. But then he, of course, you look down, you start getting doubts, and he ended up damn near drowning. He's had to pick his ass, come here, come, come on, Peter. Mind your nose. I'm not I'm not saying that you know we just gonna be jumping out walking on water. Right, but right, right, right. At the same time, I think about that because I watch anime too. Mm -hmm. And the whole Naruto thing, how they use the chi to so, yeah. push mm -hmm. off on the water, and that's how they're walking on the water in right. the cartoon. Right. So I'm thinking that's like almost that same logic. It's the same thing. You know what I'm saying? It's the exact same thing. If you ever seen Chris Angel or um, yeah. David Blaine do their magic trick as far as levitation? <clears throat> kind of. The thing is, they kind of do the camera like this, and the person's like, oh my gosh. So it's kind of like you don't really see it. Yeah, that's my thing with David Blaine, but Chris Angel, this joke is up about eight feet off the ground. Ain't no mirrors outside. You know what I'm saying? They talk about posts. Yeah. Real right, the real ones. <laughs> yeah. Right, and the real saints too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude. Yeah, we can, we can do this, y'all. This is what I showed you with the orbit field, the energy. That's all it is. That's all you're using. Everything is energy. Everything is mental. Everything is mind. And Neil just left. Right? <laughs> <laughs> with Trinity. <laughs> so, so that's the key to it. You know. So. And matter of fact, it's coming out in a few days. I got I got yeah. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it's good. I hope it ain't sorry. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you be messing up. Yeah. Good good movies like that. <laughs> but um any other questions on anything? It's not like discharging the debt. It's, it's okay, it's here we lot. go. It's here we go. All right, all right, here we go. You broke it down into some stuff just starting off with Can you write it down for yeah, me? Yeah, all right. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Hold on. I'll Let me get my board. Okay, here we go. Let me get my board. And I'll bring the board over and y'all 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 can write it down after I write it down. Peace got us. Okay. Can we pay somebody to do this? <laughs> yeah, I do. Do you have five? That's it. Mm -hmm. The whole process. Oh, yeah. But we have to converse with the first one, right? Right. You need your birth certificate, right? Social security card frame back in your in your um, front, at least the front of your birth certificate. But you need a long version. Right. Yeah, it don't matter because it's all going to have the same information. Yeah. They ain't going to have your, your baby footprints on it. That's when they get sold. Go ahead. Well, that's got that, I only got that bond number on there. Right. Okay. So let's get the bond right number. Right here. I just yep. I just made that look. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. 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 I know that's that that Tai Chi stuff is uh is good, but you know I always listen to this part of it, but I'll be like, but yeah, I'm gonna try that too. <laughs>
But it takes. I know all that with the meditation all the time. People are yeah, like I feel more like electric or something. Well, I watch when we get at it, though. That's how I want to come and just make sure that I'm doing some of this stuff right. Everything with the brain into the water, so you can have a drink, right? Go for power, all of that. <clears throat> See, I work in the area, so I come up here like, hey, I got $360. Who are you working at? <laughs> at the Pelican of Henderson. Why are you, why are you here? I didn't know you was here. <laughs> 360 bucks. <laughs> What's your last name? Harris. Harris. Oh. I, I was doing my um, ancestry. I found out I had like, my, you know, people I was from North Carolina, North Carolina before they moved to Mississippi. Okay. Um, okay. 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 Harris. Harris. See, I got a. Uh, and my mama, my mama's last name is Hankins. My dad's last name is Harris. Hankins. How you spell it? H A N K I N S. Oh, I got you. Okay. I see. I think I had some Hankins in my home. Mm -hmm. Hey. Like the Hankins, like my. Granddad, like his brother, like I, my, my granddad died before I was born, but his brother, they were both yellow, like yellow, yellow. <laughs> okay. His name was my, what you call him, such a great uncle. Mm -hmm. his, his real name was Golden, because he was so golden. Like, oh, so golden. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. He was Goldie. Yeah. So you said birth certificate, um, social security card, birth certificate. And you said front, front and back. Uh -huh. okay. Dr. Lee? Yeah. They're looking for a book. The um, Golden Order. Uh, it is mm -hmm. Isn't it over there by you? Yeah. 
I had to come this time, you know, basically to see what's what. Like I said, though, okay. he got the Healing Me Institute on the bottom of the state on the on Facebook. He said he got changed. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, can you a little little smoothest boy, little plate there? <laughs> That's what it's for. Okay. Um, um, I So basically, that like the information I found on ancestors, like the uh, census. Mm-hmm. How could I get like a good print out of that? I try to print out on you know my printer, and it's like kind of blurred. So I want to have like proof for that. You have to go to like the library and see because you have to do some printers and stuff and see they can work that out. So you take that. You know, the library is here, right? Right down the street, right here to the left. Right down the street to the left is where the library is. It's right, right back there. It's just one street over from here. The next block to the left is the library. And they'll let you in. And they'll let you, um, you know, um, you know, do what you need to do as far as make copies and everything. You know, the computer system is just better than probably hours off. You know, that's what you need to go against those two years and make copies. Okay. <coughs> you take that information, you take that information off the stall, and then where did you turn that to? You give it to me, you do your nationality, and you insert that information into your documentation. Okay. Then you go so, and take it down to the register of deeds. Or to the clerk of civil following the superior court. And like my birth certificate, you mean stupid? I have my original one in my purse. My purse got two. So I got a copy because some of that information is kind of incorrect. Like I think, like somebody's last name is incorrect on there. I don't think I got my mama's name as my last name. I don't know. Something weird. So how could I correct that? Yeah. 
So you amend it. Mm -hmm. Then we'll actually tell them what's correct and what's incorrect. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Situation. Well, if I pay you to do it, you, you still need that for me? <laughs> no, those are IRS forms. Okay. Mm -hmm. How much do you charge for the um that asset protection? Like the religious exemptions or oh that's twenty two dollars.
Do y'all have y'all business under LLC or like a non-profit? No, no, non-profit, which is probably which is just something the church. Okay. Mm -hmm. You got our houses, calls, land, businesses, everything is under the more short and simple science of the world. We own nothing but control everything. So it's under um, um, religious protection, non-profit, as well as also a trust. At the same time, I put all of that together. You can do all that under the box at 508? Mm-hmm. And that's why I still let me go to the 508 and 503. That's why. I'm probably going to keep doing it. Uh-huh. When it's controlled, what is it? They can control the middle aspects of a church as a, as a 508, but they can as a 501c3. Okay. So you can put any business in the 508? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Don't you use keywords like holy, temple, church, mosque, synagogue, outreach program, ministry? Mm -hmm. You talk about nationality. The form that you need for your nationality is what you provide. You have to do the nationality. We recommend you doing your UCC one financial statements and affidavits. So starting off with nationality. You want your declaration of nationality. The declaration of About indigenous status. Um, Come correction. It can also be the religious. Name correction. <clears throat> you have your affidavit of affidavit of um, non taxpayer status. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. 
Affidavit of truth, but like that's the suburb. Yeah, affidavit facts. You can get like get that notarized, right? The affidavit, affidavit is right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have two spaces, and that documentation for notary to sign and put the seal. You have the now corporate status. You know, I have met each of the other this is called affidavit. Uh, True mm -hmm. affidavit facts. Mm -hmm. Now, corporate status is coming on that correction. Mm -hmm. Affidavit, not taxpayer status, declaration of conditional status, declaration of nationality. Zero. Get your nationality card. So, that down even in the height, the weight, the color, the area. I don't know. Same information as some of you. Um, ID card or your wow. state ID as a card or ID on the and on his website and on the All this is called an affidavit. But this isn't that, sorry. Not the nationality. Right. Right here. Affidavit be now the corporate status, affidavit the truth, affidavit the facts, affidavit the right. state status, affidavit the common money and collection, affidavit the definition of indigenous status, affidavit of nationality. Everything is. To the affidavit. The reason being is because um, an affidavit in court can't be denied by the judge. Hey, what? what? What's up? Trip, man. I could have got in earlier. Why are you still here? Oh, yeah. They all do all these guys. Oh, uh, right here, this is from here, room. So, these are the main forms. This is your card right here. Nationality card. I wish I would have bought mine. I forgot my brand. So, forgive me for that. Two days. Um, you also have um, live print, live plain birth affidavits or records. These are the documentation that you will receive. <clears throat> I feel like I'm missing something, but I can't think of what it is. But it's 10 to 11 documentations that you're going to see. All right? Now, uh, let me give me a little point that I can write it down.
Louisiana. Louisiana, man. I'm really from Distortion is great. Yeah, man. Actually, that's And your property is called the UCC one financial statement and the various contracts that comes along with it. UCC means uniform commercial code. So uniform commercial. UCC one affidavit attachment. Copyright trade or trade name. <coughs> In chalk, y'all. <laughs> All right. Um, option form 90, 91. Agreement. Oh, okay. 
Jason gone? I'm traveling. <laughs> He's gonna keep me up all night. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he won't keep me up. Thank you. Usually, I'm So, UCC one financial statement, UCC one um, affidavit attachment, copyright, trademark, trade name, negative for Berkeley. Option form 90 and 91, security agreement, private agreement, SF 28 form, or standard form 28, which is known as individual surety, individual surety form, right? Standard form 28. Mm -hmm. Standard form 28, In the individual. Security. Surety. So far, right? Yeah, it's good, though. It's got that right um, amount in there, like, yeah. <laughs> All right, so now you go to private bond set off. <clears throat> private bond set off. It goes from charge back. Negotiable charge back, negotiable bill of exchange. All right. Fidelity bond. Copy of your birth certificate, BC, birth certificate, um, stamped. In a 45 degree angle. Accepted for value. What is called A for B. You also have what is known as. Stand for 45 degrees, accepted for value standpoint. Um, I'm building from the top of my head, so I'm trying to get everything for y'all. Right. Um, we also do a 1040 voucher. 
1040B, which is a voucher. Voucher. Um, 1096 form. 10, which this is optional. Um, 10. 99. Um, this, this is optional too. But you don't really have to add that to it unless you're doing this for a particular discharge. Which is 1099A, 1099B. Or 1099C. A is for abandonment of account. B is for balance of the books. C is for cancellation of debt. All right. A and B transform credit into FRAs. You got notes. C cancels the debt. All right. 1040 voucher. You put that, you leave it open because of the fact is that in your documentation that we have gone over so far, it's going to be a hundred trillion dollars. <coughs> you'll make it a hundred trillion dollars because it's actually unlimited, but you don't want to say unlimited on the, on the forms. You want to put some type of money value to it. You can say that it's in gold, it's in silver, um, per ounce, um, et cetera, et cetera. How do you want to say it? But this is how you want to do it in your documentation. Okay? Um, so you want the 1040, and you also need the 1040 NR. Non residential alien. 1040 NR, make sure non residential alien. The other form in which that call is a WA or WADEN form. Right, W8 or W8BEN form correlates with the 1040 NR. In other words, you're not in the jurisdiction of the federal government, which is a 40 mile radius for Washington, D.C. In other words, you're not a United States citizen, and that's really what that is. All right, you have your own tribal connection and you want to do commerce, then you do it from the state in which that you domicile in. Okay, this is the key, y'all. All right. Okay. So once you have all these documents, you're going to send them to Secretary. And what I mean by once you have all these documents, once you have them seal, sign by notary, witness by a notary, or witness by someone who's um, part of your camp, your family, um, normally these two witnesses on the form rules that you might see, you need to be notarized. You want to take them down to the register of deeds or the county recorder's office, put them on the public record, they'll seal the sign it themselves. Now you have the sealed documents. Now you want to send them off to the Secretary of Treasury. Secretary of Treasury. You want to do that in Washington, D.C.? DC, and you want to do it in Treasury of Puerto Rico, San Juan, Puerto Rico. All right. So I just say Treasury. And he, who is who is this Treasury for? This Treasury is for the Federal Reserve Bank. This is what who is over the Federal Reserve Bank is for the Treasury. Federal Reserve Bank, Treasury is in San Juan, Puerto Rico. We're going to say, um, we're going to go to PR. Okay. That's the issue. So, PR. DC, PR. Right? It's the same one that's on the dollar bill. Somebody pull out a dollar and you see the names at the bottom. 
Anybody got it out? Just that one. Okay, perfect. That's right on time. Yep. All right. So right here, right here, you have two positions. Oh, uh, okay. Read it for me. What, what they say is. It's all right. I can't read it. It's all right. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. Oh, 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 it's Puerto Rico, who's the over the Federal um, Reserve Bank. All right? Then you have Secretary of Treasury. These are the two treasurers. You see right here underneath the name. Old age, ain't no joke. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Should be, I said, I got, I got to take my glasses off too. Shit. <laughs> I'm like, these I can see. Those names. Yeah, write those names down. No, no, no. Those people ain't even in position. Okay. At least Stephen Nugent is in a position right now. All right? He's not in position. Um, like I said, now it's Janet Yellen. Janet, Janet Yellen. Y L L E N. Janet Yellen. That's who's the Secretary of Treasury now. All right? And you can look up who's the treasurer of Puerto Rico or the treasurer of the United States. The treasurer of the United States is the treasurer of Puerto Rico, which is the uh, treasurer of the Federal Reserve Bank. Same three positions, same person. Okay? So this is who you send this documentation to that we just went over. All of these forms that we just went over, you're going to send a copy to Secretary Treasurer, the open and active UCC trust account, and you're going to send a copy to the Treasurer of Puerto Rico of the United States. This is where these two forms will go to. Well, the forms that you have will go to these two departments. Let me put it like that. Okay? Everybody get that? Now, once you send this off, 30 days later, you have the ability to discharge debt. Now, understand that when you send it off, you're going to use a registered mail tag. A red registered mail tag. You're going to have to get this from the United States Postal Service. Or office. And USPS, United States Postal Service. In other words, from the post office. And you just simply go in and ask them for a registered mail tag, red registered mail tag, and they'll give it to you. The number that's on that registered mail tag becomes the number of the UCC trust account because you put it on your documentation with all your forms embedded inside of the vanilla envelope. Now, they have the ability in order to say, well, look, I gave you my, um, this is my number for my um, account. I'm going to be able to discharge debt. So that number now you can utilize in all your forms of discharging debt. And it will go back to the um, Secretary of Treasury. So that way, still have a tag. Anybody understand that? That's the, that's the, now understand what connects with that is number one. The birth certificate is a state file number. That's up in the upper right hand corner of the form. Number two, the um, social security number that's on the back. That is known as your IMF number or International Monetary Fund number that's on the back of the social security card. That is known as your prepaid and bottom number. Your prepaid and bottom, that is the number that you use to cancel or prepay any debt. With the back of the social security card. That's the reason why that number is on the back. You see, they don't tell us this. The number on the back of the social security card is called the prepaid levy bond number. Prepaid. Now, when you say, when you hear something that's prepaid, what that mean? <laughs> it's already paid for. Prepaid. So basically, they said we already levy. paid right. for our debt. Right. Why our bills come in deposit. Exactly. That's why the bills come in the deposit. And you suppose the right? A center for value, closure of account on the back of it, confidentially, and you're supposed to be able to discharge that debt. And you will put your discharging number on there, which is what? The registered mail tag. 
along with the social, the social security number, run it back, along with your birth state file number in the bottom of on your birth certificate. But everything is predicated with on your birth certificate. That is the actual bond. You know, I read that yesterday. That's the bond. That's the Midwest Bank Note Company. Or any note company that you see, that means that that is a bond. That means that is registered. That means that you are able to pay off your debts utilizing that. So you want a copy of your birth certificate, which is separate from value, you turn it back in blue. All right? With the rest of these documentations, the main part, the real part of the, um, um, the copy of the file that you get from um, the register of deeds is going to be sent specifically. You're going to make two copies one for yourself, one for deposit into a safe or somewhere, one for Puerto Rico. The original one goes to the Secretary of the Treasury in DC. Okay, and once again, you're going to make uh, four copies uh, one copy for yourself. Put that in a folder, a binder, two, and put one in a vault. In other words, you take you take good care, you know, put in a vault or some type of um, um somewhere protected that, that you want to have put it. You send one to Puerto Rico, the treasurer of the United States, and you send the other one to the Secretary of the Treasury. The original one goes to the Secretary of the Treasury. So the one that you get sealed and signed, gave copy, um, stamped and cleared, recorded at the register of deeds, county recorded office, you send that one to the Secretary of the Treasury, DC. Is there anybody in the court digitally that you know of? I'm pretty sure nowadays. I'm pretty sure nowadays it is because each state has a division for the UCC. But normally, they only allow for you to put it on there is the UCC one for NASA center. The rest of the documents you have to send in to have to get a file at the, at the register of deeds. So you have to send it to them, all right? And they can put it on, on, the, on the record and they'll send you back a copy. But that is still only a claim of link. You will have to do another UCC one for NASA center. And then put that on the county recorder's office at the register of deeds. Okay? And that is the actual link. That is, that is the non filing or non UCC filing. That's the box that you will mark. It's the non UCC filing in that regard. On that link? Right. Whatever you're going to lean, put whatever you put on it, that's what's going to be linked. Non UCC. Yeah, you're going to mark non UCC filing. That's one of the box. Um, what the collateral is that's listed on the UCC one for the state. Yeah. Now that's the that's the lien. That's the actual lien. You'll put it at the county that you domicile in. Now, the claim of lien is at the Secretary of State, which you can do online. And the one that you do online, you can walk the box, you can check the boxes, agricultural lien. You can check the box, lease or leasing. You can check the box, co signer or co signing. You can check the box, buyer seller. You can check those particular boxes. That's, that is also above the collateral list. But that is for the claim of lien. But the actual lien is a non UCC file that is done at the register of deeds. All right? Now, the register of deeds work in conjunction as clerks, they are also deputies. Or um, for the Secretary of State. So when you put one in one place, don't be trickled down. Okay? But, you, but this is the way that you really want to do it. Right? So prepaid levy bond, bond number. That is the number that's on the back of the Social Security card. It's also referred to as the IMF, International Monetary Fund number. Okay. All right. So remember, the main number that you want to use is the number on the on the prepaid bond number, 
which is the IMF, which is the back of the security card. The front of the security card, normally you're going to do that without the dashes. So if it's 239 dash, blah, 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 you take the dashes out and that just becomes um, um, the number that you can utilize. Um, you'll use the upper right hand corner of the birth certificate, which is called the safe file number. And you're also going to use the number that's in red, which is your bond number. These four numbers, um, is well, those three particularly is attached to the number there. Yeah, those, yeah, those four is attached to the um, number that you have sent to the Secretary of Treasury and the Treasury of the United States, which is that Western Bell um, Red Bell Tag. This one get the Red Bell Tag, Red Bell. Tag, registry, register, number. That's what that is. You get this from me. Once again, USPS, United States Postal Service, the postal. All right? That number for the red register mail tag is your discharge number. That is the note for your activation of your UCC trust account with the Secretary of Treasury. This is a bank. Secretary of Treasury is a bank. And you just open up your UCC trust account. In other words, you just open up your account. And this account is for discharging process, for the discharging process, which occurs after 30 days. Okay, so once your documents have been sent, you have notification that has been sent but you can check the usps website you're going to find out when your registered mail tab documents get to washington dc and somebody signed for it or whatever the case is the one for the treasurer of the united states which is the treasurer of puerto rico of the federal reserve bank you send them a certified mail return receipt right this is the green tab this is the green tab Right, they get a certified return from mail on uh, mail receipt. So you can actually have somebody that you can save on that if you want somebody to sign for it, right? Or um, simply send back the green mail tab so you can have it in your documentation. You see, it's DC and Puerto Rico. This is expensive. That's the reason why it takes so long to go over this. This is team. Right. The green tab just for Puerto Rico. That's, that's it. Just for oh, not, not for DC? Red for DC. Red metal tab is for DC. The green one is for Puerto Rico. Anybody be in someone you want to talk about? I know it's a lot. It's a lot. Okay. And I still don't finish. Of course, because you were adding your simple bond certificate too. You can sandwich your birth certificate, which is at a 45 degree angle, a separate value in blue ink. You accept that, connect that to the simple bond certificate, as well as also the bond to discharge of debt. Right, there's a bond for the debt saying earlier information bond for discharge affidavit, bond for discharge affidavit, your birth certificate, and silver bond certificate. All of these three. It simply goes together. Right. Right. discharge, first certificate, and a full home um, with the uh, acceptable value, front and back, simple bond certificate, all three of those sandwiched together. All right. Uh, Along with the other forms that we just said, the copyright trademark trading name, the um, private bond set up, the limits change, charge back. 
Fidelity Bond. Uh, um, oh, um, Grant and Powell's attorney. That's another one. Grant and Powell's attorney affidavit. Um, negative of birthday. Uh, all of this. Right? Also, another denial of corporate status. Question. Even in commerce, you want to deny corporate status. So, if you talk about denying corporate status, even in your nationality, deny corporate status in your documentation as far as your um, doing commerce. Yeah, so, yeah. you always going to deny corporate status because otherwise, they would assume that you're such. They think that you're a child of Christ. That's what they would assume you as. That's mean you love when you say this. When you say that, you just say Child of property means that they believe that they own you. You are nothing but merely their slave, and they can do to you whatever they want to do to you. And this is regardless of black, white, red, brown, yellow. They don't care nothing about it's all resources. Color. Right, right. It's all human resource today, or mankind resource. They don't matter. They they want resource, and you are it. You're the battery. Right. You're the battery. Oh. There you go. Matrix once again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can look at that. Right. Morphe is held up with a Duracell battery to Neo. Is that this is what we are to the Neo? Remember that part? Yeah. You know, the battery. Duracell. Remember the bunny. You know, on the um, on 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 the um, charge. What's the um? Not, what's the name? Energizer bunny. Energizer bunny. It, it's the same shit. Remember Neo's supposed to follow the bunny. <laughs> Remember that? It's all connected. That's all I'm just saying it's all connected. Whether it's energizer bunny, whether it's door cell, whether it's the bunny right here, um, that's take you into Alice Wonderland and goes into the deep hole. It's all it's all talking about the same thing. Wizard of Oz. Because Wizard of Oz told the story first. <laughs> all right. So um, these are the documentation that um that um we do for you. Um, as you see it's real tedious, you know. Some people charge fifteen hundred dollars. You only charge three hundred sixty. All right, but you get this information, you um, get it signed, you get it sealed and documented at the register of deeds, County Recorder's Office. You're now ready to put it in the vanilla envelope. You use the register mail tab for the Secretary of Treasury. I mean, you make another copy of it before you send it off, and do a green mail tab now to the Treasury for the deed. You keep a copy for yourself in your personal records and your vote. And you also have one that's owned at all times, you know, showing that you are the actual owner or what is referred to as um, secure point creditor. That's what this is. This is a secure point creditor um, process. We call it once again UCC process or also referred to as asset and protection. Affidavits so, uh, and the process. Okay. Right. Yeah. Oh, we ain't finished yet. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you don't charge more. <laughs> I ain't complaining. <laughs> well, he says it's donation. You want to give a little something extra? <laughs> we gonna turn it down. <laughs> All right, so the more is this. You also wanted to um, authenticate your birth certificate, right? So really, before you even do your birth certificate at a 45 degree angle, which I would say recommend that you get several copies of the birth certificate. So okay. actual copies from them. From, oh, them. from the state, right? You want it from the state. So that, that would be the copy of a long form, except they don't have your little baby footprints on it. They don't give those out no more. They used to, but they don't do that no more. All right? But that's what you want. You want a copy of that. So you want the long BC from the sec from the Secretary of State. I wish that you um secular uh, secretary of state in a state that you is conceived in. Conceive, let me put conceive. Conceive, I state. The state that you was conceived in, this is where you want your loan on form a birth certificate from the Secretary of State. So, for example, I was born in New York, so I would have to go through New York. 
Take care of the state of New York. All right. Once they send it to me, or either you can call them and tell them that you want a copy, but send it over to the authentication um, department, which is always in the same. No, nine times out of ten, it's in the same way. Okay, and they will, and they will um, do your documentation as far as authenticating it at the state level. Once it's done at the state level, then you move it up to the federal. And now you send it to the United States Secretary of Treasury. You're talking about. Excuse me, I'm talking about the United States Secretary of Treasury. The United States Secretary of the State. I'm tripping. But the United States Secretary of Federal. So now you send it to them. So now you have your birth certificate authenticated at. The state level and now at the federal level. Okay, state and the federal level. What they want to So what do they do when they authenticate? Right? Yes. <laughs> so sugar's not here. No, she ain't here. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what that was. All right, but, um, right? They're like, good job, good job. Good job. Hit the drones, hit the drones. <laughs> All right, so um, what's that question again? Just ask. Oh, well, authentication. Yeah, okay. They authenticate your birth certificate. Uh -huh. They authenticate it at the state level and they authenticate it at the federal level. So you just need to send them like about uh, $40 to authenticate it and they authenticate your birth certificate. Oh, the purpose, what are they doing? The purpose, right. They authenticate the purpose of authenticating your birth certificate. Of course, you want to come back to control of your executive or exec, executrice or executor estate. So, all right. In other words, your estate was abandoned. <laughs> right? Your estate was abandoned. That's why the bank used the 1099A form, which means an abandonment form. They say that you abandoned your position as a state citizen and you accepted federal citizenship. You see, there's no such thing because 14 minutes was done fully ratified. But they have us believing that it was, and therefore, you are a federalized citizen and, instead of a state citizen. So they authenticated in their system. There's nothing like on the right. birth certificate saying yeah. it's authenticated. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it, it um, comes yeah. with a big gold ribbon. Right, it comes you with a big gold ribbon. You can't that out and it says full faith and credit. You call them all the things back, full faith and credit. So basically, you get it authenticated, yeah. then you want to yeah. order it. Yeah. Mm. Because yeah, we started first. You are starting off. Right. Hold on. So you do your nationality part, which I gave down all the steps for that. The next part before you do the UCC process is this process. I would do this process right after doing the nationality, which is authenticating the birth certificate. Get a loan form from the Secretary of State, of the state that you proceed in, and then Authenticating it to the next department over, which normally, like I said, is in the same building. You can say, Look, I just purchased my birth certificate loan form. I need for y'all to send it to the um, authentication process of the department. And normally, they'll do that. If they have a problem, then you just simply say, Well, send it to me, and I'll send it back to them. And then you'll send it back to them for like 25 seconds. Well, not 25 seconds, but well, how much is spent now? 70 seconds? How much? 35 seconds? Must say more than that. Oh, I'm about to say, I think they're more than that. Yeah, now. More than that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but y'all but get what I'm saying. So you must use the stamp, send it back to them. And so you send it for the authentication um, department of the Secretary of State. And they'll process your form. Um, then after that, you send it to the federal United States Secretary or the Secretary of the State. All right? Okay, now I understand. Correct me. Your nationality first, first, then you okay. You can take the birth certificate, take birth certificate, right? And you come back in charge, being that you already state that you're indigenous aboriginal. Gotcha. Now you say, Hold up, I'm not just aboriginal and indigenous, y'all. I'm coming back in charge of my own estate now yeah. because remember, your estate was banned here at birth. This is what they did, this is why they did what they did to us, right. They made sure that we was abandoned, that we abandoned our state of birth. This is why they tricked our mothers and fathers into signing the birth certificate. 
That was to make us come under admiralty, maritime law, instead of common law. When you become the executor of the state, you come back under common law. When you come back under the executress or the executor of your estate, you come back under common law. This is the point. All right? So now you come back under common law. This is the process here. So now you have your nationality, you have your declaration of status as indigenous, aboriginal, and now you are under common law. No longer under admiralty and maritime law. Which that's what they tricked us into, bro. Remember, I was talking about that yesterday. So now you're not under that. Now you can proceed for, and now you do what's called your executor level or executress level. Executor or executress. And you send it to various agencies. Okay. You send your executor, executrix left to various agencies. I'll tell you the agencies. The Attorney General of the state of which you conceived in. The governor in which that the state that you conceived in, as well as also the state that you currently reside in or domicile in, as we say. So for the guy, she, she was in Ohio. So um, she was conceived there in Ohio State. So she would write um, the Attorney General, the Governor, all right, the Secretary of State. This is who she was saying her executress letter to. All right, Attorney General, Governor, um, Secretary of State. Those are main three. All right. Governor, Secretary of State, Attorney General. All right, these are the main three. Now, you have a court case that's something different. You can do your executive letter to the administrative court process and so forth, so, but that's something else. But these are the main three that you want to send it to in the state that you was conceived in and in the state that you now currently domicile. All right, and you put them on notice that you are now the executrix. With the executor, then you have copy, you will send them a copy along with a cover letter of your what? Of your what? Of your birth certificate being authenticated at the state level and at the federal level. Put them on notice that you have come back in control of your estate. Remember, you have a bed in your estate at birth. You became a ward to the state at birth. Then <clears throat> what happened? Ward of the state. This is why when people go to jail, they're called wards or ward of the state when you go to jail. Matter of fact, the um, the warden warden is over the wards of the state. He in fact is called the straw boss. That means they must be the straw man. The maternity ward, right? That's what that's called. Maternity ward, the mother's ward. She turned, up, she turned this over. She was the informant. That's on the birth certificate. You look under your mother's name, you will see the word informant. She informed on us. She snitched on our asses. And her. Yeah, he little ass right here. That's why I want to draw your sentence out. Right. Ward back. Draw is ward backwards. Draw the sentence. Ain't that something? There you go. So this is what they have done to us. So this is a method, a process on how to get ourselves out of the predicament that we got in. And yes, we have to use documentation, a paper trail. But that's how this guy happened. This is how this happened. It happened through the birth certificate. Then for the birth certificate, you got a social security card, you got a marriage license, a marriage license, you got a, 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 a driver's license, you got to go get a fisher's license, you got to go get a, a hunting license, you got to go get. <laughs> Look at all that damn paper trail they put on your ass. Every year you got to pay taxes. 
And then we take that form and show you how to operate as a business tax exempt, just like we do here. Tax exempt. And if you still work, I'm not. If I still work, I'm trying to do this in the name of my name. She's going to give you a little shit. They like you. They're going to work here. You're a PR manager, can't deny the form. They don't like you, it's your right to hire states. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they're they had a hard time with my own. I only wanted to be a contractor route. I didn't think that's what I was like, yes. Contractor is my foreign contractor number. Yeah, in number is foreign. See, so first of all, it's non profit foreign. Yeah, in number. But still, I said a DBA is my name, and it just came in as that. Yeah, in number. So you got to get creative in some certain cases, you know. Fatah doesn't have that issue, right? They pay Fatah right. as a non-citizen or right. right. So I think so kind of you work in like kind of contracts from there. They want you to be an employee. And the way I got out of that is you know, to argue employed versus employee. You know, two different definitions. Employee is an officer in the company. Let's say want to make you the XO, CFO, or fucking CEO. Yeah, you'll pay taxes. Because you're an employee in the company. Right. If you're a boy, they just want to fucking take your money. Right. Make that three to five percent. Let's pull that out and they make revenue on you throughout the year. What are high goals of the union and institute of the union? Woo, geez, son. Uh, well, don't be corrupt, man. But they definitely have to have some indigenous Indians in the union. Yeah. They just ain't going to be farming. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I keep. It's tough, guys, because I mean, the indigenous laws is in, it's been signed, it's, it's enacted. And you just act ignorant of it, you know, literally act like this shit just doesn't matter. I'm gonna sign the blank piece of paper, it's supposed to right? You just pass new tax laws, you're gonna follow them, though, right? Right, 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 it just makes you, you gotta get real, and then pull up to your your state. We usually have a house resolution bill for the Moors, right? Which will verify with their because they're listed as a terrorist organization. Well, I ain't gonna lie, one boss called and said, You fucking a terrorist man, or what? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Well, let me show you what house resolution bill 624 says about the Moors, right? Right, and all their great accomplishments. You gotta understand, one is propaganda, the other one is real history. Yeah, it's true, <laughs> right. The, 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 the shrines are wearing a Moorish fez, right? And saying Asalaamu Alaikum, yeah. Wa Alaikum Asalaam, right before you. But right in your little goat cart and such shit. You know, a little little bike, little mopeds, or whatever that is, and shit. They'd be riding on and shit. And they'd be, you know, they'd be going around the circles and be happy and shit. And they'd be there building big ass hospitals. And, and you just be like, man, how they going there riding the damn go kart? Like they do them hospitals and get yeah. money from somewhere. Grants, yeah. bonds, bank, it's all bonds, right? Yeah. right. Getting the bonds. So that's why you gotta yeah. have my my buddy of mine who finally got on that upper echelon level. He finally got entered into a hundred thousand dollar buying on you know what these big boys are playing, right? Right. But then right. he told him, he said, Well, because he asked him about bonds, and he said, Well, man, you gotta have a million plus to get in on bonds. And you gotta ask, well, why is the bonds the top of the game? Right in there to get into all the investment. Because you look at the way they do the bonds, they're all insured and effective. So it's a no risk situation. <laughs> you're you're insured and bonded, or whatever you just did. It's like you fell on your house, they bonded your house, right? Insured. They collect the full revenue on that. How'd you be on that other side? You know, that, that's the game. It's getting on that. Day. Insurance and bond side, where you, know, you can insure your bank. You loan off the ones and zeros. Yeah, you are ones and ones and zeros. Whereas your equity tied to your assets, where they can look at that and say, hey, you are all on you up to zero. Right. 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 Right
can write ownership documents for your property is always they don't give you the title, right? They don't give you the land that they don't give you the property. They give you a certificate of the title, right? They don't give you the original manufacturer title in your truck. So you gotta fight for it. To get the equity, you know, then you can start to realize how to play the game that we want to as more as play. We want to fund our home. We don't want to have, we want to have a wash and talk bank where we go through and you'll own to every one of your fellows, right? So <laughs> you feel me? And not a half a million dollar home, you can't do no shit with a half a million dollars, whatever you want to do, bro. Go out fine. Be be productive and be successful than we all you ain't gonna be successful now. Church, man. Yeah. Make, you want to go to church? <laughs> <laughs> All that focus goes somewhere else. I'm like, where all my money been going? I've been out built everywhere. Keep you sleeping on the bridges and shit. Yeah, we got a lot of big ass public buildings. You see it, man. Goddamn, one of my family members in a nation is sleeping under a bridge, and I got the damn mayor's house right But the, the, the city hall right down there was warm. warm. One water, but you know, air time. You don't go some that takes open all night. Man, you go to college, <laughs> you do what you want. It's yours. Yeah. Maybe you think you own it, you can go play with it. You take care of it right now. You know, most people in mind they go trash it. Right? Because I break in, the rest of the so are you closed? It's public, right? You know, babysitter? Yeah, hold them up. That kind of stuff. Takes that power back to the feet. And longhouses is where you just didn't matter if you was in war with tribes, man. You still have a place for your food on your shelter. I don't want to take a shit, man. I don't want you to die. You know what I'm saying? Just want to up my game on the beachfront property or some shit. I don't want the travelers to fight no back in the day, man. That's what they were just fighting over some shit. Yeah, yeah. Any questions over anything I went over? I like my step back. What's good? Yeah, let's see. Probably a call you the day off. Bobby. <laughs> I'll tell you, I didn't understand this part right here. They got nobody to post y'all that's interested in that. I think I would post them all that. No, nobody. He's a cat. The guy here is on CT. The guy over here, he's from. Dallas, you know what I'm saying? That's what we get ready to head back to Texas ourselves. We get ready to head to Texas. Yeah, that's family in Texas. My son is in Dallas, outside of Dallas in the Kings. 
Then they had a situation with the police officer, the young girl. Right. So he's still trying to justify. I'm like, oh, right. It's not. 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 It's What's the stuff going on for trying to purchase the video? I was about the whole thing. It's like the people in my car. Right? But you have to do it like in a business name, right? Not yeah. not in your corrected name or corrected name. Right. That's again, is can your credit be established to where you can have that amount? So each one of your, your businesses, you're going to want to start a Duns and Brad number with its own address. Each business has its own address. Oh. So everyone you want to get to where you've got a $100,000 credit card, now there's say 10 of them, right? You're paying sometimes. One percent on some of these, no, no interest in any of these cars. You get credit right here, and no interest, right? So, some of these give four percent cash back. So, <laughs> you, you think about that for a minute. You got four of these, and then you know, so you get four or five things before you get four percent cash back. Now, you've got cash revenue where you are able to go out, and then now you're able to offset that debt. You don't have to pay it back, even though it's still credit. You're all set. You're with your with your uh, 10, 1099 C cancellation, and all that stuff. So it, it's it's just the point of getting your credit set up, right? You know, a lot of these people that want to have two, three, four, five years. The more your company's been in business, the more it's going to have less of a liability risk, right? So it's been established. So you know, I talked about, and then that's where these guys do the corporate suicide. This corporate suicide. Suicide's real, man, but it ain't some dude jumping out of the fucking window. <laughs> some, some business is putting all their bad assets in one company and wants to do this. Bankrupt, right? So you got all these companies, well, man, we're going to worry some up with all this bad shit. This one dude, and I'm just going to off it. It's all bankruptcy. And that's the game. That's the game you have to realize you have to learn to play with that. There's no money. How do you play a game with no money? That's the creative side that we're not looking at. <laughs> so utilize your social services credit card to offset all your services with your social security number, right? That your service is a credit card. That's what they wanted. They wanted to take all your gold and silver and pay for all your shit to let them. And then you create it with your credit card. Do you have dozens and brass your numbers? I mean, they're expensive. I mean, what's 80 bucks, 90 bucks for each one? You know, then you gotta get a goddamn international. At least I did post office box. I try to keep everything in the form, if not the appearance of no jurisdiction inside of the United States. I get enough of those going. And I have a plumbing, doing my lease in the X, and I'll do a DBA with Brendan Dietrich, whatever, spiritual name, out of business, you know, totally. All that is underneath my church, my temple. These three right here. It says four form is this form right here. This is ninety eight foreign trust. Ninety eight foreign trust. You do through a SS four form. This is how you make yourself foreign to the jurisdiction of the United States. The creative side is getting that address for that SS4 form. 
anything will help you with that. Well, the master need help. I just gonna have to get creative. You know, think about how you would travel. If you were there to just start a little church or something, like a nonprofit, how would you travel somewhere and not own something, but still use an address or something like that? Just because. What he was talking about is that on the SS four form, which is called the R ninety eight trust form, it asks you specifically if this a church, is this a government, Indian government, is this? So I'm saying they ask you what type of industry, or particularly what type of corporation or entity that this is. All right. So on our form, we did. More twenty two percent of the world, but over more twenty two percent of the world was you know why should I get that one? Okay, and which that has a foreign name, which has a ninety eight number, right? So that means that you just transform more twenty two percent of the world bill, what we call you know why should I get that one? Into a foreign trust. Outside the jurisdiction of the United States. You do the same thing with your, with your name, your birth name, your business name. You become head of your of your birth name. Your birth name is the trade name. Comes a vessel. Right. Right. Over right. that way. Right. You just turn your shit into a. Think about everything being flooded. You can't do business because you can't swim and hold all your shit and buy shit and sell shit. Right? You're swimming. So you have to have a vessel of your commerce. You get it that way. If you can't do business with a boat, a vessel, you're going to sink. So you have to look at your vessel of commerce as you and him establishing that. That's a boat for yourself. You get it that way. The SS5 form is the same form that your mom had to do or your dad had to do for you in order to get a social security card. But now you go back and you redo it yourself. And there's check marks where it states um, what is your race or ethnicity, which is also part of what we refer to as the SF181 form. <coughs> The SF-181 form goes along with the SS-5 form, both of them the Social Security, in which that deals with your race and your ethnicity. All right? You will mark, if you want to put a box in which that states more, and the code for the more, which is 667, coming from um, coming from the federal um, code. It is also found in um, the CDC department. Also, why more is six six seven? All right, that's the code six six seven. It's a found in the federal code. So that means that you can put more on either the SS five form or the SF one eight form. You can type it in, put the code. If you don't want to do that, you can put American. They're going to have to American Indian. You can check American Indian. You can check white. In which that white symbolizes status, not race. Status as a free white person. All right. So on the SS five form and on the SF one eighty one form, you can put you can, walk, you can check those two or put simply more with the code six six seven. Okay. I just wanted to say that because these are additional. Six, six, seven, man. Is that the diamond one, man? Huh? That carbon 12? Oh, 616 is carbon. Yeah, yeah, 616. Man, I was like, you like 666? You have 667 is the code for more than one above man? Or right, what you know, about, what about that, right? What about man, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 667. I thought about that too. All right. So that's the science for this, y'all. A lot, but it's tedious. It solidifies your position as far as um, not being property, 
the United States. That's what this is really about, not being property. You don't want to be property. I guarantee you that. <laughs> That's what's going on now with the masses. They property. So they abide by everything that they hear on TV, that they see in the newspaper. The public can't own property. You want right. To property. Right. Because, because uh, actually, the public is property themselves. So, property can't own property. That's why you mortgage they let you at the center. Right. Now, why is that? You got a mortgage and you think that you own your house, but then on the deed, you retain it. Right. So, you got to own property to vote. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows they're voting. They bullshit themselves. Right. That's why they do the. Uh, that's why on Bush. When they say that Bush stole the election from Gore, Al Gore back in the days. No, he used the three fifth compromise. He said, "Okay, you vote him as a hundred percent when you need to about twenty five percent of that. And it's three. It's three. Um, three fifth. Well, not." Not um, twenty-five percent, but three-fifth. You need to knock that off, you know, because um, two, um, fifth. We're not using that, so that's how Bush won against Gore, because he said we're not using the two-fifth. We only using the three-fifth, as stated in the compromise. And that's how he won. Bush Junior. That's how he won. Everybody was like, oh, he stole the election. He stole the election. Just like Biden stole the election from Trump. <laughs> Two of his sons after his granddad was convicted of war crimes. Getting as proud as bank. That's how bad we are. Damn, we're going to put two voices in there after we convict his grandpa on war crimes. Right? Two of them. Not one, but two. Bush. And, and serve and both of them served two times. <laughs> Thank wow. you. Well, that that uh, did you watch? Uh, what was the movie with Cheney? Did you watch Cheney? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta watch that. I know I got to watch because he man. shot his friend. <laughs> didn't even apologize, man. <laughs> didn't even apologize. That dude apologized to him for him being shot by Cheney. You imagine that kind of foul. I'm sorry, shot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good part of me, dude. They literally rewrote. They were saying that the, the executive office has just, if not more power than the 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 vice president, has more power than the president because he's able to vote Congress. It's how in the how that Supreme Court that was a uh, the Hispanic dude that they got on Supreme Court. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was the one who was like, yeah, I'll, I can I can argue that. I can argue that. You're like, damn. So Cheney was all cool about being the VP. He didn't want to be VP. He's like, man, I got more power than the president. Okay. Yeah, I'll do this. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's true. They're giving it to you, right? In your face, you know, just slapping you. Yeah. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> You know, my CEO is the title of Giselle Maxwell. I don't know what kind of goddamn company you want, man. Right? I'm still eating free to lay like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> for real? <laughs> for real? Frito! For everybody! Oh, man. It's like this thing just gonna go under and just understand. Yeah, because yeah, you ain't hear nothing about it. I don't know. Give them games. Give them games. And even that, and even some of that shit is rigged. So, going through all this, answer my question. That's the question I asked you earlier about. Can't that obviously because one, um, and that was one of the services. So, yeah, the work has to accept it because it's law. Take care. Texas is right to hire states. 
So the last thing about everything that I'm just about is the past. You need to say it's the last thing or the thing that you can do after you do your nationality. The passport, right? The passport thing is is tricky. Like for example, the time got it done, no problem. Yeah, but he about to go back. He's about to go back for what? And then I'll do it like a couple of new times. Down there again. Yeah, that's the thing. 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 Yeah, that's the Oh, yeah, I'm old Sam. Y'all, I can just wait a minute. That's true, too. This damn tribal idea. I got my birth certificate authentication. I can't wait for credit. I'm going to buy a lot of credit. Good. You ain't. You ain't. Full faith credit, man. You ain't. I didn't put it on there. It's got an asterisk by credit, too. I wonder what that means. It literally got an asterisk by next to credit, man. I don't want them for them. You got to ask when they put an asterisk next to something? On a government form? On a bond? They don't they don't tell you what that asterisk is for? <clears throat> Hell no. I ain't never seen an asterisk on anything, man, that, that, that wasn't an indicator that said, hey, why are you trying to highlight this word credit? You know, you know what I'm saying? It's like why are you you obviously put a little star next to it. Why are you trying to highlight this one word credit, man? Because it's something that's that's complicated. Like <laughs> this is what that word is. But we know what it is for credit for credit that you have secure party credit for. That means he did what he needed to do to secure party credit. Full faith and credit means that he has the right to discharge the debt. This usually wakes people up because people don't think you can even authenticate your Right. Right. I'm saying, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. You know what I'm saying? I see, talk to you, like, you were 18, your bond matured. Right. You, know, and you didn't go authenticate. You, right. you didn't know this You didn't come back in control of your estate. You you allow for it to continue being abandoned. So the banks had to do a 1099A form on you. Even if you close the bank account, they still are operating on privately. In other words, on the back side, moving money through your account that's been closed. Because well, you abandoned your estate. So they can do that. Close to the public, not close to the private side. Right? right. And then that little line that you see on the checks that you think is a line actually is not a line. It says authorized representative. That's what that little, you got to look at it with a magnifying glass. And that's what that line say. Uh, these dudes are, yo, these dudes are crafty, yo. Dirty shit. Yeah, but all the dead people that vote, man. Like, how many dead people are still their cash and their shit on the backdrop, man? I mean, they vote, they got a dance. They're probably still using that bond on the backdrop. They cast on the boat. Right, right. You had to. They're discharging that down on the backdrop to the dead pool. Y'all heard about that, right? During this past election, how they use dead people mm -hmm. to vote? Wow. Yeah, that's what it makes me. Yeah. I, I know this one I thought they did a couple times before. Yeah, they did. But they did in this one too. They call it Joe Biden, the Democrat Party. They am on um, doing that. But nobody they, they hurry up and cover that shit on up. He became president. Now, now he's sleeping Joe. <laughs> oh, because it came out of him. Okay, how how did you do this? Well, yeah, back to me. Well, this is this covered. You're pissing people off too. Stress. When you see a stadium filled of hundreds of thousands of everybody, and you come across, you've never seen a fucking football. 
Stadium. We feel the vibe and the, the, the home team, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you go across the country, you see what I'm saying? So it was a, it was an energetic thing. People showing that they had this this true champion, this winner, what they call a true champion, right? And then they just slapped him in the face. And then they hit him with, with fuck Joe Biden and let's go Brandon, right? So Brandon is... Is mRNA. Think about your mRNA and your vaccine, which is a messenger receiving the clay acid. But you're branding a, 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 something onto your DNA. You're branding something onto your DNA. Okay? So let's go, Brandon. You tell that shit out of the fucking stadium. Okay? Now you take fuck Joe Biden. Joe was short for joy. Like joy to the world. Okay? Biden is Scottish for Biden. Biden is how you pronounce it. That means to wait on the truth. So now you're literally shouting out, fuck waiting on truth and getting some joy. <laughs> Let's get on with the branding. <laughs> this is bird magic. This is how they control the masses. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody knows who Brandon is. And it ties in with like cattle branding, like cattle branding. Seriously? You don't think that's all by design? It's to work on that. Yeah. Very creative. Yeah, think tanks. Think you <clears throat> out there, Shen, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and the trump card's the last card you play when you win the game. Yeah, no, but that's trump card. So, on trump, Obama did the mic drop. The business was, was, was bankrupt. Hope sent the letter. Trump came in and prevented the bankruptcy because that's the Trump card. And now, now fucking Sleepy Joe's in there because he's asleep. It is not real. This is not real. You know? And it's just a matter of, of this dark winter, in my mind, before 2022 really kicks off. Some really good changes. It's here. It's here. It's two years. <laughs> yeah, well, they killed my small business. And then, uh, they've got the majority of everybody that had family businesses squat. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, we, I had businesses sold with my industry that were family owned. I'm talking 60, 70, 80 million dollars a year. The year business, if you don't sell family businesses, uh, producers, 60, 80, 100 million. But they're so fed up with this industry. And they're so fed up with their so called American pride now. You see? They're literally. Selling out everything. When they sell out, they've sold out all their kids. I don't know their kids that far. Everyone that you own is now by somebody's traded on the stock market. That's a corporation. And that's a ration of corpse. It's a corpse in the art of nation. A ration, a corporation. Ration of corpses. And you're all dead people in the market of big business. Small business is private. This is our last little. See, it's all got to fall under, man, for the new cycle to take place. And man, honestly, so anybody holding on to this negative whitewash history is going to be fucking drowned in embrace yeah, real first world order shit. You know what I'm saying? We did. That's, that's a tough. And this is not just for white skin people. I'm talking about it for Mexicans. Man. You think about it. You can go down to Mexico, and they're all what they consider old Mexicans, even though they're not. The true old megas, they, they think they're Morenos and Moors, and you know, they used to try to tell them, <laughs> but they gotta get you know, and you can see though, that would be a great just boom, go fly this one cherry tree flag, and then you've got your right flag you're waving, and then everything just kind of like holy shit, man, and yeah, you need to see working together really quick. <clears throat> yeah. It's gonna be a it's, it's it, man. You just got a lot of division. Any other questions, comments before we move on? I just want to thank God for bringing it up. He was trying to bring it up yesterday, but I was like, I know I ain't got no time to go over to what it is. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know it was going to be that deep, man. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> It's expensive, yeah. It's a whiteboard, man. Like with small baby step goals that you need to go through. I'm serious. I have a big whiteboard. Man. 
throw that all out on me. Like, it's overwhelming. That's why you just got to be the one. That's why it's good to have groups of people. That's why he can probably take you a whole year just to get just to get set up properly the way that you need to. But it's worth it. Though. Yeah, that's why I came right now. Not many people have put this information out, so you know, especially that you know, as far as the national you the next steps after that. You know, some will only take the national uniforms. You know, they just say, well, can you nationality? You know, like, okay, well, what's the form? Because people will be asking us, what's the form that I'm going to get? You know, so, once you do that, then you do the nationality, that's number one. Do the executive letters, authenticate the birth certificate. You can do the um, SS4 form. We do the SS5 and the um, SF181 form. Um, and do the UCCs, take all the information that you've, all the numbers from all your documentations that is attached to your name, attached to, um, you know, either on the forms, you take all those numbers and you put it onto your UCC or financial statement and all that And so you protect everything that you've already done, you know, through what you still do, you know, so... You just have to think about it. Always you have to think in the form of protecting yourself by being your after babies through your forms. What is the best way I can protect myself? Okay, this makes sense. What if I do this, do this? Would that help out even more? Oh, no, I need to do this. So you have to look at the forms and think about what can help you the best. You know, and once you master that, you can help others do the same thing. You know, but that's really what it's going to come down to. You know, it's helping others through the exact same process, helping them through nationality, helping them through <coughs> authentication, diversity, helping them through the UCC forms, and so forth and so on. You know, and like you said, sometimes it takes a while, but it can get done. It can get done. And we get heading down to um, Texas. Me and the group, we get ready to uh, have to set up a business down there, another juice and more down there. You know, so we can get that going and get that information. So it's, it's, it's moving bit by bit, like you say, like the God said, it's bit by bit. Part of sex, you can pull it down. Oh, no, below Houston, um, what is it? Friendly. Friendswood? Yeah, Friendswood. Yeah, that's it's got a good little retirement. <coughs> it's it's got kind of, uh, yeah, got the, 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 what is it, the medium income family, man. It's decent there, right? So, but uh, I just went to our biggest competition today, man. I ain't gonna lie, you gotta ship it. He <laughs> <laughs> ain't friends with for no reason at all, man. What is he got this shit together like son of a bitch. I come out like, damn. What, what, what is it? What, it's a, the only health food store juice, they got. Juice, he does juice, he does vegan food, and then he's got, uh, you know, not crystals, but he's got a good variety of, of like hard to find organic produce. Like you would find like one only out of the Kroger, one out of the ATV. Right. Well, he got them all the spot. Well, that's right, what you we know. want. You want to yeah. do that too. So, but but he got to make it different than what he's doing, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I say, him, I was like, God damn. <laughs> Boy, that's, that's why he got the spot, you know, because he's right there in the, the heart, right by H U B. But uh, the the main squeeze, man, they all use they all use organic stuff. You know, so just in essence, offering organic juice. Uh, he did, but just small, only one or two sets. But uh, I didn't see any buffets, you know. You know, and then that's back to when we went to Delaware. You know, I don't know where that, man. That was a big hit, man. I don't remember that one you went to Dallas, but the buffet style was in there. Yeah, it's a good little setup with the buffet, it gives them an opportunity. Right. You said the buffet was closed? 
Chicken and dumpling, a tomato basil, broccoli and cheddar with some kind of vegan cheese. Those are your main staples. Of, of, I mean, we got one spot that they make their broccoli cheddar soup. They sell out of it every day. It's, it's fun having quality versus quantity, right? right. You know, and in this area, you don't care about selling out. They're about the quality. Um, they're willing to pay the extra if it's, if it's that good. They're not going to. I said, I've got, we got a good little spot, man. I got four or five spots for them to eat at to kind of get the feel for the vibe, you know, for competition and stuff. And then two spots that I picked out to look at, they were negotiable. I was like, wow, yeah. And one dude, he said, that's probably, he said, mine's almost as big as theirs, and I'm only spending like a thousand a month. And this is right next to Perry's meat market. It would be kind of crazy having a beef. Juices, right? But he'd be hard pressed to get a salad done. And he'll eat it, but he'd be forcing him. Right? You know, he'll drink a pound and a half of vegetables like right. that. Right. You know, I'm like, dude, you know, right. watch your business, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you don't get enough of vegetables yeah. today. You should be smooth. <laughs> I'm trying to get him where he doesn't eat. Why do you keep putting him on this stuff? I'm like, man, baby, we're going back to breath area. You know what I mean? We're going back to where. We're gonna be living on white and breath. Fasting or no one fast. <laughs> we're gonna have a hard time. You know what, Justin? You know what I'm saying? Look, we ain't trying none of that. <laughs> well, she thinks she's, she's neglecting him by not letting the boy is hungry, he's gonna eat. You know, and that's the thing, you're forcing some kid to eat, and it's just a mental thing. He right. thinks he needs to eat. And I'm like, nah, they're too strong for him. That kid knows if he's hungry. Right. Animal knows. Animal knows. That's true. That's true. Right? That's true. That's true. But that plant based, man, it's it's strange. Watch that HBO plant based diet. I mean, you have oh, so many HBO? athletes that compete with that. Their, well, their competitive age maximum in the Olympics. Every one of them. Every one of them. There's like 18 of everyone. Everybody that. You just saw it right across the board. There was nobody competing past their age unless right. they were a yeah. And now you take an elephant that weighs three times and put all that weight on that kneecap? You're trying to tell me that 
grass don't fucking make straight. <laughs> right? Shit. Right? Look at the biggest <laughs> land animal. The water buffalo. I think that the earth, your universe, it's your baby, bro. I can't make it sit perfect for you. It's just a pack of pallets or some chemical. You guys are not supposed to want that. They were saying something wrong, vegan. They was dying kind of young or stuff, though. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. really, you should. That's, those are the ones in which they don't take minerals and vitamins, in which that, like, for example, most, a lot of vegetarians and vegans are born. Deficient in B12. They're deficient in B12. You know, so they need more B12, more B complex, which they helps with energy to cells, which they cause. In other words, the um, telomeres, which is on the end of the DNA, become less and longer and more B12 B complex. The other minerals and vitamins that I told you about earlier really become stronger and stronger. When the B12 isn't there, they start to unwrap. They're caused from the So it comes from those minerals and vitamins in particular that determine that most people are deficient. Maybe a little bit about sword, right? You know, I'm sweating. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Not even oh, it's like, it's awesome, man. Yeah, and you are too, because we use the do hydroponic. And you can do hydroponic in the fall. You know, like you said, you can't really, really do no real plants. Like, yeah, we have the best resources. So, where that's what it takes, I think, as a machine that just cuts over here. I'm wearing a second sprouts off just every day, man. Shoot, next day you got the same yield again. That you said. Like, you know. Was it the Mayans? That's that. Who should do that? So he didn't know. Did he know? Oh, he was shot too. Did you just go to the Chinese dude with the rice? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were showing the uh, old mechanisms. Yeah, yeah. Old yeah. Mechanism yeah. Going up on, yeah. Uh, down here, you had, you know, this is all water. And Galveston, I mean, we're talking about that in Texas. <laughs> from, from Texas, Galveston was raised 13 feet. So before uh, the flood of 1900, from the Indians, that did the Carapoy Indians, which were down there, they would just wait till a flood or a rain to go, and it was like the down to pick up speed. Grocery store, and all the, all the animals were hitting on little low little island. <laughs> so grab some rabbits, <laughs> grab a deer. Because he had to rain, it just flooded on. They run over there with a canoe and just grab what they want. You know, but it's a different way of living. They talk about the animals. Yeah. 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 Well, they did work nature times. Run over the natural world. Like to the territory. Okay. You talk about in the water, and then you talk about um, seaweed, um, right? You talk about all types of you know, minerals, natural minerals, ocean minerals, like all the that is there as compared to uh, just the regular ones that have those, like all the minerals, the minerals, and the vitamins, and all these things, and all those plants, and all those things, and all those things, and all those things, so we just have to. Yeah, so sweet. Yeah, 
rubber tires and just leaves all of the nutrients of all the 13, 14 different plants that you have around so you get all the different nutrients into your plant. The big rubber tires just keep the grass pushed down and then the plant will grow. You know, they have a thing with the plants in the road, they don't till up none of the earth. They said it was tearing up the way, way lines, the drag lines. So, um, so the till was iron, so you're ironing up. The universe, uh, they were using wood back in the day, or wood, copper, and brass. So the house was the foyage, you know, that is a better word, the foyage, you know, I just run out the back. The most berries, roots, mushrooms, man. Man, for real. I used to be able to breathe on that stuff. When I was young, I was able to do that. As I got older, no, I can't do it. I wasn't able to do it. I broke out just a little bit. I had to clean up the stuff. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I had blood boards three times, man, when I was a kid from boys and I had a blood streak in my arm from it being in my fingers, and I had it on my legs. They had a blood streak up here. And of course, that one time was a ooh, I didn't piss it out of my mouth. Like, damn, son. Yeah. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> don't go to the bathroom, though. Those oils stay on that stuff for like a year, though, man. You know, that boys and I away, don't go away, man. The stuff they got out now. They used to have to get shot in a pill pack for ships. They didn't make the detectors. So when they came out, that was something fifty dollars a bottle for a bottle that big. Fifty bucks. Now they got it for thirteen dollars. But shoot, I'd take a whole bottle trying to spade my head. You know, dad looking at me like <laughs> shit, boy. Fifty bucks. Some guy just cut these kids. You know, my wife just wasn't watching them. I said, I got almost just, you know, I was like, yo, baby. He like me. He'd be in the hospital. You understand? But he was, so I didn't go to the playhouse. He's like, he's like, he's got cancer right now. Okay. <laughs> he ain't going nowhere. He in the bathtub. He in oatmeal. This is his life for the next three, four, five days. He keep this under control. Man, it started to feel like mine. You know, it was bubbling up in between the hands. And you're like, I was like, baby, this isn't good. Like, what do you want me to do? What do you mean? Make it stop. Make him stop doing all that shit. He makes no hole. You got kids? No. Man, look that huh? <laughs> 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 oh, I love my man. Damn. <laughs> 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 Are we still married? I love, I love my wife. Very similar to like Eileen. Everybody's <laughs> having a different kind of areas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, nah, you the head, man. So, you're supposed to be, but you ain't the god of war that I've seen so far. My wife is definitely the goddess of war. No doubt about it. You just came up here and started start shit, didn't you? My door was locked. <laughs> I'm 
Yeah, I got a quiet time. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> no, I'm Why I'm I'm drive. <laughs> I did it like 10 years ago to Greenboro. Came around here. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. We went to Virginia. We went around here and everywhere. We got my hand at Tony Trump. I was much younger, so it didn't matter. Now it matters. You can't get any extra time while you're down now? No, just I drove around. No, I just drove around, but it doesn't mean it's not every day. It was actually nice. We got some good old. I like cemeteries. The other ones wrote the citizen name. They have all those uh, state seals back in the day. The original ones, right? You know, they don't like so pure a whole lot. And, uh, I'll be back there. They even got us now. They don't know me anymore. I think we'll have to come back. Just start to have how the nation's over there. It's pretty consumer. A lot of history. I seen that Chick Fil A man. I figured out Chick Fil A. He told you I figured out how to take a Chick Fil A. The uh, Chick Fil A is a Christian organization, right? They close on Sunday, right? Right. So they wouldn't have anything to do with Arabs, right? Wouldn't have nothing to do with Muslims, right? Like this, like business wise, they're like, oh yeah, what they why they have their fucking name? Oh, oh, oh yeah. So you got Chick, okay, and then you got. The lake. Okay. Now remember, the right way to read is right to left. So what is a leaf? You know that's the first alphabet of Arabic, as well as also of Hebrew. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The first alphabet. <laughs> so it's right there in the name. <laughs> I was like, damn. I couldn't have figured it out. I was like, damn, what is it, man? You know, they always put something in the logo. You know, like uh, Cadillac. <laughs> Figure out Cadillac. <laughs> Cadillac's uh, their symbol is the face of the owl, which was the Moorish nation. Okay, the, the Moor is his OVO, which is the great symbol of the Moor, guardian of the angel, guardian of the earth, which is MR, right? Mm -hmm. Any 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 value put in that more M A R Mar you get Ram right there Ram back with Mar mm -hmm. okay but Cadillac's your epitome of corporate uh, business okay right. so you start off with the uh, Escalade which is what corporate ladder Escalade the ladder okay once you get into the corporate game then you're going to start to ride around with Coupe de Ville, the devil. Oh. <laughs> okay. And once you get good with the devil and you start to take to it like a fish in water, he's going to put you in the L Dorado, which is the devil fish. Mm. <laughs> and Lincoln ain't no better because Lincoln is a worship of, uh, of the blood. Right? You got cold. <laughs> And Lynn is lingam, which is lingerie, which is the line, which is penis. So it literally is colon, penis, and blood. Oh <laughs> and then you think about Colonel Sanders. All right, put it. Colonel Sanders. Colon right there, right? Full bird colonel. Why well, they all got colon in their name? Which one? You know? Colon <laughs> <laughs> And you see that these guys they worship the uh, the uh, the awakening of the kundalini energy through male sexual through through their through their sex because right, they have a a guy toxic gland at the bottom of your socket which you know you're having gay sex that get ramped right so that's why they talk about these guys seeing lights like visual lights. And it's because you're hitting an electrical shock. I'm starting my kundalini energy. 
Yeah, we're we're not even gay and gay. Right? We're just trying to keep the science right for you. Okay, so the way you do that and not being gay is you take a tennis ball or a towel and you rock on that guy cocktail while you're doing meditation. And that'll start to stimulate, you know, to start to rise that energy. You know, why are you doing it? Why are you doing your energy? Just you have your this is your pelvis, and on the end of that is your guy cocktail. And that's what you want to start to stimulate as you roll. <laughs> yeah, all that cults. We have the Colonel, uh, the ship, the Colonel, the paddle ship down there at Moody Gardens. I was like, look at this thing. <laughs> the Colonel sitting again, man. <laughs> 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 the Colonel Sanders wasn't a Colonel. Right. <laughs> they could have called him Captain Sanders. Oh, Maybe oh, that'll be easy all right <clears throat> <laughs> of the breathing techniques. I want to mimic that. I want Eileen to hear oh, that. Oh, that fire? The, 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 the uh -huh. fire breathing? So if you could, if 